When it was time, the market commenced. In the split second after, not only the investors in Harbor City were watching Harbor stocks, but numerous capitalists from all over the world also had their eyes on it. Although the burst of the dot-com bubble was global, anyone with a discerning eye would be able to tell that the situation in Harbor City was more than extraordinary. It was because someone was trying to collapse the economy in Harbor City using the crisis. This was already a financial battle, and it was not as simple as a normal crisis after the burst of a bubble. The moment the market commenced, numerous funds were being injected frantically into the transaction of the stock market index. The Hansel Index was fluctuating intensely in just a split second. Mr. Lane, the Hansel Index dropped by 11 points after the commencement of the market. Currently, the short sale of the funds that have reached a deal has reached 5 billion and it's increasing continuously. Mr. Lane, the party that's short selling is offensive and violent. Now, the Hansel Index has dropped another 7 points. Mr. Lane, two stocks and harbor stocks have reached their price limits. The atmosphere in the living room became more intense after Zach reported the situation at an extremely fast speed. Spencer, from the four rich families, had a horrible look on his face because the two stocks that had reached their limits were the listed companies under his name. The other party was having a demonstration. They were attacking the stocks of the rich families. Everyone looked at Jasper, waiting for him to give out an order. However, Jasper was only drinking his tea. The lingering dense vapor was hanging in the air, obscuring his expression. Spencer could not keep his cool anymore because his listed companies had been attacked to their price limits. He said, Mr. Lane, aren't we going to do anything? At this moment, Jake smirked and said, I think he's stumped from the attacks. It's just been three minutes since the commencement. The funds of the short-selling parties who are waiting for the put have been increased to seven billion. Have you never seen this kind of battle? country bumpkin? Let me teach you. The market needs confidence now. Everyone knows that the government of Harbor City has a market rescue plan. You should go in immediately and clear the market of the sellers. While he said that, Jake chuckled coldly. Country bumpkin, you can't handle this kind of battle. You should hand over the power to conduct and do as I say obediently. Jake's words started to sway the opinions of everyone in the room. Indeed, according to the normal rhythm, what Jake said would be the best way to handle this. However, if Zachary and Clark did not speak, then nobody would dare to say anything. Zach looked at the attacks by the sellers that were getting denser and more intense on the market. At this moment, the Hansel Index was falling continuously. Zach did not know when the sweat started to form on his forehead. He asked carefully, Mr. Lane, what should we do? At this moment, Jasper said, don't worry, let's bide our time. When Jake heard this, he chortled. Bide our time? Is this the ability of the country bumpkin you found? He's all battered and bruised and he wants to bide the time? I'm going to die from laughter. Spencer, you're the head of the four rich families. You're going to lose the market value of your company because he wants to bide his time. Jake kept smirking. His words were like venomous snakes as he frantically ridiculed Jasper. Get lost if you don't have the skills. Why are you inflicting suffering on other people here? You're pretending to be so calm, but in reality, you've already pissed your pants from fear, right? Country bumpkins are so stupid. I told you you should fight back now. Do you think you'll lose your reputation by listening to me? What a joke. Anyone knows the ability of a mainland hillbilly like you. Stop acting like a poser here, okay? Enough. Zachary interrupted Jake's taunts coldly. Can you shut your mouth? You're so noisy. When Jake saw Zachary's hostile expression, he swallowed his saliva and suppressed his anger and hatred. He scoffed with a disdainful look on his face, but he did not dare to talk back to Zachary. Jasper had been staring fixedly at the digital monitor the entire time. Lines and lines of information kept being refreshed. Jasper was arranging and analyzing every move of the other party in his head. With a whoosh, the Hansel Index fell to 7,802 points. The short-selling party was vigorously attacking the defense line of 7,800 points. At this moment, no matter the heads of the four rich families at the scene, the higher-ups who were following the changes of the stock market in the government of Harbor City, or the ordinary investors at home and at the exchange watching the market, a lot of them were curious. Why was Jasper not doing anything? 
If the Hansel index fell and broke 7,800 points by the short selling party, it would be too late to do anything when everything tumbled down vigorously. Make an opening. Under everyone's anticipating gazes, Jasper finally said something. Everyone shifted their gazes over to him. Jake chuckled coldly and looked at Jasper. He was waiting for him to make a decision. Make an opening at 7,800 points. Buy all of the short selling orders in the list that's under 100 million. After Zach heard that, he turned around to yell at the stock traders under him. Did you guys hear that? Do it according to Mr. Lane's orders. The stock traders had been suppressing themselves since the beginning. After they got the order, they immediately started firing away on their keyboards frantically. In the next second, all of the short selling orders under 100 million in harbor stocks were swept clean by Jasper. The other party sold their orders and Jasper would buy them. With one in and one out, he managed to stabilize the number of transactions. On the other hand, the Hansel index was forcibly stopped at 7,801 points, unable to budge. The stock price of another listed company of Spencer's that was being attacked seemed stable now. This allowed Spencer to let out a sigh of relief. He was feeling miserable. He did not know why the other party would target him. At this moment, they could hear Jake's cold laugh floating over. You idiot. The orders below 100 million are all just useless troops and minor characters. The true pressure comes from the main force of the other party. You're not attacking the main force and instead, you're attacking these useless troops. I'd be insulting a pig if I say you're as stupid as a pig. At this moment inside the secluded villa, Rogers was staring at the market. Oh, he's finally doing something because he can't bear this anymore, huh? Rogers said with a scoff after he saw the orders under 100 million being cleared out in the market. What should we do next? one of his subordinates asked. Rogers shrugged and poured himself a glass of red wine. He said, our opponent is just observing our tactics. Now, he has cleared out the tiny investors who wanted to make some money while hopping onto the trend. Is he trying to fight with us on 7,800 points? We'll continue to wait for it to drop and short sell. Open more small orders under 100 million. If he wants to clean up the battlefield, then I'll just create more messes for him. What an interesting young man from mainland. Your calmness surprises me, but can you still find where my main force is? I can almost tell the composition of the main force from the seller, but now there are a lot of vermins trying to use this opportunity to make some money while harbor stocks is plummeting. These vermins will obscure our vision. So if we want to find the main force that's short selling, we have to clear the battlefield, Jasper said. Then, more than 10 transactions from the seller that were under 100 billion dominated the digital screen all of a sudden. Jake chortled. Are you dumbfounded? Do you think you're the only one who knows how to make something unnecessarily complicated? You're so great at talking big, so find it for me now. Where's the main force hiding among these dozens of orders? Hmm. These are just confusions created by the main force. Why should I find them? Jasper said insipidly while ordering. Make openings. Buy and clear out all of the short-selling transactions on the market. I want them to be unable to create more confusion. Then, make more openings, list out, and buy in the order of 10 billion. Our target point on the Hansel Index is 7,850 points. A large order of 10 billion. It was a rare sight to see no matter which stock exchange market in the world one was at. This afternoon, Investors from all around the world had their eyes on harbor stocks when a large order of 10 billion with genuine significance appeared. When this 10 billion was injected into the market, this was undoubtedly a cardiac stimulant to the buyers who were almost exhausted of all resources. Everyone knew that the market rescue from the government and four rich families had started to take place. The fund of hundreds of billions was finally here. However, the investors were not able to stay happy for long. This huge order of 10 billion was devoured in the next second like it was a provocation. At the same time, numerous selling orders appeared at the side of the short selling party. The Hansel index that just had signs of recovery dropped down to about 7,800 points again, and it was fluctuating around that figure. The main forces of the seller and buyer started an intense massacre surrounding 7,800 points without any warning. By all of the top 10 stocks of Infrastructure Bank, energy and technology, in the four major sectors. 
There are 40 stocks, and it'll be a total of 40 billion if each of them is 1 billion. After you're done so, I'll authorize it. Jasper kept giving out orders in the living room. At this moment, the atmosphere and situation in the living room were extremely intense. Jasper was hosting the main force of the buying side. He had already come to grips with the mysterious main force of the selling side that was hiding in the dark in close-range fighting. Transactions worth hundreds of millions were made in every minute and every second. On the market, the retail investor had all been cleared out of the game. The ones remaining were the institutions who would ride rushod over people normally, but now, they were shaking like leaves in the wind and did not dare to make any noise as they watched the two big shots going head to head with each other. The stock market worked much like fantasy novels with distinct power levels. Usually, retailers would just follow the direction of those higher up on the food chain in hopes of making a buck or two off the wisdom of the rich. Meanwhile, a collective of retail investors combined was strong enough to take down any force. There were simply too many retail investors. With such a big spread of resources, it was hard to stay united. Those with a higher level of capital were usually called whales. These large-scale retail investors were characterized by their large amounts of capital, and they had the ability to influence the price of companies with small to medium market capitalizations. Moving up another level would be the institutions. Institutions were usually led by investment banks or large investment companies. These folks controlled capital starting from billions at the entry level, and quite a few operated in the realm of tens of billions. All in all, institutions were considered the giant crocodiles in the stock market. Usually, they were the ones calling the shots and making the deals in the market. However, at this moment, the power of the institutions was insignificant. It was because the true main forces of the two parties had funds reaching hundreds of billions, and they could easily affect the fluctuation of harbor stocks. After the authorization, the 40 stocks Jasper chose started rising in response. The stocks would spur the market. While the Hansel Index rose, the pressure on the short-selling party would skyrocket. It was evident that the short-selling party had not expected Jasper to take action at this moment. Plus, the 40 stocks Jasper chose belonged to large-scale listed companies with huge dimensions. They would need to pay a large price if they wanted to lower the prices for these. The main force of the short-selling party hesitated for a few seconds. In the next second, a fund of 100 billion entered the market. It was as if they were opposing each other with equal harshness. The fund of 100 billion entered those 40 stocks and was frantically crashing the market. Got them. Jasper's eyes were lighting up like never before. Even if they were virtually fighting this war with their opponent, and they could not smell any inferno or smoke. Jasper could feel the pressure from the other party every second of the way. They were experts. Plus, they were top-notch experts who were skilled in stock trading with large amounts of funds. The reason Jasper did that move back then was to force out the fund of the main force of the other party. At this moment, with an injection of a fund of 100 billion, it seemed that the other party had seen through Jasper's decision and was taking up the challenge. This tactic, Jake exclaimed. It's the capitalists from the West. It's definitely one of the financial big shots from the West. No ordinary person would have skills and courage like that. It's going to be a decisive battle. Jake's face had turned red from either excitement or fear. He roared at Jasper, hurry. The opponent's main force has shown up. They're going to fight a decisive battle with you in the next second. Put down your composition and make an opening right now. You have to protect the 40 stocks from just now with your life. Jasper did not pay attention to Jake who was screaming frantically. On the other hand, he asked Zach, how much is the purchase price of the 40 stocks earlier? Zach immediately answered, volumes at 40%. Cancel all the remaining orders that have not reached a deal. When he said that, everyone in the room was shocked. That was right. In a stock transaction, when you bought a stock with a price, you needed someone who was selling with the same price to get a successful transaction. If not, it could be canceled at any time. However, would Jasper not be giving a helping hand to the enemy if he canceled the transactions at this crucial moment? Are UF asterisk king insane? After feeling shocked, Jake looked at Jasper with disdain on his face. Do you even know the stock market? How can you cancel at this moment? Is this part of your own plans and arrangements? Are you the F asterisk king spy that was sent here by the opponent? Get lost if you don't know anything. 
Stop harming yourself and the others over here. Don't consign yourself to eternal damnation because you want to be a poser. At this moment, an officer from the government of Harbor City said solemnly, Mr. Lane, I'm not doubting your decision, but I think you can give everyone a reason why you're doing this. Do you know about traps? Jasper said insipidly. If we fight with them for real, even if we win, Harbor stocks will be in ruins. So, we have to set a trap, and in this trap, we need some bait. My bait is over here. While he said that, Jasper lifted his hand to point at the 40 stocks on the digital screen that were plummeting frantically because of his cancellation. When everyone was pondering about what Jasper had said, Zach raised his voice. The Hansel Index has fallen under 7,800 points. Everyone looked over with ghastly expressions. The Hansel Index on the digital screen showed 7,620 points. A fund of 100 billion that crashed the market combined with Jasper's cancellation was one disaster on top of another. The Hansel Index eventually fell below 7,800 points. It was the lowest in history. This is my bait. Do you dare come at me at 7,600 points? Jasper muttered. You're gambling with the economy of Harbor City. Jake yelled. If you do this and fail, Harbor stocks will be in ruins. You're insane. While he said that, Jake walked to the heads of the four rich families who had been silent this entire time. He pointed at Jasper and said, He's a lunatic. I suggest that we strip him of his authority to conduct. Let me do it. He's from mainland, and it's in his bones that he won't care about the economy of Harbor City. He's just messing around without a plan. Tell him to get lost now. I'm the only one who can save the economy of Harbor City. Jake yelled loudly. Clark's face was as calm as a pool of water. He turned to look at Zachary and did not say anything. Zachary said in a deep voice, however, if he succeeds, he'll be able to take care of this crisis instantly. I think it's worth it. Spencer shook his head and said, I'll listen to you guys. At this moment, Kennedy secretly wrote a text message on his phone without batting an eyelid and sent it out. Then, he said flatly, why don't we continue observing? Clark nodded and said, since we've chosen him, we have to believe him. While he said that, Clark peered at Jake. Please be quiet. Jake was extremely disappointed and furious. He pointed at Jasper and said, you son of a b asterisk teach, I want to watch how you're going to die with my own eyes. If harbor stocks collapse, the economy of Harbor City will fall back a few years. You're being so pretentious now but soon, you'll become the target of scorn. When that time comes, you'll only have yourself to blame because you were too arrogant and conceited. You're just a country bumpkin, so you should know your place and stay in the poor valley in mainland. Why did you come to Harbor City asking for death? Inside the secluded villa, Roger's eyes were staring fixedly at the phone in his hand. After he deleted the message, he lifted his head to look at the digital screen. A cold smile appeared on the corners of his lips. You're Jasper, right? You're too sly. I almost fell into your trap. While he said that, Rogers calmly gave his order. Watch for a bearish and sell short. Don't hold back. It's here. The short selling party is attacking. Zach's excited voice broke the contemplations of everyone in the living room. At this moment, they could only see the 40 stocks plummeting wildly in the blink of an eye. In less than three minutes, they were almost at their price limits. With the fund of 100 billion, not only the 40 stocks, but almost all of the remaining and surviving stocks and harbor stocks were plummeting wildly. On the other hand, the Hansel Index was plunging like it had fallen down a precipice. Oh no. Almost everyone in Harbor City was howling in grief. Jasper had never been so focused before. Make more openings. Build a defensive line at 7,610 points on the Hansel Index. Let them know this is our defensive line. Aside from the internet sector, buy all of the top 10 stocks of all of the other sectors. Buy all of them with huge amounts of money. The authorized fund for this execution is $150 billion. After Jasper said that, Clark stood up suddenly. He exclaimed, the total market rescue fund amounts to just $100 billion. So where is this $150 billion coming from? I have them. Jasper said insipidly, don't worry about the funds. When he said that, he did not look at the conflicted expressions on Clark and the others' faces. 
he continued to give out his orders. The main forces of both sides had been fighting at close range. This time, there was no probing. It was a direct grapple of fund injections between the two main forces. Jasper stared straight at the Hansel Index. He watched as it got nearer to 7,600 points gradually. At this moment, Jasper was a little nervous as well. When the other party forced the Hansel Index down to 7,600 points, he would be able to use this trap and lure the other party here. This trap was like a lasso. Once it got hold of the funds of the main force of the other party, they would be a pig in an impossible situation waiting to be slaughtered by Jasper. The current situation was indeed developing according to Jasper's prediction. 7,610 points. Jasper had deliberately put down a defensive line. After a series of tough resistance, it was still broken through. However, the following points would be more and more challenging for the short-selling party who was waiting for a bearish to break. It was as if Jasper's final defensive line was at 7,600 points. Once it was broken, Jasper would lose all control. The fruit of victory was right in front of their eyes. 7,608 points. Jasper was still resisting. He kept giving out orders based on the decisions he made. Zack and everyone in the team wanted so badly to grow four more pairs of hands to be able to operate in time. 7,605 points. The smell of smoke in Harbor City was now extremely thick. This trade war in the stock market was destined to be written into the textbooks of business schools, and it had already reached its true climax. 7,602 points. The pressure had been forced to the max. At this moment, both Jasper and the short-selling party had already thrown their whole weights behind this. Even the heads of the four rich families could not sit still now, let alone the investors out there. They were all standing up now, and their eyes were glued on the market. Aside from Kennedy, of course. He was pretending to look nervous, but there was a sneer and a hint of ridicule hiding deep in his features. He felt that this was interesting. While looking at the reactions of these people, he suddenly wanted to know what his comrades' expressions would be if they knew he was a spy and he had already leaked all of their information out. When he thought about this, Kennedy could not help but wanted to burst out laughing. Jasper stared heatedly at the digital screen. Numerous pieces of information of the transactions kept refreshing on the screen. An unprecedented and intense close-quarter fight was happening on the battlefield between the two main forces. Everything looked normal. He was protecting his defensive line, and the opponent was inching closer to him. However, it was as if the short-selling party did not have enough follow-up power. When the index was at 7,602 points, it would not fall no matter what. To other people, this looked like good news. However, Jasper sensed something amiss. The main force of the short-selling party must be a top-notch expert. It would be impossible for him not to know why Jasper was insisting on protecting 7,600 points. At this moment, he was getting closer and closer to victory. The treasure was right in front of him after working so hard and it was within arm's reach, however, he was suddenly backing away now. This move was very unusual. To the outsiders, this meant that the main force of the short-selling part had exhausted their resources. However, Jasper had been fighting with them this whole time, and he was sure they still had energy left over. Something's wrong. Jasper yelled all of a sudden. He's going to run. Increase the stock price now. All of them. Use the fastest speed you can to increase the Hansel Index. Jasper's voice startled Zack. He instinctively carried out Jasper's orders as if it was in his subconscious. It was like magic. The Hansel Index skyrocketed as if someone had used a cheat code on it. The screen was initially shrouded by a gloomy-looking green color, but after the increase of the stocks, the numbers turned from dark green to bright red. The stock market had a rebound and was increasing. At the same time, it was as if the short-selling party did not dare to continue the fight. They were retreating. The Hansel Index increased from 7,600 and 2 points to 7,650 points. 7,680 points. 7,800 points. 8,000 points. It surmounted all difficulties, and there were no obstacles on the way. We won. Spencer yelled in excitement. Not only him, but the entire Harbor City was going insane. We won. The stock market is rising. We saved it. Everyone was frantically celebrating the victory. 
After the last transaction of the short selling party was taken down, the Hansel index went up to 8,500 points. Even though there was still a long way to go to reach the top, it would all be a matter of time. After all, Harbor stocks plummeted because of an irresistible trend. The bubble would eventually burst if it became too big. So when that happened, not even the gods could stop it. Jasper had saved the points, and it was equivalent to saving the economy of Harbor City. This was pretty commendable. This battle of the two main forces finally came to an end. The living room fell into a state of boiling merriment. The heads of the four rich families were beaming. Even the officials from the government were high, fiving each other in celebration. Outside of the crowd, Jake's face was white as he murmured, How is that possible? How could they just retreat like this? He won just like that? Impossible. Jake looked ghastly pale, and his first thought was to run. He felt as much panic as the arrogance he initially felt. However, the moment he turned around, he saw the young master of the laws, Henry, blocking the door with a grin on his face. He looked as if he was waiting for him to make a mistake so that he could beat him up authoritatively and fairly. Jake gritted his teeth and withdrew his foot that had already stepped out. The look on his face changed irregularly, and he looked horrible. Congratulations, Mr. Lane, you did it. Kennedy came over to Jasper unbeknownst to him and said with a grin. Jasper had no joy on his face. It was because this entire script was completely different than the one he had in mind. The main force of the other party had retreated at a crucial moment, causing Jasper's initial plan to be fruitless for the greater part. Even though they won for now, for Jasper, he knew he had lost a little to his opponent. The other party had obviously seen through his objective. They did not step into his trap, but on the contrary, they turned around and walked away. Jasper composed himself while facing Kennedy's words of congratulations. He smiled lightly and said, I just did what I should do. We always have to remember that there's always someone who's better than us in this world, no? Kennedy said this significant statement. Jasper's eyes twinkled as he looked deeply at Kennedy. Then, he nodded and said, Yes, but I believe the truth will come out one day. Was there a mole? This was the biggest possibility Jasper could come up with. However, he did not eliminate the possibility that the opponent had predicted what he was about to do. In short, it did not matter if there was a mole or not. Judging from the current situation, Jasper should enjoy the fruits of his victory. It would be impossible for Harbor City to get through the burst of the economic bubble this time unharmed. The global economy had been badly affected and suffered a great loss. These were the rules of economics and also the trend that Jasper was talking about so it would be impossible to change this. As such, as long as he was able to stop Harbor City's economy from being further destroyed, this was the biggest victory for him. Jasper had done it. However, it just did not reach his expectations. Jasper got rid of these thoughts and walked in front of Jake. He only smiled and did not say anything. Jake looked at Jasper sinisterly and frenetically. He gritted his teeth and said, Why are you smiling at me like that? Honor your promise, said Jasper insipidly. You said that if I win, you'll kneel, grovel, admit your mistakes, and even become my apprentice. Did you forget that in such a short time? Jake laughed from anger. You want me to kneel, grovel, and ask you to make me your apprentice? You're dreaming. The heads of the four rich families have all witnessed what you said just now. If you plan not to own up, then can you guess what your consequences will be? Jasper said flatly. Jake said with animosity, Jasper, don't go too far. Am I going too far, or were you too egotistical? Jasper asked, and his eyes that were looking at Jake were emotionless. I never liked competing with someone verbally. I prefer to talk based on facts. Now, you've seen it for yourself. I won. So, you should honor your promise. Henry chuckled and walked over. He lifted his hand and patted Jake's shoulder. He pressed him down, saying slovenly, You son of A B asterisk T, you bet, you pay. Now, a weasel like you should kneel, grovel, and admit your mistakes before asking him to take you as his apprentice. After he said that, Henry said meaningfully, If you don't kneel, do you think you can walk out the door of Law Manor? After Jake heard that, his face turned white. He knew a child of a top aristocrat like Henry would have the guts to do anything. 
There were also a lot of people willing to risk their lives for him. Jake pondered for a while before bowing his head deeply. He bent his knees and knelt on the floor heavily. I was wrong. I'm sorry. Jake gritted his teeth and suppressed the anger in his heart. Please take me as your apprentice. Jasper looked at him unenthusiastically and said to Henry, Let him go and let him leave. You're not taking him as your apprentice? Henry asked with a grin. He wanted to use this opportunity to insult him some more. Next time. Jasper narrowed his eyes. If one overlooked the rest, a person like Jake really had professional skills. He was a suitable candidate to be his subordinate to manage the properties in Harbor City after he left. However, it was not suitable to talk about this now. All right, get lost. Henry kicked Jake. Remember to be humble next time. Don't go about with your nose in the air just because you have some kills. After he heard this, Jake got up hurriedly. He glanced at the two of them with bitter resentment in his eyes and was too embarrassed to stay here anymore. As such, he turned around and ran away. The heads of the four rich families were very busy, especially now. After exchanging courtesies with Jasper and leaving promises of working with him in the future, they left hurriedly. After Kennedy got out of Law Manor, he did not go to put his assets in order like the rest of the gang. On the contrary, he went back to the secluded villa. After he stepped into the villa, he saw Rogers smiling at him while raising his wine glass. My number one spy is back. Rogers joked. Kennedy shook his hand nonchalantly and asked, How's our profit? We can make a ton of money, of course. Rogers said and shrugged. However, there's still some disparity with what we expected. That young man, Jasper, is very skilled. The trap in the end was pretty interesting. Yet you still managed to solve it, no? I saw Jasper with a horrible look on his face when I was over there, Kennedy said with a smile. He's still young and needs to pay some tuition fees after all, said Rogers while standing up. I'm also heading back to the United States to report myself in. There's a celebration banquet awaiting me as well. All the investors were extremely satisfied with the cooperation with my fellow partners. From now onward, we'll have opportunities to work together. The share that belongs to you will be transferred to your designated account within this week. For now, let's stay low as currently, Harbor City is experiencing a massive crash in the dot-com bubble. Many potential shares are on the lower side, and it's just the right timing to enter now. Rogers said as he burst into laughter. To be honest, I'm looking forward to the day when I cross paths with Jasper. This young man has intrigued my interest. After making only a few comments, Rogers led his team to leave the scene. In the villa, only Kennedy and Bob were left there. Kennedy tossed a cigarette to Bob and said with a complicated expression, This bunch of foreigners has earned quite a ton, Bob said with a rather jealous feeling. Their ability is overwhelming. What can we do about them? However, this is also a lesson for Jasper. It should make him realize others are more capable than him and he shouldn't be too arrogant. Kennedy breathed out a mouthful of smoke and said, In the future, there will be plenty of chances to teach youngsters in Harbor City about their standings in society. While he was in the middle of the conversation, Kennedy received a call. It was a call from his son, Mitch Langdon. What's the matter? Kennedy asked. On the other end of the call, Mitch's voice was followed by a sobbing tone. Dad, I'm, I'm broke. At that moment, Mitch's hair and clothes were in a mess. It was as if he was a poor guy running for his life. He glanced at Zane who was on the ground and unable to move an inch. The man was not saying a word while Mitch was speaking with a shaking voice. I thought Harbor stocks would still drop today, so I used up the family's assets and put it into a short sale. I didn't expect that be asterisk starred, Jasper, to be chosen as the host for the market rescue fund. In the first wave, he immediately cleared off our orders. Currently, the prices are continuously rising. Me and Zane have been liquidated and are bankrupt. Kennedy, who initially was still in a somewhat pleasant mood, immediately had a dark expression after hearing it. Didn't I order you to behave yourself and stay at home without doing anything? Who gave you the guts to make your own decision and go forth to play with stocks? Don't you know what the current situation is? Even I'm being cautious and dare not do anything rashly. Who are you guys to be so daring? Kennedy was getting more exasperated as he spoke, and he suddenly roared as he asked, How much did you and Zane lose respectively? We're both broke. 
I've lost billions. Zayn has it far worse. He even mortgaged his house and suffered a loss of 600 million, said Mitch with a shaky voice. Kennedy took in a deep breath and said through his gritted teeth, What a piece of trash who can never accomplish anything and only fails. At this period, there are tons of eyes watching over the actions of affluent families like us. If this news spreads out, that my son carried out a short sale on shares and attempted to engulf the hard-earned monies of those shareholders only to end up losing billions. Say, what do you think those reporters will write about it? The pride of the Langdon family, my pride, and your grandpa's pride will all be tainted by rubbish like you. I'm with Bob right now. You two spoiled brats better come back home this instant. At the law's household, Jasper was calculating the rewards from this operation. He did not feel good whenever he thought of the mistake made at the end of the market rescue plan. After deducting the 100 billion funds to save the city, we managed to earn 98 billion from the 40 billion capital during its peak. However, in the afternoon, I used that sum of money for the market rescue plan. On the surface, we've won. However, at the very last moment, it was obviously my loss when I was having a contest with the opponent. I lost an additional 18 billion. Jasper was shaking his head in Zachary's office. There was a look of dismay on his face. So, right now, we still have 80 billion with us, which coincidentally has been doubled. It's just that most of the money couldn't be taken out, also that we can stabilize harbor stocks. Zachary tapped on Jasper's shoulder and said, You've already done the best. Don't be too harsh on yourself. You'll only wear yourself out. I'll take control over that sum of money. Previously, you spent 5 billion and gained back your capital with some profits. Later, I'll give you 10 billion. Michael is just the same as you. He took out 5 billion of capital. I'll do the same and give him an additional 10 billion. The remaining 60 billion, I'll gladly accept it. Zachary was smiling. He sensed that this young lad, Jasper Lane, would one day be a big shot in the future. No, it should be that he was heading to a much higher stage in the world where he would stand at a higher level. The thought of it made Zachary glance at Jasper with an astonished gaze. He admired and respected Jasper from the bottom of his heart. To be honest, at the very beginning when you said you're able to help the Law family earn back that 10 billion, I was still doubting you. But now, you've helped the Law family earn 30 billion. You didn't let us down, you even exceeded our expectations. Jasper shook his head and said, We both gained some benefits. Without the Law family, I wouldn't be earning this much as well. At the end of the day, without the help from the Law family, I'm afraid that I wouldn't even have the opportunity to show my talents as well. Zachary nodded his head with satisfaction when facing Jasper's humbleness. He said with a smile, Regardless, you've indeed done a huge favor for the Law family in this matter. The Law family shall always remember this. Jasper waved his hand and said with his expression suddenly becoming much more serious, Uncle Law, please allow me to say something on my mind. Just keep these words in your heart after hearing this. Seeing that Jasper was speaking in such a manner, Zachary became all serious as well. He said, spit it out. I'm all ears. At the very last moment, I was actually planning to set up a trap for the opponent. Once he was in the trap, he would be within my control. With that, we could have gobbled up the main funds for a short sale, at least half of it. I know about this. You mentioned it previously, said Zachary. But at the eleventh hour, we just lacked that one step. The opponent was very decisive and backed off instead. I'm suspecting that there's a spy among us. Hearing this made Zachary's expression become extremely stern. We can be absolutely sure that the main force doing the short sale has its funds from the Western countries. However, the investigation about who the leader is is still ongoing. You're saying that among us, there's a spy who's helping out the Western countries? Zachary's tone was extremely serious. Earlier, there had been lots of people in the hall. They could exclude Zach and the trading team. Since two days ago, they had been staying together under the tight surveillance of the security guards. Even if they had the intention of leaking out information, they would not have had that opportunity to do so. Next up were the heads of the four affluent families, along with the two officials with the government of Harbor City and Jake Cullen. Who do you think is the most suspicious? Zachary asked. I've got no idea. Jasper shook his head. Actually, 
The conclusion that there's a spy among us is also my own guess without any concrete proof. So as for who's the most suspicious, currently I only have very little information to go on. I can't say for sure. All right, I'll conduct an investigation on this matter, said Zachary with a dark expression. At this point, being a spy for the funds to the Western countries was no different than selling one's own country to others. Zachary despised people who betrayed their country for their own luxury. There's something that you might need to consider. Zachary said to Jasper, the financial weekly magazine that's the biggest and most famous throughout Harbor City, Terra's Financial Weekly, hopes to have a special interview session with you. Jasper waved his hand and said, I've got lots of work to do. I might not be free. It was an opportunity to integrate Gladness Entertainment movies when Harbor stocks were still in a recovery phase. He got to enter rapidly in those potential stocks that might rise in the future. There were tons of things awaiting for Jasper to accomplish. It won't do you any harm to spare some time to go over. They can follow your schedule. Besides, you'll still be able to gain some benefits from this weekly magazine. Regardless of what happens, Harbor City is a place that emphasizes reputation. There are many times where reputation might be more useful than benefits. Zachary's thoughtful words made Jasper change his mind. All right then. Then please ask them to get in touch with me. In a quiet study room in a villa. Smack. A slap landed across Mitch's face. Due to that slap, Mitch stumbled and took two steps back. He nearly fell hard with his bottom hitting the floor. The burning pain on Mitch's face made him clench his fist, but he dared not retaliate or vent out his frustrations. He knew that his father, Kennedy, had a temper that was much worse than himself. Hence, he did not have the guts to speak even a word. You scumbag! Kennedy's exasperated roar exploded in Mitch's ears. It's one thing if you lost your mind and lost some money. But how dare you be so daring, even dragging Zane along and selling the family's assets, tossing all of it away. Do you two fools know that you guys are the sons of affluent families? If news were to spread out about you guys doing short sales and trying to earn the hard-earned monies of Harbor City during the financial crisis, do you guys think that you'll be able to raise your heads high in Harbor City? Even the family's business will be affected as well. Zane was hiding at a corner, shaking out of fear. He dared not let out a single word under Bob's stony gaze. He was feeling utterly aggrieved as well. Initially, he did not have the guts to do such a thing. But it was all because Mitch was overconfident. As such, he got all hyped up and both of them gathered about two billion. They then placed all the funds into the shares. If it was just because of the two billion in funds, Kennedy would not be that exasperated. The main problem was that Mitch's actions could possibly expose him to everyone in Harbor City. His cooperation with Quantum Fund was a top secret and should never be known to any outsiders. For safety purposes, he had not told his son about it either. He had been cautious while working on it on the side, but his son nearly got into huge trouble. The thought of it made Kennedy disgruntled. It's all because of Jasper. Mitch clenched his teeth and shouted, exasperated. If it's not for him provoking me, I'd never have done short sales with such a big fund. Kennedy's expression darkened as he roared, you've committed such a foolish mistake, yet you still want to put the blame on others? Being easily provoked by others will only mean that your composure is not sturdy enough. Wait a moment. At that moment, Bob voiced out and said, Mr. Langdon, it's useless if you continue being angry. It's better if you think of a way to fix things. Mitch, earlier you said that Jasper provoked you. What actually happened? Mitch and Zane both blurted the entire incident on the day they were at Victoria Harbor. Finally, Mitch gritted his teeth and said, Back then, Jasper should have already known that he would be hosting the market rescue plan. That's why he intentionally provoked me and set up a plot against me. This man is utterly cruel. Zane was also so mad that his face had turned pale. He yelled, Don't ever give me the chance. If I seize that chance, I'll be sure to make that mainlander suffer. Bob and Kennedy looked into each other's eyes, and everyone fell silent. Jasper. Kennedy softly called out that name. This brat is not as simple as he seems, said Bob with a deep voice. With a smirk, Kennedy said, What's there to be afraid of? As long as he's in Harbor City and intends to run a business in Harbor City, we'll get our chance to go against him. Mitch opened his mouth to say, Dad, 
We can't just let this matter slide aside. Obviously not. Kennedy's expression darkened. However, for these two days, you two better not show up anywhere. Don't leave the house. I'll arrange for someone to do their best to cover up this matter. At least there's good news, which is that the outsiders are temporarily unaware of you guys doing short sales. Let me handle this matter, said Bob. I'm still able to say something to the media of Harbor City. Sure. Kennedy nodded. There were some things that would not be appropriate for him to handle himself, and Bob would be just the perfect person to do this. While Kennedy and his son were having a secret discussion, Jasper was already at the International Commerce Center of Harbor City. Even though it was named a center, in fact, it was the iconic building of Harbor City. As the tallest building in Harbor City, its outline had appeared in lots of dramas and movies made in Harbor City. On the 118th floor at the top balcony, an umbrella, a coffee table, and three chairs. Jasper was sitting on the balcony, feeling the chilly breeze and the sunny weather. He had a lazy yet calm smile on his face. Henry, who was sitting beside, yawned. He was lazily lying and sunbathing. He sneaked a peek at the troop of security guards who were lined up at a place not far away and was jealous of them. Right now, you're occupying a higher place in my dad's heart. He even said that he's worried about your safety. He has dispatched all the elite security guards to you. I've never received such treatment. Jasper smiled and ignored that statement, saying, Has Jake arrived yet? Don't worry. I've already sent someone there to get him. Even if he has the guts, he won't be so bold to refuse to step forth. While he was talking, Jake, who looked famished, showed up at the entrance of the balcony. They both locked eyes. The moment Jake saw Jasper, the corners of his mouth twitched. He had a very dark expression on his face. The moment Jake bumped into Jasper again, he gritted his teeth. He was so eager to pounce on Jasper and feast on him. After coming back from the law's household that day, Jake had been listening to people singing praises at Jasper while they mocked him. He wondered who was the loudmouth who spread out the news of him being humiliated by Jasper in the law's household. As such, he, Jake, a rich and influential person who led his life as if he was the main character in a novel, suddenly became the opposing character in a novel instead. He would himself in the office for almost the entire day and not come out. He knew that after this incident, he had humiliated his entire family throughout Harbor City. From then onward, no one would be willing to cooperate with him. He, as a stock trader, had no funds to invest in himself, hence what awaited him in the future was only death. Jake did not even consider whether to go to other countries to develop. However, at that moment, Henry's men had found him. Jake did not have the guts to not show up when faced with Henry's summon. At this moment, he was looking at Jasper who was sitting on the balcony. His back was facing the sunny sky, and his casual white shirt made him look handsome under the umbrella. Even Jake had to admit that Jasper's appearance and aura were definitely of a prestigious person. This guy, he's from a family that's slightly of the lower class. If only he was from an affluent family of Harbor City, perhaps he might be a very successful person. That was what Jake thought as he made his way to Jasper and Henry. Have a seat. Jasper pointed at the only empty seat. Jake said with a cold smile, You called me over to continue humiliating me? You should begin right now. The winner is the king, and the fallen will be the loser. I've got nothing to comment on that. However, in regards to sitting, I'll pass on that. Humiliate you? At that moment, Henry was not happy and said scornfully, F asterisk CK you. Who do you think you are? Do you have any idea how busy we are right now? There's a ton of stuff waiting to be settled. Who has the spare time to humiliate you? You've really overestimated yourself. While being lectured, Jake gritted his teeth and roared. Then why did you guys call me over here? Don't tell me we're here to be friends. It's not that accurate if you say it's to be friends, but we can't say it's wrong from a different perspective, said Jasper with a soft chuckle. Jake looked at Jasper with a hostile gaze. He realized he was no longer able to see through what was going through the mind of that person. Harbor City is a very important place. However, I can't possibly stay in Harbor City forever. So, I need someone in Harbor City to help me settle some issues regarding business. Jasper said it without beating around the bush. He tapped on Jake and continued saying, You're one of the candidates. 
Jake found it hilarious yet felt exasperated at the same time. He said, you're not holding a grudge against me and are even thinking of putting me in a very important position? Do you think I'm some three-year-old kid who's easily cheated? Jasper stood up and walked to the side of the balcony. Jake was in doubt, hence he followed as well and stood not far away from Jasper. At that moment, if it was not for a group of security guards glaring from a place not far away, Jake might really push Jasper down to end everything. However, that was just a quick flash of an idea. Jake was aware that if he did that, he would be taken down before he could even make a move. Even though he hated Jasper, the hatred he had was not to a point where he would take him down with his life. Harbor City is indeed a city that can spellbind others. It's full of temptation, isn't it? Jasper faced the wind and the vast sky that was hundreds of meters wide. He said those words while facing the entire Harbor City. Harbor City had just endured a financial crisis. Currently, its sky was so clear with sunny weather. Skyscrapers were standing tall under the dark blue sky. Each floor was shining, and there were lots of people strolling along the streets downstairs. Cars were passing by each other as well. Everything looked so lively. Don't you wish to stand at the top of this city and enjoy its beauty from up here? said Jasper. Jake looked at Jasper's back view and raised his brow. He had to admit that at that moment, he was indeed being mesmerized by the beauty mentioned by Jasper. Standing at the peak of Harbor City? That will be an enormous honor. That will really make my ancestors proud of me as well. It was also a target that made Jake keep putting in the effort. It was just that the target was way too far and hard for him to reach. Aside from fantasizing about it, Jake dared not think further about it. However, Jasper did not just have the guts to think about it. He even blurted it out. Besides, he was also making a move toward it. At least at that moment, everyone in Harbor City had come to know of the name Jasper. There's no such thing as being enemies forever in the business world. Only benefits exist. If you think that there's a miscommunication between us from earlier, and to you, it's a barrier that you can't overcome, then you may leave this instant. I give you my word that no one will stop you. After listening to Jasper's comment, Jake's face twitched. Finally, he snorted and said, Previously, I was the one who insulted you in the first place. Then later on, you made me kneel and grovel to you, forcing me to take you as my master. Doesn't that make things equal? Equal? Maybe. Jasper's comment made Jake's expression change for the worst. From the moment he arrived up to that point, Jasper's words and actions made Jake think that he was intending to solve the issue. However, he did not expect Jasper to say such a thing after he surrendered. However, to me, business is business. You have your strengths that I admire, and it's something that I need. This is the basis of our cooperation. It has nothing to do with other things. It's only up to whether or not you want to cooperate with us. Jasper spun around. The curve on his lips at that moment was no different from a demon in Jake's vision. He could not think it through. What kind of person will be able to really place their personal emotions aside when making a decision? Even if he previously had a very huge argument with Jasper, he should be discussing with Jasper with a calm spirit all just because he possessed an ability that Jasper needed? Does such a person really exist in this world? For a time period, I'll be leaving Harbor City. When that happens, my investments in Harbor City will be under your supervision. You have the skills, but your temper is so bad. That's why I don't plan to give you the main authority. Without my permission, you can't make any decisions by yourself. I'll give you 5% of profits for your part for one year. Jake sneered, 5%. Isn't that way too low? You can choose not to agree to it. You can just turn around and leave. At that moment, Henry came over and stood beside Jasper. He chuckled and said, Of course, the moment you leave, I might end up giving you lots of trouble. Jasper frowned and looked at Henry, saying, Don't frighten him. After saying it, Jasper's expression became awful as he said to Jake, This is win-win cooperation. We're gaining benefits from each other. There won't be any revenge if you don't agree to it. Both parties cooperating on their own record is the basis to a cooperation process that will be guaranteed to be a success. Hearing Jasper's comment made Jake's expression look much better. Deep within his heart, he started having a good impression of Jasper. After all, when compared to Henry, 
Jasper was so generous that he could gain the respect of others. 5% is too little. It's so much lower than the market price. Jake was already inclined to give in, but he insisted on gaining more profits. It was normal human psychology. Jasper gradually raised his head and said, The investments in Harbor City that I'm about to hand over to you are not less than 2 billion. Now, do you still think that 5% is little? What? Jake was shocked and looked at Jasper, horrified. He was stunned by Jasper's large sum of money. Since young, Jake was always surrounded by others and flattered by them. He grew up with the nickname of being a genius. He was always the ideal kid mentioned by other parents. Even on Wall Street, he was also considered to have become famous from a young age. However, it was those incidents that created Jake's ego and proud character. However, no matter what happened, no one would deny Jake's exceptionally strong working ability. In his 20s, he was able to create fame for himself on Wall Street. Such an ability was impossible to be seen in any ordinary person. Besides, Jake was also a bright person. After leaving the law's household, even though he was very upset and suffered a lot, he took the time to calm himself. After looking back at his mistakes, he returned to witness Jasper's way of trading. He had to admit that if he was the one who operated it, harbor stocks might be done for. Jake was not willing to admit it verbally, but deep within him, he knew it crystal clear. According to the momentum on the market, looking out for such an investment would require at least 15% of profits. Only then would it be considered as the norm. However, that was only for those small customers with millions of investments. This is two billion. To be honest, Jasper's offer was considered luxurious. Even if Jasper was not famous now, many people would still fight their way to get hold of the offer if it was extended to the public. The thought of it made Jake grit his teeth and say, I'll take the offer. Jasper smiled and clapped Jake's shoulder, saying, This is what you call knowing what's best. When are we signing the agreement? Even though Jake had agreed to cooperate with Jasper, deep within his heart, he had completely surrendered to him. Even though his pride made him unable to step down without feeling awkward, he still forced himself to ask the question. I'll get in touch with you after some time. Jasper waved his hand. Sure. I'll be waiting for your news, said Jake. Then he left the scene. Looking at his back view, Henry elbowed Jasper. Let's not talk about me, but there are tons of talented people in Harbor City. Why bother looking for him? Indeed. There are lots of talented people and investment management companies who can accept my task. However, in the near future, Harbor City will be operating as my second largest base. I won't be able to rest assured if I hand it over to other companies, said Jasper while shaking his head. As for the details, which involved Jasper's future and the plans for his business territory, there was no need to reveal them to Henry as he would not be able to understand it. Then you'll be able to rest assured if it's Jake? Don't you forget that he's a man with greed. Besides, he even has a grudge against you, said Henry, astonished. Regardless of what he said, those two people were considered to have suspicions toward each other. He had never heard of an enemy who would be much more trustworthy than other people. He's aware of my relationship with your family, and he knows that I have good connections with the four affluent families of Harbor City, as well as the government of Harbor City. Hence, even if I'm not in Harbor City, he won't dare do anything foolish. An enemy who knows how overwhelming you are will do things more cautiously compared to a stranger who knows nothing about you. The chances of them doing foolish things will be fewer as well. Henry heard the comment and thought about it for a long time. He then said with a sorrowful tone, I don't get it. Aren't you guys tired? Every day, you guys are calculating so many things. It's as if you guys have to think through it ten times. Let's go. Let's head home. Jasper stretched lazily. Henry quickly followed happily. He was already used to being the character of Jasper's underling. He still did not find anything weird about it. This time, Jasper did not return to the law's household. Zachary was busy, and he was not able to divide his person to carry out other tasks at the same time. After the huge financial crisis that landed on Harbor City, Zachary would have to personally handle issues be it the family's business or the issues in the government of Harbor City. Zachary even brought Anna along to help out. Henry, who would only make things worse when he helped out, was cast over to Jasper without hesitation. 
That was why when Jasper returned to the hotel, he immediately abandoned the idea of heading out to have fun, especially when he knew that Jasper was going to attend the interview session with Tara's Financial Weekly. Man, that's Tara's Financial Weekly. It holds such a great influence. They only interview big bosses, people like my dad. He was interviewed once. Even if that's the case, I haven't heard of such a thing as special interviews. At the executive lounge of Mandarin Oriental Hotel, Henry was saying to Jasper with an excited look, Why don't you go for the interview since you're so excited about it? said Jasper with a smile. Henry's expression turned dark and he said angrily, Forget it. If I'm able to attend an interview with them, my dad will laugh till he wakes up from his sleep. Knowing one's limit is the key to being a prestigious person. The key is to know one's limit. There's no such thing as something being impossible. Jasper left a comment when he noticed Henry being lifeless. According to Jasper's memories from his past life, later on in the future, Henry really got featured on a page in Tara's Financial Weekly. However, that was after he changed his ways and carried out a legit business. It was also after he married an athlete, the queen of diving. While they were talking, three people consisting of a lady and two men rushed into the executive lounge. The two men were carrying some supplies while the lady had delicate makeup on, looking quite stunning. She had short hair that reached her ears and was wearing a lady's suit. She did not have heavy makeup on, which made her appearance look fresh. That lady was Leilani Carlson, one of the most famous hosts in Harbor City. Nice to meet you, Mr. Lane. I'm Leilani Carlson, representing Tara's Financial Weekly. I'm responsible for the interview session with you this time. As a host who was used to dealing with lots of huge crises and had even interviewed many talented bosses from the business industry, Leilani was rather amiable and could easily leave a good impression on others. Jasper smiled and shook hands with her, saying, Nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. After taking a seat, Leilani said, We know that you're quite busy, Mr. Lane. So, let me get straight to the point. We're very grateful that you're willing to spend some time and cooperate with us to sit for this interview. In light of the market rescue plan which you hosted, you managed to rescue the finances of Harbor Stocks and they didn't suffer from further damages. Hence, the citizens of Harbor City are eager to know more about you. So this time, you'll be featured on the front page of Artera's Financial Weekly. Henry, who was beside, was widening his eyes when he heard it. Once again, he was able to sense himself being extraordinarily weak when compared to Jasper, especially when he recalled his younger days of fooling around with young models, racing cars, clubs, and going to yacht gatherings. Look what others are fooling around with. He hosted a rescue market plan that's worth tens of billions. He's sitting for an interview with Terra's Financial Weekly and is even F. Asterisk King getting featured on the front page. In Harbor City, the influence of Terra's Financial Weekly was just only second to the magazine Fortune, which was famous throughout the world. Will you need to specially take pictures for this? Jasper asked. If you have to take additional photos, then you guys can forget about it. I'm really very busy, and I have no time for makeup and taking photos. Jasper's comment nearly made Henry, who was beside him, jumped to his feet. F asterisk CKU. You may not have the time, but I do. Leilani was stunned for a moment. A weird sensation was dwelling within her. To be honest, Jasper was very easygoing. He did not have the ego of a young ambitious man. Even if he was rejecting something, he could make others feel his sincerity as well. But this is Tara's Financial Weekly. Even if it was a boss like Caden, he had also given full cooperation and used one whole day for makeup and photo shoot when he was featured on the front page. If you're busy with work, Mr. Lane, then let's be flexible and immediately start with the interview. As for the photo shoot, we'll just seize any opportunity and take a few pictures. Later on, we'll choose a nice one and publish it, said Leilani. Let's start, said Jasper while nodding his head. Leilani hesitated again and said awkwardly to Henry who was staring at a corner with an excited look, young master law, could you please move aside and have a seat while our shooting takes place? We don't want anyone else showing up beside Mr. Lane. Suddenly, Henry's expression turned dark. Flames of rage dwelled within him as he cursed internally. F asterisk CKU. Henry was so mad that his expression changed for the worst. Since when would young Master Law, who was almighty in Harbor City and had a good reputation,
be cast aside disdainfully by others. She even thinks I'm a nuisance for being in the background? No need for that. Jasper suddenly spoke up and said with a smile, allow him in to be in the interview with me. After all, I think there are quite a number of readers who are rather curious about the identity of young Master Law. Jasper's request was one that did not comply with the standard set of rules. All this while, such a professional interview was on a one-on-one -on -one basis. When would there be a scene where two people showed up and were interviewed at the same time? Plus, Henry is not on our list of to be interviewed as well. However, Leilani was not a fool. After giving it some thought, she understood that Jasper's suggestion would work out. Henry was not some random person, but the eldest young master of the law family. During this market rescue plan, the four affluent families of Harbor City had spared some funds, and among them, the law family had put in lots of effort. Logically speaking, he should be allowed to stay for this interview. The most important thing was that Leilani was able to recognize reality. If she were to reject the suggestion and did not do a perfect job, she would have to endure an earful of a lecture when she returned. Jasper would definitely not be happy as well, and she would even offend a mighty young master of Harbor City like Henry. Only a fool will do such a thing. All right, then shall we officially start our interview? After getting all set up, Leilani started with her first question. Nice to meet you, Mr. Lane. You came from mainland, yet have become so famous in Harbor City. You were elected as the host for the market rescue plan. Besides, your performance truly did not let anyone down. In regards to this, do you have anything that you'd like to share with everyone? Jasper thought for a moment and said with a smile, If I were to share something, I will only say that gold will shine wherever it goes. I'm not trying to praise myself. I'm just trying to tell everyone that it's 99% effort, as well as a little bit of luck and a tiny bit of talent. Only by persevering one will ultimately be successful. Leilani's eyes sparkled. She had interviewed so many people before. Unless they had already memorized their lines, it was very rare for someone to perform in such a perfect manner during a spontaneous interview session. Jasper, at that moment, regardless of his mentality or vibe, all seemed natural without an ounce of anxiety. While they were talking, Jasper was behaving appropriately and was able to fulfill a difficult task with the least effort. Leilani had only sensed such a vibe and charisma on those bosses who had been famous for a very long time in the business industry. After asking a few routine questions, Leilani did not give Henry a cold shoulder and asked him, Mr. Law, you're good friends with Mr. Lane. So, tell me, what kind of person is he in his usual life? Is he always this elegant and easygoing? Henry nearly burst into laughter. He could not comprehend the fact that Leilani was able to sense that Jasper was elegant and easy going. This brat is using his looks to cheat others again. Even though he was cursing frantically internally, Henry had a bright smile on his face. You're saying that about him? Previously, in my eyes, he was just a mainlander. No, actually he's a very good person. Henry nearly went with the flow and revealed his relationship with Jasper. He immediately became serious when he remembered that this was a serious interview. In my life, my relationship with him is actually that of a master and a student. Leilani's eyes were opened wide. She did not expect to get such an answer from the mouth of Henry. That's right. You're very surprised, right? Actually, I'm also quite astonished by my conclusion. Well, to be frank, during this period of time, I've learned a lot from him. At least... I realized just how childish I was last time. Right now, he's the target that I'm running toward. Henry shrugged his shoulders. Initially, he had not planned to praise Jasper, but as he kept talking, he realized that speaking out what was in his mind was actually not an embarrassing thing to do. As that was the case, he might as well blurt out everything that was deep within him. Setting my master as my target and learning from him is not an embarrassing thing. Leilani's eyes were gleaming with rays of excitement. She could already predict that with just Henry's statement, this issue of the magazine would be able to sell out till it was out of stock. Mr. Lane, do you think you're a genius in the investing world? Under the lightings that gathered together, Jasper sat on the sofa with the most natural and comfortable posture. When facing Leilani's question, he kept silent for a moment. Maybe I have a bit of talent. Actually, I didn't have any interest in investment at the very beginning. 
I'm actually quite a lazy person. Henry glanced at Jasper as the corners of his mouth twitched. It's starting. It's starting again. This man is starting to put on an act. Henry, who was eager to curse, did not show any fluctuations in his expression. He was even looking forward to seeing what sort of performance and script Jasper would put on and say next. Jasper's comment, which was said with a tone that made him appear calm, made Lilani experience a brief moment of suffocation. I still have some personal questions. Usually, when you're making friends, do you have any special criteria? Do you disregard identity and status? Or do those who are able to mingle with you need to possess a certain amount of wealth and status? I have no criteria. What matters is that I get along with them. I never look at their wealth nor status when I'm making friends because I know that usually, those who are of the same age as me will not be as rich as me. Henry caught the sign and grasped it on his chest. He was feeling an ache in his heart as he looked at Jasper's calm expression. Suddenly, he was feeling slightly envious of him. When can I be just like Jasper, able to blurt out such arrogant words carefreely? Mr. Lane, you've such high expectations in your investments. I heard that your returns from your previous investment were terrifying. May I ask what's your feeling about that? Well, I don't have many feelings about it. Actually, when you've earned a ton of fortune, money will become just numbers to you. Hearing it made Henry, who was beside him, and Leilani feel a strong urge coursing through them. Leilani forced herself to suppress the emotions within her. Her expression remained composed as she continued with the interview. Then, may I ask, do you have a target, Mr. Lane? Or in other words, have you ever thought that one day, you'll be able to obtain the title of being the richest man in the country? Nope. If you insist on asking for a target, well I guess I should at least be the richest man in the world? Leilani was speechless. This time, it was both Leilani and Henry whose expressions turned dark again. Even Leilani, who had received very stern training, was unable to remain composed in this interview. Even Henry wanted to purchase some cardiac medications. Are, are these even words spoken by a human? In his eyes, being the richest man in the country is not at all something to be proud of. Next up, Leilani followed her usual schedule and asked Jasper a few more questions before ending the interview. After the camera was off and the interview was over, Leilani let out a breath of relief. It was as if she had completed a big project. Mr. Lane, you're no doubt a more unique rich man I've ever interviewed. Not one of them, but the only one. Leilani's comment was approved by all the workers. The interview session was completed after being struck by a few continuous sudden strikes. Leilani and the two men left. Henry wiped off his sweat and glanced at Jasper with a weird gaze before asking weakly, Do you have any idea how well you can act? Jasper said astonishingly, But all this while, I've just been stating the truth. Henry was speechless. Henry let out a dry laugh, and his expression was dark. In no time, Henry started scolding while leaving the scene. Judging from the contents of his words, he was feeling depressed and was heading over to look for his two girlfriends to comfort his soul that was injured. On the next day at Hennessy Road of Harbor City, number 777, on the ground floor of Gladness Entertainment Movies, Hennessy Road was considered the most crowded street where all entertainment companies were. The four big movie companies were over here, and not far away from number 777 where Gladness Entertainment Movies was located, was Elite Corporation. At that moment, Gladness Entertainment Movies was very crowded. Even though it was a fact that the movie industry of Harbor City had declined, the company still shone brightly despite the poor financial status. At the entrance of Gladness Entertainment Movies, there were still people lingering around and it was extremely lively. Jasper had come over today because he had made an appointment with Michael to sign the final purchasing agreement. He was not in a hurry, but Michael was. Michael was desperate for cash as half of the cash he had was trapped within the stocks. He had earned $5 billion with $5 billion, which allowed him to have capital with a profit of $10 billion. However, he was not Jasper, and Zachary did not abuse his powers to help him out. Hence, it would take a very long time if he wanted to take out that $10 billion. That was why Michael kept remembering the $1.5 billion that Jasper would be paying to purchase Gladness Entertainment movies. Even though they had agreed to sign the agreement on that day, Jasper did not inform Michael in advance when he came over. He planned to have a look at Gladness Entertainment movies operation 
whether or not it was still functioning well. That would affect his decision on whether or not he should change the employees of the higher management after purchasing Gladness Entertainment movies officially. Once the ruler was changed, the underlings would be changed as well. Those who were of no use to Jasper would obviously need to step down. Out of the way, out of the way. As soon as Jasper entered the entrance of the building, he heard an impatient voice coming from behind. Following then, there was a hand stretched out, attempting to push Jasper away. Jasper took a step back and evaded that hand. What the F asterisk CK? Didn't you hear me asking you to get out of the way? The owner of that hand was a middle-aged man with an average physique and a potbelly. Earlier, he ended up pushing the air and felt that he had lost his dignity as he looked at Jasper with a fierce gaze. You must be Scarlet's fan, right? Did you happen to know that she'll be coming here to Gladness Entertainment Movies this morning? Hence, you've come here earlier to wait? Hurry up and get lost. Jasper calmly stared at the middle-aged man who had a big head and equally large ears. Then, he glanced at the latter's working pass on his neck and said faintly, You're an employee of Gladness Entertainment Movies? The middle-aged man suddenly let out a smile and said, I'm glad you're aware of it. Later, you'd better behave appropriately and stand aside. Don't go causing any trouble. You hear me? While he was speaking, a commotion suddenly broke out at the entrance. A luxurious car came to a halt at the entrance of the company, and immediately, there was someone who went over attentively and opened the car door while serving the owner. This scene was as if a director of a company had shown up. Jasper calmly said to the middle-aged man who had an excited expression on his face while he tidied his suit. In the eyes of your movie company, no matter how famous a celebrity is, they're just a money maker. Do you have to do things in such a grand manner? The middle-aged man glanced at Jasper and said scornfully, What do you know? How is Scarlet the same as others? The son of our company's vice president, Mr. White, is courting her. She might just become the daughter-in-law to the vice president. A loser like yourself, who can only lick her on the screens, can just forget about it for the rest of your life. At that moment, the door of the car flung open. The first to come down was a young man who insisted on wearing a suit that was made specifically for him. His entire body was giving off an exquisite aura, revealing his identity as a young master to a rich family. That man put on a smiling face and opened the car door attentively. Then, a female celebrity who was well-known throughout the entire nation came out of the car. Scarlet Yates. Being a part of Purple Fairy had immediately pushed her up to the peak among the female celebrities of Harbor City. She was considered the crush of most of the people in the same age group in the entire nation. Currently, Scarlett was at the point where she was extremely famous. As soon as she got down from the car, there was a reporter frantically taking her pictures, and there were lots of fans holding up her posters and pictures while shouting out her name. If it was not for the security personnel blocking the way, perhaps the scene might be thrown into chaos. When faced with the questions from the reporters, Scarlet smiled politely but did not answer any of them. Under the escort of the young master from the rich family from earlier, they went straight into the company. The young man glanced at the entrance of the company, feeling disgusted. He even pouted his mouth at those reporters who were rushing in and muttered, These reporters are way too annoying. As he was saying, the man glanced at the surroundings. He immediately spotted Jasper, who had long ago been standing at the side. He found Jasper to be an eyesore. Who is this guy? He pointed at Jasper and asked irritatedly. The middle-aged man planned to head forth and reply, but he soon got ruthlessly lectured. Didn't I mention before that the company doesn't permit these ordinary people to enter? These fans are just so disgusting. They think of all means to get in here to cause havoc. As he was talking, the young man lost his patience and waved his hand to Jasper as if he was getting rid of a fly. Get lost, Jasper said with a stony expression, regardless of whether or not I'm a fan. Am I causing you any trouble by just standing here and having a look? The young man did not expect Jasper to answer back. He snorted and said with his eyes squinted, judging from your slang, you must be from mainland? The young man put on a disdainful expression when he commented on that as if there was a disease on Jasper that would spread to him. Scarlet. Your fans from mainland have chased you all the way till here, said the man as he burst into laughter. Scarlet could no longer tolerate it 
and said to Jasper, Nice to meet you. If you're my fan, I need to tell you that I'm currently rushing to a meeting in the company. So, right now, I don't have much time. Why don't I give you one of my pictures with my signature on it? Jasper was rather surprised to see Scarlet being so polite. She knew her manners. He said faintly, All right. In Jasper's past life, he really did fancy Purple Fairy for some time. Scarlet gave a sweet smile directed to Jasper. Then, she spun around and received a picture from her agent. Celebrities like her would often bump into fans when she was out of her house. Hence, she had prepared all these things in advance. She signed the picture, then gave it to Jasper while saying, Thank you for your support. After receiving the picture, Jasper was surprised that it was a picture from the drama where Scarlet was dressed up as Purple Fairy. Beautiful, Jasper said sincerely. Scarlet smiled. She turned around and was about to walk away, but noticed the gloomy expression on the wealthy, second-generation white heir's face. All right, can you go away now? I came to Gladness Entertainment Movies to take care of some business. Why should I leave? Jasper shot back. Mac almost laughed out loud. The F asterisk CK, you damned country bumpkin. I've met a lot of sons of B asterisk cheese, but you're the biggest one there is. You're here at Gladness Entertainment Movies to take care of business? Do you actually know what this place is? Get lost now, or I'll call security to throw you out. Jasper said coldly, are you an employee of this company? Mac gave a smug smile as he replied, my father is the vice president of Gladness Entertainment Movies. I asked, are you an employee of this company? Mac's expression gradually darkened. You're really not going to give up until reality smacks you in the face, huh? You want to act all high and mighty in front of me even when you're not? All right then. Seeing that the situation was escalating, Scarlet hurriedly said to Mac, Mac, why don't we leave now? Today's company meeting is very important and Mr. Lane will be attending personally. Let's not waste any more time. Mac eyed Jasper coldly and ground out through gritted teeth. Count yourself lucky today. Bumpkin, as he spoke, Mac directed his words at the middle-aged man beside him, who had broken out in a cold sweat. This is Gladness Entertainment Movies. It's a big company. Not every Tim, Dick, and Harry can come in here. You don't want your job anymore, is that it? If that's the case, I'll just let my father know you can get out immediately. No, 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 rest assured Mr. White. I'll call security immediately and chase him out. The middle-aged man's expression was full of panic. With a snort, Mac eyed Jasper and sneered, Bumpkin, Harbor City isn't somewhere you can come and act like some pretentious prick. Remember that. Now get lost. With that, Mac and Scarlet left together. With a frosty glance at Mac's back, Jasper headed inside the building. Hey! The middle-aged man exclaimed and hurried over with two security guards to stop him. You were told to get lost, didn't you hear? Are you that keen on digging your own grave? The middle, aged man asked Jasper in flustered exasperation. Why are you acting like his flunky when he's not someone from the company? Jasper asked coldly. With a sneer, the middle-aged man retorted. How can a country bumpkin like you be such an idiot? His father is the vice president. The vice president, do you understand? He could crush you with just the tip of a finger. You're already pretty lucky to have gotten an autographed photo so go home and lap it up. Now hurry up and leave. As the middle-aged man was speaking, the door of the elevator opened and a capable, experienced career woman hurried out. The moment she noticed Jasper at the door, her eyes lit up and she approached him with the utmost respect. When the middle-aged man saw her, he was startled. In an instant, his expression altered, becoming a million times more circumspect than when he had faced Mac. He went up to her and said very cautiously, Secretary Lee, why are you here? If you have any instructions, you only need to give us a call and we'll take care of things. Secretary Lee ignored him. Walking over to stand directly in front of Jasper, she said deferentially, Mr. Lane, you've already arrived. Mr. Lane is in the meeting room upstairs waiting for you to commence the signing ceremony. Would you follow me, please? Jasper gave the ghastly pale middle-aged man a bland look and asked, What is this person's position? Secretary Lee did not know what the middle-aged man had done to offend Jasper. Nevertheless, she replied, He is one of the deputy reception managers. 
have him pack up his things and leave. After saying this, Jasper immediately headed toward the elevator. Secretary Lee looked at the violently trembling middle-aged man, whose forehead was drenched in cold sweat. Shaking her head, she noted, You heard him, right? Go get your salary from finance, sign the termination agreement, and leave. The middle-aged man asked indignantly, That fellow? Who is he? Isn't he just some country bumpkin from the mainland? He's our new boss. With a look of pity at the middle-aged man, Secretary Lee hurried to catch up with Jasper and left. With a plop, the middle-aged man sat right down on the floor, ashen-faced. The building of Gladness Entertainment Movies had a total of 26 floors. Jasper took the elevator directly to Michael's office on the top floor. Mr. Lane, why didn't you tell me you're coming? I could have arranged for someone to welcome you in advance. Michael laughed aloud as he stood up and walked to the door. He shook Jasper's hand. I came to take a look at how Gladness is and I wasn't disappointed, Jasper said meaningfully. Michael smiled a little and thought nothing of it. He dismissed Secretary Lee with a wave of his hand. He invited Jasper to take a seat and said, All families have skeletons in their closets. To be honest, I've indeed neglected my business in the film industry in the past two years, which has led to some issues within the high-level and mid-level management. Michael tapped his temple lightly as he said, Mr. Lane, you're throwing me a mess, Jasper rubbed between his brows and said. Michael smiled and replied, You don't have to be so pessimistic. Most of the higher-ups are fairly diligent and conscientious, such as the current CEO, Ryder Lawrence. He was hired back from Haluvu with a large sum of money. You can use him as you wish. We'll talk after I get to know him, Jasper said. Shall we get going then? The signing ceremony is ready. All the higher-ups and top-tier celebrities who are important to the company are already there, Michael said. Jasper got up, nodded, and said, Let's go. The meeting room on the 25th floor of the company. The huge meeting room was full at the moment, and everyone was whispering to one another. The people sitting in the frontmost row were all the current top executives of Gladness Entertainment Movies. CEO Ryder Lawrence was a man in his early 40s who was wearing gold-rimmed glasses and a solemn expression. A wealthy-looking middle-aged man came over from the side and inquired, Mr. Lawrence, what is Mr. Lane's plan? I'm a little puzzled that the company has been sold all of a sudden. I heard that it was sold to a mainlander. Do you know anything about it? Ryder shook his head and said, I'm not sure. Mr. White, just mind your own business. You still have to work regardless of who the company is sold to, no? Joseph chuckled and said yes, but in his heart, he was cursing Ryder. You, Ryder Lawrence, is a CEO who can just brush his bottom and leave any time. I'm F asterisk king tied to Gladness Entertainment movies since a long time ago. Where else can I go besides here? Joseph's worry echoed with the vast majority of people in Gladness Entertainment movies. No one knew what this new boss was like. Some of the top-tier celebrities were quite fine with this. With their fame, they were not afraid of not being able to put food on the table. However, for the other shady mid- to high-level managers, their hearts were drumming in their chests. A little to the front from the middle of the meeting room, Max said to Scarlett who was next to him, rest assured, my dad holds a veteran status within the company. No matter who the boss is, they'll have to count on him. When the time comes, I'll ask my dad to keep you busy, and the resources you will get will definitely be much more than what you have now. Scarlett suppressed her annoyance and said politely, thank you then. Max smiled smugly and said, my dad started this business with Mr. Lane. Many matters in Gladness Entertainment movies were personally spearheaded by my dad. My dad's status is higher than anyone else's. Suddenly, the buzzing meeting room quietened down. The side door of the meeting room opened and everyone's gazes were drawn to it. The main character was here. Michael was the first one to be seen, but he was very polite. After entering, he turned sideways and made a gesture of invitation. A very young man with an imposing presence walked in immediately afterward. Everyone was shocked by this man's youth upon seeing him. Mac and Scarlett, who were sitting in their seats, had expressions that were beyond incredulous. Especially Mac, whose eyes were widened and had his hair on end. It was as though he had seen a ghost in broad daylight. The person who came in was Jasper Lane, the one who was hooted and driven away by him downstairs earlier. Isn't he that country bumpkin? 
Matt cried out involuntarily. At this time, Jasper had already walked toward the center of the meeting room at Michael's invitation. Michael would be selling the company to Jasper in the next moment, so he was tactful. Even though he was still the current chairman, he still deliberately lagged behind Jasper by half a step, highlighting Jasper's future authority in Gladness Entertainment movies. After he took the microphone, Michael said to everyone who was still shocked by Jasper's youth, Today's a sentimental day, but also a day worthy of joy. Today, the Gladness Entertainment movies of the past will come to an end. But today is also the day where the brand new Gladness Entertainment movies will welcome a new life. Michael was very good with words. After his opening speech, he continued right away. As the chairman of Gladness Entertainment Movies, I have one last thing to announce today. Gladness Entertainment Movies will be sold to Mr. Jasper Lane who's next to me. He will lead everyone to higher glory in the future. Then came the signing ceremony. There was still thunderous applause regardless of what everyone below the stage thought. After signing and exchanging documents, Jasper formally acquired 100% equity of Gladness Entertainment Movies and was automatically elected as the chairman of the board of directors and concurrent chairman. Michael stepped down after handing the microphone to Jasper. Jasper smiled a little as he stood on the highest spot of the meeting room, looking at the employees of Gladness Entertainment Movies beneath who looked at him with various expressions. He said, Hello, everyone. I'd like to thank Mr. Lane for his trust. I will replace Mr. Lane and continue to push Gladness Entertainment Movies toward the peak from here on. This was considered to be Jasper's declaration after he took the throne of Gladness Entertainment Movies. There was another round of applause. However, today's meeting is an internal meeting. Is there anyone present who does not hold any position in Gladness Entertainment Movies and is not a contract artist of Gladness Entertainment Movies? Jasper's words distorted Mac's expression as he had already been anxious and fearful for the past few minutes. The corners of his mouth twitched. His expression was stiff and his face was flustered. The others also felt a little baffled by Jasper's words. Everyone gradually looked toward Mac. In the past two years, Mac had done a lot of resentful things in the company using his father's identity. Even some female stars would bow down to him and had to please him. Jasper's words immediately shrouded the meeting room with an extremely weird atmosphere. At this moment, Jasper followed everyone's gaze and looked at Mac White. Under everyone's gaze, Mac stood up with an expression of embarrassment and anger. He felt like a monkey being surrounded and watched by people in the zoo at this moment. This is Gladness Entertainment Movies Meeting Room. You're neither an employee nor a contracted artist of Gladness Entertainment Movies, so what are you doing here? Jasper asked dully. At this moment, everyone understood that this would be the first cut of the newly appointed boss knife. Nobody knew how Mac White had offended the new boss, so much so that he was being addressed directly. Most people looked at Mac gloatingly, wishing him bad luck. Aye. Mac found it difficult to speak and could not think of an appropriate reason. As such, he could only ask for help by looking over at his father, Joseph White. Joseph frowned a little and looked at Jasper darkly, his expression slightly gloomy. Naturally, Joseph could not bear to watch his own son be humiliated. Just as he was about to speak, he heard Jasper's voice shocking the audience through the speakers. Get out! Get out! Jasper's voice was amplified by many fold through the speakers. Mac, who was already flustered with a guilty conscience, shuddered. He was so scared that he fell back into his seat under everyone's watchful eyes. A number of people at the scene sniggered when they saw Mac's flustered appearance. Joseph's expression changed unsightly. The mid-level managers and those artists were looking at his own son, Mac, but the higher-ups of the company kept their eyes on Joseph. Seeing that his son had been humiliated till this point, Joseph knew that he had to speak up no matter what. He stood up, wanting to go up the stage to Jasper's side to speak. However, Jasper swept his gaze over and said indifferently, Who is the one standing up? Secretary Lee, who had been watching everything quietly on one side, immediately walked over and said into Jasper's ear, This is Joseph White, the company's vice president and Mac's father. Then, there's no need for you to come over. Just stand there and speak, Jasper said coolly. Joseph's expression sank. There was a hint of resentment in the depths of his eyes, but he stood at his place and said to Jasper, Mr. Lane, 
He's my son, Mac White. He actually came to apply for a job today. The company has already considered letting him take the position of a contract supervisor. Who's in charge of the human resources department? Jasper asked coolly. Everyone present was silent. No one answered, but everyone's gaze was on Joseph. Joseph's expression was extremely unsightly. He said that Mac came here to apply for a job, but it was considered a lie. He had already planned to place his son in the company a long time ago. It was just that in the past few years, he had run amok in the company and had made many enemies. His son had also followed his arrogance and became a spoiled brat. Many higher-ups headed by Ryder were opposed to this matter, and he was still working on it. Vice President White is in charge of the Human Resources Department. It was still Secretary Lee who explained matters to Jasper. So you, who are in charge of the Human Resources Department, plan to place your son into the company? Jasper asked coldly. Although he's my son, I appoint people based on their merit. Before Joseph was done speaking, he was interrupted by Jasper. Since you intend to utilize him, has there been any public recruitment conducted in accordance with the company's rules and regulations? Is there documentation of the recruitment process? Joseph was speechless this time. The formal personnel appointments in modern companies had a set of very formal procedures and processes. If the company had gone through with it, it would definitely leave evidence. However, Joseph only relied on being in charge of the human resources department. How could he have gone through those procedures and processes? Once such procedures were gone through, how could an idiot like Mac be selected? It seems that there isn't any, Jasper said coolly. Gladness Entertainment movies used to be Mr. Lane's. Now it's mine. But I don't know when it has ever been Mr. White's. Jasper's words caused the hundreds of people present to tense their bodies. When new officials took office, bold changes might be made on assuming office. The new boss of the entire company would inevitably alter the management. It was just that nobody expected Jasper's method to be so decisive and assertive. He targeted the eldest senior, Joseph, as soon as he took over the company. On one side, Michael looked at everything with a faint smile. Everything about gladness had nothing to do with him now. Therefore, from the perspective of a bystander, Michael could increasingly feel the depths and wisdom of Jasper's actions. Before this, Secretary Lee had told him everything that had happened downstairs. Hence, Michael knew that Jasper seemed to want to make Mac eat a humble pie. However, how could the truth be that simple? Mac was but a minor character, not worthy of making a big fuss over. His aim was still Joseph, or in other words, to eradicate the higher-ups of Gladness Entertainment movies. Joseph had been an executive in the company for many years and had secretly infringed on countless of the company's vested interests. His son, Mac, would not have the guts to paw at the company's artists otherwise. It was not that Michael did not know of it, but Joseph was indeed a founding member who had followed him for many years. On the other hand, there was also the complexity of bureaucratic division within Gladness Entertainment movies, and if he disturbed one division, the rest would also be affected. It would be big trouble for Michael to deal with it. However, it was different now. Jasper never had the intention to take things slow and steady. When he made a move, he would make it big. It was not only to establish his authority, but also to sweep away every other background noise in the company. It would only be him who had the authority and power. My apologies, Mr. Lane. I, Joseph said with a troubled expression. He had the intention of acknowledging his mistake. There's no need to apologize, Jasper interrupted him once again. Having been with Gladness for so many years, you still made the effort even if you didn't gain achievements. I'll let you keep your reputation, so do hand me your resignation letter voluntarily tomorrow. Jasper's words completely changed the expression on Joseph's face. Every one of the higher-level management including him had thought that Jasper only wanted to display some authority after taking office. However, he had immediately gone to the depths by taking action, and his method was intense. Shocked and in disbelief, Joseph opened his mouth in indignation. He said, Jasper, what is the meaning of this? Was my intention not clear enough? Jasper asked indifferently. I'm a founding member of this company and I manage a large number of people under me. Aren't you afraid that the company won't be able to run smoothly if I leave? Threatened Joseph immediately. His gaze was bitter with resentment, yet it still held confidence and assurance. 
He did not believe that Jasper would really dare go against him till the end. Jasper looked at Joseph coolly, his eyes only showing indifference. There was no trace of concession that Joseph was expecting on his face. Will the earth stop on its axis just because you're no longer here? Jasper said coldly. Get lost now and I'll see who are the few rotten apples who will follow you as you leave. I will sincerely thank you for saving my time in weeding and getting rid of a few more of them. Joseph was so angry his body shook. At the same time, there was also a feeling of despair as if the end was approaching. All right, just wait. Don't celebrate so soon. This film company is not one where you can so easily manage. After Joseph said this with a very bitter voice, he turned around and left in embarrassment. Nobody dared take a breath. Joseph's playing of his vice president's card had proven that Jasper was not only all bark and no bite. Who would dare object at this time? Jasper did not even spare a glance at Joseph. His eyes fell on Mac, who was unable to even stand. He was now sitting limply in the chair. Jasper said lightly, Do you want me to get someone to escort you out? Mac stood up shivering and ran away without looking back. In the meeting room, everyone looked at Jasper and waited for him to speak after Joseph and his son had left. I don't care how the company was before, but now that I have acquired it, all of you will do things according to my rules. If you're capable, you will rise. If you're not, you will fall. Troublemakers like Joseph will be caught and fired. There will definitely be no mercy. I announced Gladness Entertainment Movies to be officially renamed Advent Entertainment Group. It will be split into three larger business groups called Advent Films, Advent TV, and Advent Agency. The three business groups will be in charge of film and television dramas, singing and variety shows, and overseeing the contracts of artists of Advent Entertainment Group respectively. In the meantime, President Ryder Lawrence will continue serving the group in his position. Other personnel arrangements will remain unchanged. An official document will be issued to notify all employees of the company of the subsequent appointment of the board of directors. Michael sighed softly as he looked at Jasper speaking on stage. It seemed that Jasper had long been prepared before buying Gladness Entertainment movies. He had been eyeing the entertainment industry. He suddenly regretted having sold Gladness Entertainment movies to Jasper for a capital price of $1.5 billion. Maybe Jasper could really create a giant in the film and television entertainment industry. All right, these few points are all that we'll be discussing today. If anyone has a better idea, please feel free to talk to me or Mr. Ryder Lawrence. That's all for today. It took Jasper two hours to finish this meeting. He walked away in a breezy manner but everyone in Gladness Entertainment Movies was unsettled and had mixed emotions. Almost everyone thought that change was coming to Gladness Entertainment Movies. After the meeting, Jasper then talked to Michael. Michael was full of praise for Jasper. Michael, the cunning old fox, could tell that Jasper would inevitably make great achievements and have the last laugh in the future, provided that he did not get trampled to death while he was still an immature youth. It was already hard enough for anyone to mess with Jasper now. After a series of affairs, those who wanted to give Jasper trouble would have to think twice because they would have to deal with the laws at the same time. Those who were incapable of doing it should just give up. Therefore, Michael was extremely friendly with Jasper because then he might have the chance to work with him in the future and make a fortune. What was more, the five billion summer dollars that Jasper had earned for him was now lying in the stock market. When Harbor City's economy recovered a little, he would then withdraw it immediately. He owed him a great favor. As for Jasper, he accepted Michael's goodwill fully. It was important to exalt each other, especially in business. It was better to make more friends than enemies. Lone wolves who walked around with their noses in the air definitely would not make it too far in the business field. They talked and laughed and had a great time. Michael kept talking and it was not until Secretary Lee came to make reports that he sought permission to leave. As soon as Michael left, Ryder entered through the door. Hello, Mr. Lane, Ryder greeted politely. Standing behind the desk, Jasper looked at Ryder. He was a middle-aged man in his early forties, the type that young girls in later generations would be greatly obsessed with. He said with a smile, please have a seat. When Ryder took his seat, he pondered for a moment and said, Mr. Lane, to be honest with you, the changes happened too quickly at today's meeting. Many people, myself included, are at a loss at what to do next. Just act according to the company's articles of association, 
Jasper replied. Mr. Lane told me that you're a professional manager from Halivo and that he had paid handsomely to hire you. You have a wealth of experience and know how to manage an entertainment company, so I can trust you. Ryder waved his hands and said, With all due respect, I can't make bricks without straw. What do you need? Jasper asked. Ryder was startled by how straightforward Jasper was and felt so awkward that he did not know how to start. If you lack money, then I'll continue to inject 300 million summer dollars into Advent Entertainment Group. Spend the money first and then assess the effect after spending. If you lack manpower, go to a headhunting company and hire talents from there. If you lack power, you're the company's president. I'm going back to mainland soon, so I can delegate a lot of power to you. I can give you full authority. Jasper leaned on the executive chair and looked at Ryder with a smile. Ryder looked at the unruffled-looking Jasper as he made those bold claims. For more than 20 years he had been in the industry, he had never met a boss like him who did things so differently. Who would fool around like that immediately after acquiring a company? Advent Entertainment Group seemed like nothing but a toy to him. Advent Entertainment Group is a crucial piece in my business landscape. I will not tolerate any mistakes, and therefore I'm eager to succeed. We don't have much time left. I can give you what you want, but I want to see a powerful Advent Entertainment Group in the shortest time frame possible. Ryder looked intently at Jasper. He knew that Jasper was serious about this. However, the more he received, the heavier his burden would be. Ryder knew that Jasper would not give so much power for no reason. What's your condition? Ryder asked. I want Advent Entertainment Group to produce five movies with box office of more than one billion summer dollars within two years, bring at least three phenomenon-level celebrities to fame, and double the scale of assets. Jasper stated his request and said with a smile, In addition to the rights I mentioned above, you can also get 10% of the company's stock. If you can accomplish it, then your net worth will grow over 100 million. If you can't, then I can only find someone else. Ryder took a deep breath, stood up, and said, I'm willing to try. Jasper laughed, then stood up and shook Ryder's hand while saying, I'm an easygoing man. I won't interfere with the company's day-to-day -day affairs. I focus on the results, not the process. I don't treat my subordinates as workers, and I prefer to use cooperation to define superior subordinate relationships. If everyone performs well, then we'll make a fortune together. If not, then I'll work with someone else. Ryder laughed as well, saying, To be honest with you, Mr. Lane, I did plan to resign and join a new company. I've also talked to several headhunters. But now, I think it'll be a whole new experience working with you. Jasper laughed and said, Let's shine together. M.M. Let's shine together. Ryder nodded. After Ryder left, Jasper pondered for a very long time in the office. Jasper did not have a candidate that was better than Ryder right now, hence he could only give it a try and employ him. Jasper was not lying earlier either. If Ryder did a good job, then he would give him all the benefits he stated earlier. If not, then Ryder would have to pack up and leave. Jasper was not running a charity. He acquired Gladness Entertainment movies for $1.5 and injected another $300 million after that. That was $1.8 billion altogether. He must see results. He would be able to tell whether Ryder was performing well or not in just a few months' time. In Jasper's opinion, it would not be difficult to establish a phenomenal entertainment company when he recalled the songs, TV series, and even variety shows that would go viral in the future. However, Jasper could not just sit around doing nothing and stay in the entertainment company doing one thing only. His goal was to be a true modern consortium not to have a successful business. That would be too boring and not grand enough. Therefore, although Jasper had high demands for Ryder, he did not mind pulling up certain things from memory to let Ryder apply them in the business if he was a genuine talent. If Ryder was not, then he would just leave him be. Now that matters related to Advent Entertainment Group were settled, it would not be long before it was time for him to leave Harbor City. At the thought of this, Jasper summoned Jake Cullen, after rushing over to Gladness Entertainment Movies, Jake was stunned for a very long time after hearing the news that Jasper had acquired the company. Why are you daydreaming? Here's an investment list containing the stock names and the pre-authorized amount that I want you to purchase next month. Jasper gave him a list that totaled up to a $2 billion investment. Some stocks in the list could already be purchased, but some had not reached the lowest price yet. 
hence it was necessary to wait it out. Jasper did not have the time to wait it out, and at the same time, he did not want to purchase at a higher price and be taken advantage of. Therefore, this was where Jay came in. Two billion. You're giving it to me straight away for investment? Didn't you ask me to manage only? Aren't you afraid that I'll run away with the money? Jake asked in shock, looking at the list in his hand. What are you thinking about? The funds will be in the law's trusteeship. You can't take a single dime away without the law's authorization. They also have a copy of this list, Jasper said. Jake gritted his teeth, wanting to slap himself in the mouth. Did he have nothing better to do? Why did he bring contempt upon himself? At this moment, Jasper's phone rang. It was a call from Zachary. Jasp, Old Master Law is back and wants to see you. Can you come over? Jake heard the contents of the call. His heart skipped a beat. He knew that Jasper shared a close relationship with the laws. However, from the viewpoint of an ordinary person, Jake thought that Jasper was at most close to Henry and Anna. They were of the same generation, after all. Then it was from there that he used his own ability to gain recognition from Zachary. This was a standard procedure that was very easy to grasp. However, Zachary was personally giving Jasper a call and told him that Old Master Law had returned. Where Old Master Law went was not important, but the first thing he wanted to do when he came home was to meet Jasper. This meant a lot of things. This showed that Jasper was not only a popular figure in the Law family, but he also played a pivotal role in front of Old Master Law. How many people in Harbor City today could meet Old Master Law as they liked? To put it negatively, even the head of Harbor City's government needed to seek Old Master Law's approval before meeting him. The noble and prestigious Old Master Law had an intimidating identity. He was renowned and distinguished even in mainland. Although he only had a nominal post, the prestige he had accumulated over the decades was enough to prove many things. I'll be there soon. Now that Old Master Law had asked to see him, Jasper dared not keep him waiting. After hanging up the call, Jasper instructed Jake on a few things. The latter's thoughts were fully occupied by the relationship between Jasper and Old Master Law, hence he only nodded absent-mindedly. Why didn't you tell me that you share such a good relationship with Old Master Law? Jake asked suddenly. Had you told me earlier, do you think I'd be so crazy as to act so brazenly in front of you? Jasper was taken aback, then said sternly, Do I look like an ostentatious person to you? Jake turned around, ignoring Jasper. He could not stand the pretentious look on his face. It was already afternoon when Jasper arrived at the Laws. Zachary had gone out, while Anna and Henry were chatting with Old Master Law. You're here, Jasp. Old Master Law raised his head and said to Jasper with a smile, You're in good spirits as always. Jasper said while walking over, making himself at home and sitting down. Old Master Law chuckled. A person becomes more afraid of death as they grow older. I have to take good care of my body and live a few more years. You're sure to live to a ripe old age, Old Master Law, Jasper said cleverly. Old Master Law laughed, took a magazine from Anna's hand and said, I see you were interviewed. Good job. Jasper took the magazine and said in surprise, it's published already? That's fast. It was the latest issue of Terra's Financial Weekly. On the cover of the magazine, Jasper was seen sitting on a couch, smiling. He was clasping his hands with his chin resting on them. He was radiating with health and vigor, looking both outstanding and elegant. The title was even more eye-catching. The stock market genius made every effort to save a desperate situation. Apart from everything else, Jasper could tell that Terra's Financial Weekly was pretty sophisticated judging from the cover photo and title alone. Upon flipping the cover page, the full interview contents were basically in it. There were also a few pictures printed that were taken during the interview. Contents and pictures of professional-level magazines like this were meticulously designed, which made it very interesting to read. The things that Jasper said were pretty novel too. For example, the things he said about choosing friends his goal to be the richest man in the world, and so on. Not a single thing he said was left out. To appear on such a strict and traditional financial magazine, it was clear that Jasper's words were extremely appealing. The most unique thing of all was that Henry was included as well. Henry's internal monologue had set Jasper off to a considerable height. If even Henry had admitted that Jasper was outstanding and thought of him as his teacher, 
who would have the guts to say that Jasper was only fishing for fame and reputation. What was more, Jasper's record was evident. Harbor City's financial crisis had just passed not long ago. I'm so envious. Henry had already read the contents, but he still said sourly. When you're capable enough, you too will be the main character one day, Anna said. Henry snorted and said, that will happen sooner or later. Oh. Anna looked over. Sure, I'll be waiting. Old Master Law smiled and said to Jasper, you did really well, Jasp. Although I wasn't around, I knew about everything that was going on. Excellent. You have once again proved me right. Jasper said with great sincerity, if the laws hadn't helped me, things wouldn't have moved so smoothly for me either. Jasper expressed those words from the bottom of his heart. The laws had helped him a lot since the beginning. Both parties were not so much allies because both Old Master Law and Zachary treated him as one of their own juniors. Jasper was not an ungrateful person. He would remember their kindness and the favor they showed him. Old Master Law said with a chuckle, You've helped the laws tremendously too. Zachary told me that you've helped the laws earn 30 billion this time. That's a huge favor you've done for the laws. Anna's eyes glowed when she looked at Jasper. Henry clicked his tongue. He knew that Jasper had helped the laws earn a lot of money this time. But since Zachary did not say how much exactly, he did not ask either. Henry was startled after hearing that the exact amount was 30 billion. Even for the laws, 30 billion was a big sum. Jasper was able to do it without anyone knowing. Old Master Law, I'm returning to mainland soon, but before that, I still have a few investment projects in Harbor City. I'll need all the help I can get from the laws, Jasper said. Old Master Law said, take this to Zachary. Your business is the law's business. As he said those words, Old Master Law thought for a while and glanced at Henry with a meaningful look on his face. Henry tensed up subconsciously. No matter how prodigal he was, as soon as he was facing Old Master Law, he would turn as obedient as a puppet. He would be afraid to cause any trouble at all. Actually, I'm optimistic about Mainland's development, Old Master Law said slowly. Jasper nodded. Among the richest in Harbor City, the Laws were indeed the first to invest in Mainland. They had invested a large sum of money as well. Of course, Old Master Law was hoping to drive Mainland's economy. He was not running a charity. No matter how powerful a family was, it could never drive a country's economy on its own. Therefore, all investments made by the laws were still done based on interest. A virtuous cycle was when a project could drive the local economy, make money, then use the profits to continue investing. This was what the laws had been doing. Mainland's economy will advance by leaps and bounds next, so we plan to enter earlier to make arrangements, but we need someone to coordinate. Zachary is too busy, so I plan to train Henry for a period of time by sending him to Mainland. As Old Master Law spoke, he did not notice Henry's jaw dropping. He only said to Jasper gently, This is supposedly unrealistic. Henry is ignorant and incompetent. No matter how much money I give him, it'll all go to waste. But things are different now that you're here. This was also my initial intention, and that's to let Henry follow you and learn from you. Jasper was not surprised by what Old Master Law said. He could already have predicted this when Old Master Law sent Henry to him. Surely, as the one and only third-generation son who had inheritance rights to the Law family, Henry was not going to keep fooling around. In the future, Henry did learn as silver tried in a furnace. Jasper's appearance, however, had caused the Laws to change their initial plan. Therefore, Jasper did not hesitate to accept Old Master Law's request. Okay. Jasper answered straight away. Henry was moved to tears. Do you believe in me so much? This was the first time Henry had ever felt Jasper's kindness. Old Master Law, if there's really no way around this, then ask Uncle Zachary to give birth to another son. He's still young anyway. Or maybe you can let Anna be the heiress instead. No ordinary person would ever have the guts to sit in someone else's home, especially not in front of Old Master Law, and tell them what to do. This was an absolute taboo in every family. Outsiders had no right to comment on their family. Jasper, however, did it ever so casually. Not only did Old Master Law not take it to heart, but he even laughed and said, You've hit the nail on the head. I'll consider it. Henry erupted on the spot. Believe me, 
Grandpa, I know I was wrong now. What I've been doing in the past was nothing but a waste of time. I only fooled around all the time. I've repented and turned over a new leaf. When he got to this point, Henry glanced at Jasper and then said in a very serious tone, that's because Jasper taught me that a true man is absolutely dope, and those who only rely on their family to gain status and power are simply using their powerful connections to intimidate others. Old Master Law did not understand what Henry meant by dope, but he knew it was something good. For the first time ever, Old Master Law did not lecture Henry like he always did. Instead, he said earnestly, Grandpa is getting older. I don't know how much longer I can live. Once I leave, I can foresee great changes befalling the family. Young people like you need to grow up quicker. Both Henry and Anna put on a stony resolve. Henry said, Grandpa, you'll definitely live to a ripe old age. Anna added, Why are you saying these things all of a sudden, Grandpa? Old Master Law smiled and said, Do you think I'll never die? Am I supposed to turn into an old fairy or something? As he said that, Old Master Law waved his hand and said, I'm tired. I'm going upstairs to get some rest. Jasp, stay for dinner tonight. Okay. Jasper got up and sent Old Master Law upstairs. Zachary also took the opportunity to have dinner at home. At the dinner table, Zachary and Jasper talked in detail about certain projects that they were working on together. Real estate is the best way for the government of Harbor City to recover its economy quickly. With that being said, real estate will soon usher in great development. Zachary agreed with Jasper. No matter which country or region, the real estate industry was definitely a pillar industry that could drive the economy. Although real estate in Harbor City was still in a downturn, it would soon flourish. My plan is to establish a real estate company in Harbor City in the future. Although market competition over here is fierce enough, I may still have a chance. Jasper said while smiling at Zachary, Are you interested, Uncle Zachary? Zachary smiled and said, a large part of the Law family's properties are in real estate. So, of course, I'm interested. But Jasp, are you planning to buy the property for hoarding or buy a piece of land to develop it yourself? I'm buying a piece of land to develop it, Jasper replied resolutely. He had memories about the future and new areas where housing prices would rise dramatically, so naturally, he would not do tacky things like being a middleman. You need a large capital to enter Harbor City's real estate industry. Zachary said. Jasper nodded, even though his total wealth had already reached 10 billion. Of the 10 billion, 2 billion would be left in the Harbor City stock market to make money. 1.8 billion had been invested in Advent Entertainment Group. There was only 6.2 billion cash left in his hands. Though it seemed like an awful lot, it was still not enough to enter the real estate industry. Let's wait until Harbor City's stocks recover. Jasper chuckled lightly, sounding extremely confident. Jasper needed the law's help to watch over the two billion investment funds that Jasper gave to Jake. Zachary was aware of this. With your ability, I'm sure you can make a fortune out of the two billion. But how much can you make in the short run? In my opinion, Harbor City's real estate will launch early next year, Zachary asked curiously. It's enough. When the time comes, the two billion will triple, Jasper said lightly. Everyone at the table was startled. There were only two months left before the end of the year, and at least four months to the beginning of next year. 300% profit in four months? Henry looked at Jasper and thought how he was constantly deepening his understanding toward pomposity. There was no limit to this person's pomposity. When would he ever get to this stage? Had those words not come out of Jasper's very mouth, others would have regarded him as a fool by now. Sure, I'll order someone to invest according to your list. Zachary laughed. Let's make a fortune together. When the law's capital comes in, we can then make advanced stock speculations. It's a good thing, Jasper said with a smile. The Langdons. With a bang, a magazine was thrown far away. Mitch stared at Tara's financial weekly on the ground with gloomy eyes and raged. Are these editors crazy? How can a man like that go on a cover? Bob sat on the couch and said lightly, Don't get so angry, Mitch. I'm not surprised to see him on Tara's Financial Weekly after what he has done. The things he said are really novel, eh? Kennedy said. Mitch sneered. He's only making those bold and arrogant claims to attract attention. I can't believe those rubbish media are actually currying favor with him. 
Does he really think he's now Harbor City's king? Mitch? Kennedy looked at Mitch and said faintly, If you can't bring yourself to recognize your opponent's strength, then you will forever remain at the bottom of the ladder. Mitch's expression darkened as he gritted his teeth. I can't stand his arrogant face. Bob glanced at both father and son before saying meaningfully, he has officially acquired Gladness Entertainment Movies, renamed it Advent Entertainment Group, and divided it into three major business groups. He seems ambitious and wealthy. Mitch sneered. He's only trying to court people's favor with his nonsense. Does he really think he's capable enough to enter the entertainment industry? Well, after taking a look at his plan, I can say that you're right. Today, he fired Joseph White, a veteran who previously worked for Michael. Joseph came to me to ask for a job, Bob mused. Kennedy raised his eyebrows slightly. A veteran? He must be really familiar with gladness then? At least this saboteur will create enough trouble for him, Bob chuckled and said viciously. Since he has invested heavily in the entertainment industry, we will then knock him down and suppress his arrogance. Mitch said excitedly, that's right. We can't allow him to keep being so arrogant. Who does he think he is? He's just a country boy acting absurdly in Harbor City. We must teach him a lesson. What are you planning to do? Kennedy looked at Bob. There was a sinister smile on Bob's face when he said, What else? Jasper has spent more than a billion to buy Gladness and renamed it Advent Entertainment Group. It's obvious that he needs to spend a lot of effort doing this. It's not easy to succeed in one thing, but it's extremely easy to destroy it. I intend to start with Joseph White. He was in Gladness for many years and knows many secrets and scandals. We'll ask him to reveal some of it after some time. I call this controlling public opinion. I'll then ask him to poach several top-notch celebrities from Gladness. I call this pulling the carpet from underneath. As he said that, Bob chuckled and said, Once these are all done, we will contact Emperor Entertainment. They won't want to see a big entertainment company backed by the law's rise to popularity. They're more anxious than us. How do you think Gladness is supposed to stay in business if all the industries are against them? The more Mitch listened, the brighter his eyes glowed. Bob did not sleep with so many female celebrities for so many years for nothing. At least he was clearer than anyone about the entertainment industry's rules. I'll take care of this. Mitch offered. I want to trample Jasper to the ground myself. Mitch's expression was grim, and his eyes were exceedingly sinister. Kennedy mused on how Jasper was almost turning into a demon residing in his son's heart. If this issue was not resolved, his son probably would not be able to get over it. At the thought of this, Kennedy nodded and said, Okay, I'll leave this to you. We'll give you a portion of our family's resources to support you. Also, discuss this with Uncle Bob. He's more experienced than you and can point you in the right direction. Mitch nodded and said excitedly, Got it. I'll come to you for help if I need any pointers, Uncle Bob. Bob laughed. Sure, but it's best that we start this plan a little later. We will easily alert our enemy if we act now. I understand. Mitch gritted his teeth and stared viciously at the magazine he had tossed to the ground, saying, I'll let him have fun for a few more days first. Bob's eyes flashed with a deep, meaningful smile. Before Harbor City stabilizes, it's best that you stay put. Don't cause a stir. We'll defeat Jasper sooner or later. Yes. Mitch nodded. Although he was eager to end Jasper now, Jasper was simply too reputable at the moment. With the laws as his backer, it was impossible to get rid of him alone. He could only wait for the perfect opportunity. On the other side, Jasper was done packing up his luggage and was ready to leave Harbor City. Many things in mainland had been put aside because he was in Harbor City for so long. Now that everything here had been dealt with, it was time for him to hurry back. Mainland's industry was Jasper's top priority after all. After his farewell this time, it would probably be a very long time before he would return to Harbor City again. Henry and Anna came to see him off at the airport. They had spent a considerable amount of time together during this period of time and had naturally formed a much stronger bond now. Henry was completely awake by now. What started as a dislike for Jasper in the beginning had turned into admiration today. Jasper had become his role model. Anna had witnessed everything that Jasper did with her own eyes. An outstanding man like him had sparked the fondness in the depths of her heart. When they were bidding farewell at the airport, 
Henry said to Jasper casually, let's both be pompous together the next time I go to mainland to visit you. I'm not really good at being pompous, to be honest, Jasper said sincerely. Look, you're being pompous again. Henry twitched his lips. He was already used to Jasper's unexpected pomposity. On a side note, their relationship was different than before. They were so close that they could joke around with each other at any time. Jasper looked at Anna who remained silent the whole time and chuckled. I'm leaving now, Anna. I'll come and visit you in Harbor City next time. Or maybe when you visit Mainland. I'll definitely take good care of you. Okay, it's a deal. Anna nodded, her eyes flashing with a hint of obscurity. She muttered under her breath, Have a safe journey. Thank you. Having said that, Jasper turned to leave. He had just lifted his suitcase when a fragrant breeze whizzed past him. The soft and graceful woman was embracing Jasper from behind. Jasper was taken aback. When he turned around, he was surprised to see that it was Anna hugging him. He did not expect Anna to be so bold. One must know that this was Harbor City Airport, and she was the law's daughter. If anyone saw this, then this would surely make it to the media headlines tomorrow. Don't move, don't talk, don't turn around. Anna sounded really anxious. It was as if she was afraid that Jasper would turn around and see what she looked like at the moment. I'll let go after hugging you for a little while, Anna said. I might not have the same courage again next time. Jasper could hear her trembling voice and smiled bitterly. Why are you doing this? You're acting like death is separating us. I'm going back to mainland, not to die. Her slender and dexterous fingers pinched his belly gently. The charming lady was annoyed. How inappropriate were the things he was saying at this moment. Ah. Uh. Standing next to them was a completely dumbfounded Henry. His first reaction was to stop the man and woman who were bursting with hormones as quickly as he could. Anna's identity aside, even Jasper was Harbor City's celebrity right now. These two. This pose. If a paparazzi captured a picture of this scene, even their children's names would appear at the celebrity gossip corner tomorrow. Gosh, sis, can you please behave yourself? What happened to being demure? Henry said in a panic, and at the same time, he was sweeping his gaze around the place for fear of being noticed. Anna ignored him and continued burying her face in Jasper's back. She said in a slightly trembling voice, I know you have a girlfriend, but I have the right to pursue my own happiness too. Yes. Jasper nodded, wry smile emerging on his face. Ask her to prepare herself. Jasper. Henry yelled, ah. Anna did not continue and let go of her hands. You should probably go through the airport security now, Anna said. Jasper gave a chuckle and strode off. He did not turn back at all. As such, he did not see the blush on Anna's beautiful face either. The maiden's tender bashfulness had vanquished every other maiden out there. It was not until Jasper was completely gone that Henry stared at Anna with an extremely strange gaze. Let's go. Anna immediately restored her ever unruffled expression. You'd better train and study hard. Try your best to get dad and grandpa's consent to go to mainland as soon as possible, Anna lectured him. His sister's conflicting attitude threw Henry off balance completely. Why? Why was she so gentle in front of Jasper but pulled a long face in front of him, acting like his big sister instead? Why do you care when I go to mainland? Grandpa asked me to go, not you. Henry sulked. I want to go with you, Anna said resolutely. Henry stared at Anna and understood what she meant immediately. He said in surprise, Sis, you clearly know that he has a girlfriend and yet you insist on putting yourself down to be with him? Have you forgotten who you are? You're the law's precious daughter. Anna looked at Henry and suddenly chuckled, saying, Do you think I look good? Henry turned away with a disgusted expression. No matter how good you look, I'll still get sick after having looked at your face for 20 years. After saying those words, Henry saw the change in Anna's expression and quickly corrected himself. Don't look at me with those murderous eyes. You look beautiful, okay? So why can't I fight for my relationship? We're not married yet, so we're all free to choose our partners, Anna said indignantly. Henry was amused and shook his head helplessly. This is my first time seeing someone using such high-sounding words to intervene in other people's relationships. 
You impregnated a trust fund baby's fiancé the first year you came back from abroad. If it weren't for me, this incident would have reached dad's ears. Don't you feel embarrassed at all to say that to me? How are we the same? I'm not going to lose anything. But you, you're a girl. You're shameless. On the plane, Jasper bought a first-class ticket. It was the same flight, yet it was three times more expensive. Jasper knew how to enjoy life. He was not a miser who would make a lot of money and then refrain from using it. It had never been his intention to be frugal. Take the local Warwick Company's CEO, for example. In the future, his company became a multinational giant, but when he went out, he still took a second-class seat on the high-speed rail and an economy seat on a plane. Jasper expressed his admiration for the older generation's diligent and thrifty spirit, but no thanks. Had this not been the crucial time for him to put every single penny he had to good use, Jasper would have even bought a private jet. If a man did not spend the money he earned, then that man would be no different than a dead man. Jasper had just taken his seat when he caught a whiff of fragrance in the air whizzing toward him. Two women walked over and sat not far away from him. Queenie Shaw? Jasper was a little surprised. He did not expect himself to bump into a Harbor City celebrity, one whom he had encountered before too. Oh, Queenie, your majesty, we're just adding a last-minute event, that's all. Those mainlanders are foolish people who have too much money to spare. You'll earn 500,000 bucks just standing there for a few minutes and saying a few words. Why wouldn't you want to go? Standing beside Queenie was a woman who looked like her agent and was painstakingly persuading her, saying, You must attend this event no matter what. Otherwise, the money will go down the drain. The other party obviously had not noticed Jasper. Jasper did not plan to go up and say hello either. If this happened when he had just been reborn, he would at least feel a bit more excited. As Jasper's wealth and status had improved, his mentality changed as well. Right now, Jasper was certainly not interested in idolizing a star. This was not something he would do in the past life, let alone now. As far as his current status was concerned, only celebrities would come to him to curry favor with him. Therefore, Jasper looked down at the magazines prepared for him on the plane. It just so happened that Tara's Financial Weekly was there. Don't say any more, Liliana. I really don't want to go. I'm going to mainland to film a movie this time so I'm not going to the additional event you scheduled for me, Queenie said helplessly. When Liliana saw how resolute Queenie was, her expression grew sullen as well. The sponsorship from Mainland hoped that Queenie would attend their event, and in order to get this to work, Liliana had taken the other party's money. If Queenie refused to go, not only did she need to return the money she received, but she would also be greatly humiliated. You must go to this event, Queenie. You don't have a choice. It's so easy to earn mainlanders' money, and if you don't go, then you're not showing due respect for my feelings. Queenie frowned at Liliana's words. Jasper was frowning too. Jasper did not want to be nosy at first, but since Queenie was his company's artist, how could he just let her agent bully her like that? Besides, her agent was plain condescending. What's the matter with mainlanders? If you look down on mainlanders so much, why are you going there to make money then? Jasper said lightly. Liliana turned her head to look at Jasper, then frowned and said, I'm not talking about you. What are you barking at? I'm a mainlander. You said that mainlanders are fools, but I'm not allowed to comment on that. Jasper said lightly. Liliana snorted when she heard what he said. You're from mainland too? I'm not wrong then. You mainlanders live in poor and remote places, and all the nouveau riche are fools who are too easy to trick, no? At this moment, Queenie looked over after hearing his voice, and her expression changed drastically. Liliana might not know who Jasper was, but Queenie had met Jasper at a charity dinner. Plus, Gladness had been acquired by Jasper and was renamed to Advent Entertainment Group, so Jasper was now her boss. As soon as Queenie recognized Jasper, her complexion paled. She wanted to cry out subconsciously. Jasper motioned to her with his eyes, hinting at her not to say anything. Queenie clammed up silently, glanced at the lofty and self-conceited Liliana, and gloated a little inside. In Harbor City, there were many agents who assumed great airs, even more than the celebrities themselves. It was just because they thought they were really experienced. Liliana was one of those people. She had, on many occasions, 
tried to squeeze as much income from her reputation as possible. Take this event for example. Queenie was aware of Liliana's underhand dealings with those investors, but was powerless to do anything about it. She had signed a contract with Liliana, so she could not do anything even when Liliana invested outside without the company knowing. Things were different now. Liliana had shot herself in the foot. This was going to be her unlucky day. You need to be responsible for your words and deeds, Jasper said to Liliana. Liliana snorted and said, Oh, don't be so full of yourself. Who do you think you are? As she said that, Liliana glanced at the magazine in Jasper's hands and sneered disdainfully, Look at you, reading Tara's Financial Weekly like the rest of us. Only figures in Harbor City and big shots in the business world are featured on it. All a mainlander like you can do is watch. Liliana, you really need to get your eyes checked, Queenie said with a sigh. Liliana frowned upon hearing this and said coldly, What do you mean? Queenie pulled out a copy of Tara's Financial Weekly that was in front of her seat, and tossed it to Liliana. Look carefully at the man on the cover. Liliana looked over and noticed how the man on the cover resembled the mainlander in front of her. No, not just resembled, but it was the same person. Liliana was taken aback abruptly, then turned her head in horror to look at Jasper. She then confirmed over and over again before realizing that they were indeed the same man. Who? Who are you? Liliana exclaimed. Queenie is an artist under Advent Entertainment Group, and you're her agent. Now that the group has been restructured, you should only do what you're required to do as an agent, no? Jasper said lightly. You're now fired. In an instant, Liliana felt as though she had been struck by thunder and lightning. She looked at Jasper with a pale face, opened her mouth and stammered, You're, you're, Mr. Lane? Queenie stood up glanced at Liliana with an exceedingly indifferent expression, and said mildly, Thanks for taking care of me all these years, Liliana. I wish you a safe journey in the future. As they spoke, Queenie came to Jasper's side and greeted respectfully, Nice to meet you, Mr. Lane. Nice to meet you. Jasper nodded. He adopted a neutral feeling toward Queenie. In his opinion, Queenie was just a cash cow. Queenie asked carefully, Can I sit next to you, Mr. Lane? Sure. Jasper said lightly. Most female celebrities in the entertainment circle were conscious about serving their bosses. Most of the time, unwritten rules were done out of mutual consent, and Queenie was no exception either. Especially when Jasper was also the boss of her company. He carried more weight than anyone else. At this moment, Jasper's status could get eight out of ten female celebrities in Harbor City to readily line up to serve him if he wanted to. Of course, Queenie had ideas too. Jasper was young, handsome, influential, and wealthy. If she could become acquainted with a boss like that, then why would she even bother working so hard? She could just be his very own canary without worrying about anything else. Unfortunately for Queenie though, no matter how well she tried to perform after that, Jasper simply treated her in a lukewarm manner. His indifference that kept her at arm's length made Queenie realize just how naive she was. How could a man like Jasper possibly fall in love with a woman like her? Mr. Mr. Lane, that was very wrong of me. I shouldn't have said those things. I deserve to be punished. Please forgive me. Liliana stepped forward and pleaded, crying. She knew better than anyone that an agent like her could offend anyone. Even the celebrities themselves and the sponsors, but not the boss. The moment she offended her boss, everything would be over. Be quiet. Jasper said softly, I'm a gentleman. I don't want to have anything to do with a woman who yells for no reason. Pfft. Seated next to him, Queenie could not help but snigger after hearing what Jasper said. Jasper was not only young and capable, but he was pretty humorous too. Liliana was in total despair. She turned her gaze to Queenie for help. Queenie pretended not to see it. She did not have the power to do so, but even if she did, she would not help Liliana either. Liliana sat slouched in her seat. At the moment, the plane was above 10,000 meters in the sky, and she was tempted to jump off of it to end her life. Hi, do you need a blanket? The stunning flight attendant did not know what had just happened in the first-class cabin and came forward to deliver them blankets politely. I'll have one. Queenie quickly took the blanket, then carefully and thoughtfully placed the blanket on Jasper's thighs, saying, Mr. Lane. 
Feel free to let me know if you need anything. At this time, the flight attendant had recognized the popular celebrity, Queenie Shaw. Before she could express her surprise, she saw how obsequious Queenie was toward Jasper. The flight attendant's gaze changed. Who was this young man? After more than two hours, the plane landed smoothly at Province International Airport. As soon as the plane landed, Jasper got off the plane straight away. Queenie knew that Jasper had things to attend to, hence she very tactfully chose not to follow him. She turned back to glance at the pale-looking Liliana and shook her head, then walked off straight away. When Jasper left the airport, he saw Wendy standing not far away waiting for him. After being apart from each other for so long, both Jasper and Wendy missed each other a lot. They walked toward each other and eventually came face to face with one another. Wendy smiled sweetly. Jasper's eyes were full of smiles. When Wendy was about to speak, he suddenly reached out and hugged her. Oh! Wendy exclaimed and softly hammered Jasper with her fists in embarrassment. What are you doing? Lots of people are staring. Jasper embraced Wendy, feeling her soft and warm body in his arms. He thought to himself, money? Company? Business landscape? Nah, they're all nothing in comparison. He went full-on ostentatious mode. The onlookers exclaimed at this sight, how nice it is to be young. Let them watch then. Why won't you let others stare when you look so beautiful? Jasper buried his face in the crook of Wendy's neck, took in the fragrance of her hair and body, and teased. Wendy blushed and stopped resisting, resting her chin on Jasper's shoulder peacefully. She said, you must be really tired after your trip to Harbor City, right? A little. Jasper let go of Wendy, took her hand, and left the airport. Wendy drove while Jasper sat lazily in the front passenger seat. Jasper looked at the province's scenery and said slowly, I plan to take a two-day break. Wendy agreed. It's time you take a break. Your body won't be able to stand working around the clock like that. Amid the shakiness of the car during the journey, Jasper chatted with Wendy about his experience in Harbor City and felt his eyelids growing heavier and heavier. When Wendy did not get Jasper's reply after saying a few words, she turned to look curiously and noticed that Jasper had fallen asleep. Wendy felt her heart aching and slowed down the car to drive at a much steadier pace. Schuler's Dawson was waiting for the two at the door. When he saw Wendy's car, he walked over and saw Wendy tiptoeing out of the car while giving him a suggestion. He fell asleep. He's probably too exhausted during this period of time. When we talked on the phone, he would often stay up until 2 or 3 in the morning. Let him sleep for a while, Wendy said. Dawson glanced at Jasper who was sleeping in the front passenger seat and nodded, saying with a smile, Okay then, I'll ask someone to make dinner. Let him rest. When Jasper woke up, he found himself sitting in the car with a shirt placed on top of him. He got out of the car and happened to see Wendy walking toward him. Let's go, dinner is ready. My dad is waiting for you, Wendy said. Jasper did some stretches. When did I fall asleep? Why didn't you wake me up? I just wanted you to rest longer. Wendy said softly, your career may be important, but your health is your asset. Have you ever seen anyone work as hard as you? When Jasper recalled himself chatting and drinking with Anna last night, and that was why he had slept late, he suddenly felt a little guilty. At the dining area, Jasper said to Dawson, I'm sorry, I overslept. Don't be too hard on yourself. You're still young and healthy, Dawson said while pointing at the seat from across the table. I asked the cook to make something nutritious for you. Let's eat first. Jasper drank the spice lentil and butternut squash soup before asking, How's the real estate company doing now? It's doing okay overall, but we bumped into a bit of a problem in one of our projects in Brack County. Our subordinates can't handle it. I simply don't have the time to go. Maybe you can go and take a look two days later once you've gotten the rest you need, Dawson said. Jasper nodded and agreed. How's Harbor City? Wendy told me that everything went smoothly for you, Dawson asked. Jasper said with a chuckle, everything went very well indeed. It even exceeded my expectations. I made five billion this time. I left part of it as an investment and I've brought back the rest of it. I don't have to worry about insufficient funds for now. Dawson and Wendy were both startled. They knew that Jasper had gone to Harbor City to make some money but did not know the details about it, let alone the fact that he had made $5 billion. I heard that the dot-com bubble burst some time ago 
and caused quite a stir. The domestic stock market was greatly affected too. Was this the opportunity you took? Dawson asked. At this time, the dot-com bubble had yet to have a great impact on the domestic stock market and thus avoided an economic loss that might happen due to the burst. There was a slight impact, but not so much compared to other places. Moreover, the domestic news was still relatively restricted and not as developed as in the future, so they did not know much about the things happening out there in the world. Jasper said, Yes, I predicted that the Domcom bubble would burst soon, so I went to Harbor City ahead of schedule. Fortunately, I seized the opportunity this time. Otherwise, the rapid development of JW Capital in the future would require a lot of funds. I guess you can say that I've earned all my capital back. I'm old now compared to young people like you. Dawson laughed. The money I made this entire lifetime can't even compare to the money you earned from just one investment. Jasper shook his head and said, Venture investment is all about tricks. There are both benefits and risks, and no one can say for sure if they'll fail. However, one failure is enough to bury the benefits of 10 successes. It's important for the industry to have a solid foundation. If someone else said these words, they would seem really pompous and arrogant. However, Jasper proved with facts as not one of his investments had failed. Hence the things he said just made him seem genuinely dope. Dawson was pleased to see Jasper keeping a humble and cautious attitude. He was not haughty and arrogant just because he had achieved a win or two. I've contacted someone with regards to the entertainment company you mentioned earlier, but there's no rush in this. The seller is still considering it. You can go when you have the time. Which company? What's its name? Jasper asked curiously. I think it's called Easy Media. It's a company run by two brothers with the last name King. Dawson mulled it over and said, Easy Media. Jasper suddenly grew interested. The company would later turn into one of the leading companies in the domestic film, television, and entertainment industry in the future. As for the King brothers, they would also become the uncrowned kings of the domestic entertainment industry. He was surprised to learn that they had plans to sell the company at this time. Uncle Dawson, can you confirm with the other party as soon as possible? I acquired an entertainment company in Harbor City, and I think the ones in Mainland need to keep up as soon as possible. I plan to open up both territories and create a major entertainment group across the straits. Upon hearing what Jasper said, Dawson said seriously, Okay, I'll arrange a time for you as soon as possible. After dinner, Wendy sat on the couch and propped her chin as she stared at Jasper who was carefully reviewing JW Capital's documents that had piled up during the time he was away. Jack had taken care of many things for him, but there were still many major decisions that he needed to make. You said you were going to rest for two days first, didn't you? Wendy was a little displeased. Now you're reading documents and two days later you're going to the entertainment company for a discussion. There's simply no time for you to rest. Jasper shifted his attention away from the documents and smiled at Wendy. I've made plans. We'll drive to the beach tomorrow to have a relaxing time together. Really? Wendy suddenly grew excited. Yes, we'll go to Brack County. One of the projects in the real estate company has hit a wall. It's not far from there, about a two-hour car journey. We can go there and drop by while we're at it. Besides, it's just next to the beach. There's a beach, barbecue, and even a beer festival there, Jasper said with a smile. When he said happily, I'll go and pack my luggage then. We'll just be there for a day or two. Two changes of clothes will do, Jasper said. What do you know, big man? Every time a woman goes out, that's like going to war. We mustn't let our guards down. Wendy had already walked out the door when her words fell into his ears. Jasper gave a chuckle, picked up his mobile phone, and booked a five-star hotel in Brack County. I want to book a suite, the most expensive one. Yes, one. The kind with only one bedroom. The next day, Jasper and Wendy returned to the city together. After greeting his parents and getting nagged as usual, Jasper and Wendy drove to Brack County. More than two hours later at Brack County's Marriott Hotel, Jasper tossed the car keys to the valet and accompanied Wendy into the hotel to check in. As soon as they got to the entrance, Jasper and Wendy heard a young man passing by while talking on the phone. His voice was harsh and grating to the ears. Stop talking nonsense, damn it. JW Real Estate? Never heard of it. I, Mark Zion, am the king in Brack County. If they want that piece of land, ask them to come and speak to me. 
If I'm in a good mood, then, I'll talk to them. If not, I'll kick them out of Brack County overnight. Mark captured both Jasper and Wendy's attention when he mentioned JW Real Estate. Wendy frowned, a little displeased with the insulting tone in Mark's words. Mark had come to the front desk while still talking on the phone. Jasper was currently doing the check-in procedure at the moment. He had handed in his ID and deposit. He was waiting for his room card now. Mark squeezed in like Jasper was not there, tossed the signature sheet that Jasper had placed on the counter aside, and said to the attendant, I want a suite. The attendant who was currently handling the check-in arrangements for Jasper was taken aback. She could tell that Mark was not someone she could offend. Hence, she sounded very sorry when she said to him, I'm sorry, sir. The last suite has been booked by this gentleman right here. We only have standard rooms left. Do you know who I am? Standard room? F asterisk CK standard room. Do you have a death wish by asking me to stay in a standard room? Mark slammed the counter and roared. The attendant was caught off guard, and her face turned pale. She was too afraid to utter a word. At this time, Jasper's voice fell into their ears. Please give me my room card as soon as possible. Jasper sounded very gentle, helping the attendant out of the embarrassing situation tactfully. The young lady glanced gratefully at Jasper and hurried to finish the procedures. After saying these words, Jasper glanced at Mark indifferently and said mildly, Line up. Mark frowned slightly as he looked at Jasper up and down. He sneered, Are you not from around here? You don't know me? You really don't know who I am? I don't need to line up anywhere in Brack County. Having said that, Mark caught sight of Wendy, standing next to Jasper. His eyes widened and lit up. He had never seen such a stunner in Brack County before. He did not care who Jasper was. With his power and status in Brack County, everyone who saw him would show him respect. Therefore, Mark started flirting with Wendy straight away. Hey gorgeous, are you here in Brack County for a holiday? I'm Mark from the Zion family. Mark stated his name. He believed that the other party would be interested after knowing who he was. No one in Brack County could resist his status and charm. You can mention my name wherever you go and I guarantee that you'll be treated like a VIP. So, wanna play? Mark smiled and stretched out his hand to Wendy. Smack. A crisp and clear sound rang through the lobby. Mark's hand was smacked aside by Jasper. Mark was taken aback for a moment. He narrowed his eyes, his gaze gleaming fiercely as he stared at Jasper. Hissing, he yelled, F asterisk CK. How dare you hit me? Jasper did not care about his reaction and said mildly, You and your filthy mouth. I'll chop your fingers off if you try groping around again. Get behind the line. Jasper had the experience of hitting a trust fund baby and even trampled on magnates to the ground before. He had caused quite a stir in Harbor City and hung out with the top four aristocratic families such as the Laws. Now that he was back in mainland, how could he allow an insignificant Brack County trust fund baby to act domineeringly in front of his face? Mark was furious. He had always been the person to throw his weight around Brack County and had never encountered a person like Jasper before. Mark gritted his teeth. He wanted to hit Jasper, but he looked robust and full of energy. Although Mark was young, his body had been damaged a long time ago from all the wine and women. Normally, a young master like him would pay a thug to do the job. So why bother doing it himself? Therefore, after comparing their size and strength, Mark decided to put up with it first. Fine, you're really something, huh? We'll see about that. After saying those words, Mark stormed off with an extremely sullen expression. As long as Jasper was still staying in Marriott Hotel and was in Brack County, he was not worried that he would not have the chance to seek revenge. Jasper did not even see Mark leave, and grabbed his room card from the attendant's hand. When he walked to the elevator, Jasper said to Wendy, Get Brack County's real estate company's person in charge here. Wendy replied and started making a call. They had just taken a two-hour car ride to Brack County, and after encountering this incident, Wendy was no longer in the mood to go out and enjoy herself. After taking a shower in the hotel, Wendy and Jasper waited for the person in charge to come over. The person in charge took his big boss orders very seriously and merely took a little over half an hour to get to Jasper. Miss Schuler, Mr. Lane. The person in charge, Mr. Lambert, was a shrewd and capable middle-aged man in his early 40s. He was previously the backbone for Schuler Group, a competent worker. 
As such, he was transferred by Dawson to the real estate company to help with opening up new markets. In Brack County, however, not just his but all of JW Real Estate's projects had now sunken in a quagmire. Tell me all about JW Real Estate's situation in Brack County. Jasper grabbed a bottle of red wine and poured two glasses, motioning Mr. Lambert to take a seat before speaking. Mr. Lambert responded to him. Despite Jasper's young age, Mr. Lambert, who had just left Schuler Group, knew that the Mr. Lane who was sitting across from him was not only JW Real Estate's second, largest shareholder but also Dawson's future son-in-law. The real estate company aside, even the entire Schuler Group would belong to him in the future. In addition to that, Jasper was mostly acquainted with the upper-class social circle. His aura was growing stronger and stronger every day. It was nothing like what he used to be anymore. With those two things in mind, Mr. Lambert dared not let his guard down anymore. Currently, JW Real Estate is mainly doing a real estate project in Brack County called Landscape City. This land has been auctioned off to JW Real Estate before this. It's located by the sea. The plan is to build a high-end residential building in Brack County, focusing on the concept of Seaview properties. There's a problem, though. When the land was first auctioned off, JW Real Estate's main competitor, Majestic Real Estate, which is also the core industry of Brack County's Zion family, started using all sorts of means to hinder our development when they failed to auction for the land. They even arranged for a bunch of households to refuse to move from the property, and that hindered our demolition work greatly. Then there are also local thugs coming over to give us trouble every now and then. We simply can't start the project. As Mr. Lambert spoke, he wore a wry expression. Otherwise, we wouldn't have sought help from the headquarters in the province either. The Zions are too powerful here. They said that JW Real Estate will either have to take out 50% of the profits to give them a bonus or do nothing at all. They want half of the profits? Is Brack County's last name Zion? They're simply asking for too much. Wendy raged. What's Mark's position in the Zion family? Jasper asked suddenly. He recalled the man he met in the lobby today who happened to be called Mark. Moreover, he had also mentioned that he was a Zion. He seemed really confident. It looked like the Zions were really influential in Brack County. Mr. Lambert replied, He's Harvey Zion's only son, the head of the Zion family. He's arrogant and domineering and doesn't care about the law. No one in Brack County is bold enough to offend him. Jasper nodded, then discussed the progress and work arrangements of the entire project with Mr. Lambert before sending him away. Jasp, never condone forces like the Zions. Wendy said to Jasper. Jasper smiled and said, Temple is small but evil winds heavy. The pond is shallow yet wicked cuckolds too many. The smaller a place, the easier it is to encounter rebellious people. It's okay. I'm great at dealing with all sorts of people who refuse to cooperate. It was nearly evening after their discussion, hence Jasper took Wendy downstairs to have dinner at a restaurant. We'll fill our tummies first then go to the beach to have a walk after dinner, Jasper said to Wendy, taking a seat at the table. And beach barbecue too, Wendy said with a sweet smile. We can't forget that, can we? Jasper said with a smile. The two were still talking when Mark returned. He was standing at the entrance of the restaurant. This time, he brought two tall and hunky bodyguards with him. As soon as he entered the restaurant, Mark saw the duo engaging in a delightful conversation. He let out a vicious and smug smile. Mark swaggered over to Jasper and Wendy's table, displaying an insincere smile. Hey kid, having dinner? Wendy wore an unpleasant expression. This feeling was like when one was in a good mood and when it was about time to enjoy a meal. A fly kept lingering around them, making all sorts of disturbing noises from beside. Jasper glanced at Mark and said calmly, I'm not used to having my meals with someone pacing back and forth at a corner. A smile remained on Mark's face, but the evil chills within his gaze were getting more intense. Placing one of his hands on Jasper's chair, Mark then leaned forward and whispered into Jasper's ear, I love seeing this arrogant side of you, because the more arrogant you are right now, the more miserable you'll be later on. I don't care what kind of person you are. In Brack County, regardless of your capability, it's best you behave appropriately. Or else, your family won't have a place to mourn your death once I'm done with you. As Mark was talking, he let out a burst of devilish laughter 
and immediately pulled a chair from the table beside. He then called the waiter over to order. The man beside him also followed to take a seat. He went around Jasper with ill intention and said, Young Master Zion, aren't you going to make fun of him straight away? Another man joined in and giggled, saying, That's right, Young Master Zion, just let us siblings torture him to death. That lady is F. Asterisk King Gorgeous. Young Master Zion, you should personally go comfort that beauty. Isn't this the perfect solution? Mark sneered. What do you guys know about? It's only meaningful if you slowly torture a person like that. One glance and it's obvious he's not from here. I'm guessing this guy has some cash on him and brought this beauty over here for a meal to put on an act. If I want to make this beauty admire me, I have to first let her know that in Brack County, there's no one richer than me nor more powerful than me. Just look at the day and age. We don't kill and murder people anymore. That's the lowliest method. Mark deliberately raised his voice so that Jasper and Wendy could hear him crystal clear. He wants to use fortune and authority to make you admire him, said Jasper to Wendy with a smile. Wendy glared at Jasper, and for the first time, she gave him a warning glance. Stop making me feel disgusted. At that moment, Mark had already summoned the waiter. High-quality foie gras, abalone vegetable dish, then according to the headcount, I want codfish from the deep ocean, tuna, and salmon. Also a set of platter albino sturgeon caviar. Even though they were having their meal in a five-star restaurant, ordering dishes that were worth hundreds of thousands was enough to shock the manager of the restaurant. The manager rushed over and said to Mark in a polite, cautious tone, Sir, aside from others, in regards to the albino sturgeon caviar, our restaurant does not have many in stock. One gram will cost approximately 20000 And there are three of you here, which sums it up to 60000 Do you think I can't afford it? Mark's expression was dark. The manager quickly answered, No, that's not what I meant. I'm just trying to confirm with you, sir. Then cut the nonsense and just serve what I ordered. Mark waved his hand with a calm face. Then, he glanced at Jasper disdainfully and said faintly, That's all. It's just hundreds of thousands, a simple meal. Knowing Mark was trying to use his money to suppress other people, the two underlings he had brought with him naturally showed their support. With a mystifying manner, they worked together and said, Young Master Zion is generous. However, for someone else, perhaps they won't be able to earn these hundreds of thousands, right? Don't say so. It wasn't easy for a certain someone to save more than half a year's worth of salary to bring a beauty over to a five-star hotel to enjoy a meal. If you guys are here triggering him, won't he lose his composure when he returns home? Ha ha ha. Ear-piercing sounds kept traveling over, but Jasper's expression remained calm. Manager, I'm going to order some dishes. The manager walked over to him. As someone with a discerning eye, one glance was all it took for him to know that the guests from those two tables were trying to compete with each other. This made the manager hope for more good things to happen. Give me a portion of whatever they ordered. For that albino sturgeon caviar, give me two boxes of it. The manager was dumbfounded when he heard Jasper's words. Two. Two boxes? Sir, you heard the price just now. One box has six grams, and two boxes will be twelve grams. It'll cost 214 000. Subconsciously, the manager emphasized the price of albino sturgeon caviar. For foods like this, what's the meaning of being so calculative when eating? It's only by having a big spoonful per mouthful can I make out the taste, said Jasper calmly. When the manager heard this, he dared not even let out a sound. He dared not offend someone who could afford a meal costing more than 200000 He spun around and placed the order. Mark's expression changed for the worst. He bought albino sturgeon caviar, according to Graham's, while Jasper immediately ordered two boxes of it. This made him feel that he was being overwhelmed by Jasper. The truth was indeed that way. Mark was rich, but there was a limit to it. After all, his money was sourced from the Zion family, which was the source of his monthly pocket money. He had not reached a level where he was able to enjoy a meal worth 200000 to 300000 if his family found out about it, he would be in trouble. The corners of Mark's mouth were twitching as he wore a dark expression. He stared at Jasper and said, Cut the overacting. Later you won't be able to pay for the bill. At that moment, the dishes for both tables were being served. 
Jasper immediately opened up a box of albino sturgeon caviar and poured all of it on his foie gras. He took a bite and frowned gently. It was not as delicious as he thought it would be. Jasper took the remaining box of albino sturgeon caviar and waved to a waiter who was doubting his life. He said a word or two to him. The waiter's expression changed drastically. Wendy was laughing sneakily. That scene made Mark curious because he did not know what Jasper had told the waiter. His sixth sense was telling him that it would not be a good thing. Following then, the waiter looked at Jasper with a troubled look, then looked at Mark. Finally, he gulped a mouthful of saliva and walked over while holding onto the box of albino sturgeon caviar. What are you trying to do? Mark saw the waiter who was walking toward him and asked, suppressing the unpleasantness and anger within him. The waiter let out a dry smile and said awkwardly, that man said he can't bear to see you three eating on such a tight budget, so he's giving you guys one box. Just help yourself to it. This is what he said. Eating on such a tight budget? Mark felt the flames of rage burning within him. In his entire life, he had never been humiliated in this manner before. What was more, it was regarding the wealth he was so proud of. Just when he was about to open his mouth and roar at Jasper, a young gentleman suddenly came in from the outside. He rushed over. I beg your pardon, young Master Zion. I came late. Mark did not speak a word after hearing it. He looked unhappy. Seeing Mark's awful expression, the man thought Mark was exasperated because he was late. When he was about to apologize, he noticed Mark's dark gaze staring in another direction not far away. The man looked in that direction. When he saw the familiar face that was not far away, his face was decorated with astonishment. Wendy. Wendy Schuler. Steve did not expect to meet Wendy, who he had been dreaming of for nearly ten years, at Brack County. He had a crush on Wendy since their high school days. Steve was considered the most passionate one among the group of pursuers courting Wendy back then. However, after so many years and even up till graduation, Wendy had not spoken more than three sentences to him, let alone became closer to him. Later after graduating, Steve's family business that was involved in building materials shifted over to Brack County. As such, he gradually let go of his feelings for her. He did not expect to be able to meet Wendy once again. Even though a few years had already passed, Steve was still able to recognize Wendy with just a glance. In the meantime, he spotted Jasper beside her. Jasper? Steve's tone was laced with some doubt, but then he let out a smile. What the F asterisk CK? A poor guy like you also has what it takes to show up in a five-star hotel? It was plain obvious that Steve thought Jasper was pestering Wendy, and in light of them being old classmates, he made Wendy treat him to a meal at this hotel. Otherwise, this poor guy wouldn't be able to come to such a high-end place in his lifetime. The thought of it made Steve glance at Jasper with much disdain. Steve, you guys know each other? Mark asked coldly. Yes, said Steve with a chuckle. Wendy was a goddess in my high school. How can I not know her? As for Jasper, he's also our schoolmate, but he's just a genuine poor guy. He could wear the same set of school uniform for one whole year, and I never saw him change to another set of clothing. Even if the clothes had a hole in them, he still continued to wear them. Every day, he would eat buns and pickles. Some people found him pitiful and would offer him food, and he would be happier than a dog. Mark was delighted when he heard it. What the F asterisk CK? A poor guy is putting on an act against me. Mark was slightly exasperated as he was terrified of a poor guy just earlier. The thought of it made Mark so mad that he wanted to just tear off Jasper's skin. Steve, please mind your language, Wendy said coldly. Currently, what irritated Wendy was other people teasing Jasper. Steve witnessed Wendy shielding Jasper, and all of a sudden, it made him disgruntled. I said nothing wrong. Isn't he the famous poor brat in the entire school? Wendy, I know you're very kind, but you have to pay more attention. Don't get used by these useless beings because of this matter. Steve said in a mystifying manner and then said to Jasper with a smile, As a man, I really f asterisk king look down on you. However, as your old schoolmate, I'll just give you a piece of advice. Wendy is already showing you some dignity by treating you to a meal. Or else, a poor guy like you won't be able to come to a five-star hotel like this for the rest of your life. You'd better leave this instant after gaining the benefits. 
Don't be such a drag and insist on staying here. What a splendid speech. Mark stared at Jasper with a dark gaze. He then said with a sinister smile, Hey brat, you're quite good at putting on an act. I nearly got scared by you. Now, how do you wish to die? Huh? Steve immediately understood when he saw the scene. It must be Jasper, this fool, who came to a five-star hotel and went overboard. He ended up offending Mark. When he thought about how his family's business relied on the Zion family, it made Steve all hyped up. Young Master Zion, did this fool offend you? Asked Steve politely. Does he have what it takes to do so? Mark smiled coldly. At most, I'm just disgusted by the filthy smell coming off his body. It affected my mood. Got it. Steve nodded, spun around, and barked at Jasper. Why are you still daydreaming here? Hurry and apologize to young Master Zion. Then get lost. We haven't seen each other for so many years, yet you're still the same. Jasper looked at Steve and said calmly. Back in school, you were a lackey to those young masters from rich families. You were good at getting on other people's good side. Then, your family managed to gain some profits through a business, involving building materials, and you became so proud. Right now, it seems that Mark is your new owner. Hearing Jasper's comment made Steve's expression become darker. He did not see any fault in getting on good terms with those with power and fortune, but with Jasper blurting it out like this, it was like a slap on his face. Who are you to comment about me? Steve was looking fierce. It's way better than being a poor brat like you, pestering an old female schoolmate and making Wendy bring you over to a high-end hotel to treat you to a meal. I advise you to apologize to young Master Zion if you know you're standing, then get lost. After all, you've already eaten. You can return to the construction site and show off to your colleagues about how you've been to a five-star hotel. As he was saying, Steve suddenly burst into laughter and was proud. Someone like you can only work as a laborer at a site, moving bricks around, right? You can beg me. If you beg me, and if I'm in a good mood, I can arrange to have you take up a foreman position, ha ha ha. Mark sneered and said, A fool like him wants to be a foreman? Just put on a metal string around his neck, and make him squat at the entrance of the site. He can be a watchdog who looks after the site. That would suit him best. You're right, young Master Zion, ha ha ha. Steve raised a thumb to Mark, putting on a flattering expression to get on his good terms. You guys are so full of yourselves and look down on others. Wendy got up with a stony expression. Jasp, let's go. It makes me want to puke being together with these people. Mark snorted and blocked Wendy with his body, saying with a delighted face, Hey beauty, don't be in such a rush to leave. What's so good about this watchdog? This world is so vast. A beauty like yourself should only be a match to someone as splendid as me. Steve's heart skipped a beat when he saw Mark staring at Wendy while drooling. Wendy was his goddess. It was a rare chance for him to bump into her. Hence, he still had some thoughts about it. However, the moment he thought of his family's business relying on the Zion family's charity, Steve made a decision after weighing the pros and cons. That's right, Wendy. Young Master Zion is the heir to the huge Zion family of Brat County. He's not someone who can be compared to some brats. Seeing that we're old schoolmates, I'll just remind you that it's your luck that young Master Zion is willing to be friends with you. Mark was very satisfied with Steve's comment. He clapped his shoulder and said with satisfaction, Not bad. You're good at analyzing the situation. I'm very satisfied with your action. Steve put on a lowly smile and said to Mark, I'm just stating the facts. In the entire Brack County, who doesn't know that young Master Zion is the number one person among the younger generation? Wendy glanced at Steve coldly and said, Last time, I only felt that you were just a spineless person, but now, why is it that your actions disgust me? Hearing that comment made Steve twitch the corners of his mouth, and his expression looked awful. At that moment, Jasper also stood up and looked at both Steve and Mark coldly. Before he could even speak, Mark saw his reaction and immediately smiled coldly before saying disdainfully, F asterisk cur. Hey brat, earlier I was petrified by you because I didn't know about your background. But now, are you still thinking of scaring me? Utter rubbish. Let me tell you, in Brack County, I'm the one with the most authority. How boastful you are. Jasper let out a smirk and placed his gaze on Mark. He said with a deep voice, 
So far, the Zion family supporting you can't control the entire Brack County. With just you alone, you dare claim yourself as the king of Brack County? Hearing Jasper's comment made Steve sneer. He looked at Jasper as if he was looking at a mentally disabled person and said, You be asterisk starred. You have no ability yet you sure talk big. Do you know who the Zion family is? Is the Zion family someone the likes of you are able to comment on? Who do you think you are? Hee <laughs> hee. I'm someone from JW Real Estate. Young Master Zion, you must be familiar with JW Real Estate, right? Jasper did not continue hiding his identity, but blurted it flat out. His comment made both Steve and Mark stunned. The Zion family had high authority in Brack County. Most of the citizens were afraid of the Zion family, hence only a handful of people dared to go head-on with the Zion family. During this period, the only defeat the Zion family had ever suffered was the incident with that piece of high-quality land. They were unable to do anything as the opponent had lots of funds. Even though the Zion family was one of the big families in Brack County, when being compared to JW Real Estate which was being supported by the Schuler family of the province, their funds were not even comparable. It was because of this incident, the Zion family had been very exasperated lately. Hey brat, you're someone from JW Real Estate? Mark squinted his eyes to look at Jasper and said with a hostile tone. While speaking, he looked straight at Wendy who was beside Jasper as something suddenly struck his mind. Wendy Schuler, the Schuler family. JW Real Estate? He suddenly thought of something. Wendy, the person before him, was perhaps the daughter of Dawson Schuler of the Schuler family. Someone from the JW Real Estate, my ass? I say you're just a worker. I wonder what makes you so proud. However, your boss is just a dog, Steve said with a cold smile. Wendy, who was beside, heard this and was not willing to continue with the conversation with them both. She felt that the two men before her were way too lame. She spun around and said to Jasper, Jasp, let's go. Jasper let out a thoughtful smile at those two men and brought Wendy out. This time, Mark did not block them. When Stephen was attempting to say something, he was stopped by Mark instead. Young Master Zion, are you just going to let that be asterisk starred leave? Asked Dave cautiously. Mark smirked and said with a deep tone, You really are stupid. Think about it. Who's the boss of JW Real Estate? Who else if not Dawson Schuler, the chairman of Schuler Group? Steve answered without thinking further. Use that stupid brain of yours and think again. What's Wendy's surname? said Mark coldly. Of course, Wendy's family name is... Steve left his statement hanging. Then he widened his eyes and said, Finding it hard to believe, young Master Zion, you're saying? It can't be, right? How is it possible that something can happen so coincidentally? Wendy and I were schoolmates during high school, and I never knew that Dawson is her father. Mark glanced at Steve and said straightforwardly, I know, right? We'll know if I send someone to go check on it. This is not a secret anyway. It's Jasper. He doesn't look like a capable person, said Mark coldly. His ability to act is great. Steve smirked and said, He's just a poor guy who depends on his girlfriend. He's not worth being wary of. I'll believe that Wendy is from a super rich family though. After all, that aura emanating from her is not usually seen in daughters of any ordinary families. But I know about Jasper's background perfectly. He's from a poor farming family. During his third year in high school, he was always being looked down on and was treated like a dog. He must have bumped into Wendy after graduating and used some underhanded methods to make Wendy pity him. She then gave him a job to make ends meet. Right now, it seems that he's using Wendy's identity to put on an act. Even though Mark said that Steve was stupid, Steve's words about Jasper were almost just like what Mark was thinking. I'll consider it as you're not entirely stupid then. I think things are as you said. Mark said coldly, if Wendy is Dawson's daughter, then we can't force our way tonight. However, not to fear. No matter how powerful Dawson is, can he provide a helping hand over at Brack County? If he dares lend a helping hand, I'll just chop it off. Mark chuckled and put on a devilish expression as he said, I'm still hoping that Wendy is his daughter. Young Master Zion, do you mind elaborating on that? Asked Steve. JW Real Estate used up so much money to buy that land. Without the permission of the Zion family, will he dare to start developing it? Impossible. If Wendy is his daughter, 
then he has to make Wendy come to me to negotiate. He he he, if I can be Dawson's son-in-law, there's no harm letting him develop that land because that's going to be mine as well. Steve looked at Mark who was laughing maniacally. His eyes sparkled, and he buried his greed for Wendy deep within his heart. He raised his thumb and said, What a splendid strategy you got there, young Master Zion. Everyone will just plan things as they march forth, but you look a few steps ahead into the future with every move you make. Even after taking the entire province into consideration, who can be better than you, young Master Zion, let alone here in Brack County? Marriott Hotel was just at the beach, and there was a large area of their own private beach. Even though it was a private beach, as long as they were guests of Marriott Hotel, they were free to be there. Even if that was the case, the environment over here was much better compared to public beaches. They were holding hands and walking on the beach. Wendy took off her shoes. Her fair feet stepped on the beach which had been drenched by the tides, leaving behind a trail of footprints. The waves washed up to the beach but did not go over Wendy's feet. The chilly and exciting experience made the smile on Wendy's face never once fade away. The air here is so nice, said Wendy, feeling touched. Jasper let go of his hand, allowing Wendy to jump up and down as she stepped on the waves. He answered with a smile after hearing her, If you like this, we'll choose a quiet place, buy it, and build a holiday villa there. Wendy tilted her head and looked at Jasper. She said, Why are you being just like someone who got rich overnight? You'll just buy everything now. You weren't like that in the past. It was the period of starting a business previously, so every penny had to be spent carefully. But now that we have a little bit of capital, we should make our lives better. What's the point of earning so much money if you don't use it to enjoy life? Wendy shook her head after hearing Jasper's reply and said, I don't want to. There's no meaning to building a holiday villa. It's enough if we come here occasionally for a trip. As long as you like it, said Jasper with a soft smile. Wendy spun around and walked backward. She glanced at her footprints on the beach while pulling Jasper along, insisting he took off his shoes as well. Jasper would never reject Wendy on such a trivial issue. He immediately took off his shoes and socks before strolling the beach with Wendy. As such, the beach had a long trail consisting of two pairs of big and small footprints. It'll be winter after a few more months. Let's make a trip to Capital City during this coming winter. Wendy suddenly suggested. Even though Jasper was very surprised to hear this suggestion, he still replied with a smile, Sure. Let's choose a time when it's snowing and visit the Forbidden City, said Wendy softly. She would never tell Jasper that she had heard from others that the ancient palace was only called the Forbidden City when it snowed. Legend had that if one accompanied their loved one and walked around the Forbidden City under the snow, without one realizing it, they would have become old together. After they were tired from the walk, they lay on the lounge chairs that were set up on the beach nearby the hotel. They ordered the waiters to serve them drinks. Both Jasper and Wendy were feeling very relaxed. What do you plan to do to those two disgusting people? In three days, I'll make them both kneel before you and admit their mistakes. Jasper was never a person who lied. The same applied when he was treating any lady. He said that he would make both Steve and Mark kneel before Wendy and admit their faults. Since he said it would happen within three days, it would definitely not happen on the fourth day. Early in the morning after waking up in the hotel, both of them headed downstairs for breakfast. They immediately headed over to the office of JW Real Estate that was located in Brack County. With the two big bosses' arrival, Mr. Lambert dared not waste a single second. He immediately went to summon all of the workers in the company for a meeting. However, Jasper never liked having meetings on a frequent basis. As such, he utilized his authority as the boss and had most of the workers continue on with their own tasks, leaving only Mr. Lambert and his two assistants. These three people basically comprised the management department of the branch company of JW Real Estate in Brack County. To be honest, even though the main company knows that the project in Brack County is not easy to do, we're still not satisfied with your working progress, Jasper sat in Mr. Lambert's seat and said. The three of them exchanged terrified looks at each other and revealed bitter smiles at the same time. Mr. Lane, we're indeed facing some difficulties as well. The main reason is that Brack County is a special place, and our work is facing a great deal of resistance, said one of the assistants while feeling aggrieved. If it's not a difficult task, then tell me, 
Why should I be spending several times more to pay you all a higher salary than an average employee to work for me? Jasper asked. That question left the three of them speechless. Wendy, who was sitting beside them, was looking at Jasper intently. She realized that at this moment, Jasper was very handsome. I know that the greatest obstacle for the project in Brack County is the all-around obstruction by the local Zion family. To you guys, this is indeed a very critical issue. Mr. Lambert, I heard that you were previously threatened with blades in the office. Mr. Lambert quickly nodded and said with a bitter smile, This is indeed like an educated person bumping into a ruthless being. No logic can go through their minds. It's not just me, but many people have been threatened as well, both straight to the face and in the shadows. They also warned us that we're just workers, and there's no need to endanger our safety for the sake of a job, Jasper said coldly. It's now the year 2000 already, yet there are still people using such ruthless methods to run their business. And you guys are actually petrified because of this? I can tell you guys that you work for JW Real Estate. So JW Real Estate will be your shield as well. Whoever uses underhanded methods is going against JW Real Estate. And JW Real Estate will never let you guys suffer from any threats. And if anyone really takes the risk and causes any one of you to suffer from any injury, JW Real Estate will definitely redeem justice for you all, even at the expense of losing this project. Jasper's speech was very influential. His voice was not that loud, yet it brought with it persuasion. Mr. Lambert and the other two people looked at each other before nodding at the same time. Mr. Lane, we have faith in you. Since Jasper had already said so, they were reassured and comforted. How many local building materials suppliers are there in Brack County? And which one is cooperating with JW Real Estate? asked Jasper. An assistant manager with the surname Wood was mainly in charge of that aspect and quickly answered The local market for this industry is mainly composed of Ambition Corporation and Future Industries. These two companies comprise 70% of the building materials market. The one who's cooperating with us is Ambition Corporation, whose ability is slightly weaker than Future Industries. Future Industries? Is the boss surname Quair? asked Jasper. Mr. Wood nodded. Yes, sir. Immediately set up an appointment for me to meet with the boss of Ambition Corporation. Mr. Wood answered immediately after hearing it, spun around, and went on to proceed with his work. What's the condition at the site? Jasper looked at Mr. Lambert. Mr. Lambert answered with a slight awkwardness. The demolition work is not able to be completed because of the few families that refuse to move. Initially, we thought of starting with laying the foundation where demolition works have been completed, but because of the hindrances every day, we can't start on that as well. It means the site is demonstrating a halt in work, and I have to witness all sorts of cash outflow every day? Jasper asked calmly. Mr. Lambert smiled bitterly and nodded. Mr. Lambert's body trembled out of fear when he noticed Jasper's gaze getting colder. He knew if he continued to make Jasper dissatisfied, then his position would be handed over to another person. JW Real Estate was at a stage of developing its company, and the benefits given were way better than usual. If he was fired by JW Real Estate, for sure he would not be holding any position in Schuler Group as well. He had to bear in mind that the person before him was the son-in-law of Schuler Group. The chairman only had Wendy as his daughter, which meant his son-in-law would be the future boss. He could not afford to offend him. Mr. Lane, this is the report on the Zion family's business which I compiled yesterday after I went home. I'm not sure if it's going to be of use, but please have a look at it. Jasper's expression became much better when he saw the report Mr. Lambert was cautiously handing to him. The core of the Zion's business is building ships. Jasper looked at the report in his hands, and his gaze showed signs of interest. Yes, Mr. Lane, Brack County is a city by the beach. It's not surprising that the shipbuilding industry is more advanced. Old Master Zion was originally a technician in the National Shipbuilding Factory. Later on, he went to work alone in the oceans, and his business gradually became much better. He even bought over the National Shipbuilding Factory. Right now, their main business is from cooperating with big companies in Harbor City. Every year, they will receive orders to build a few ships. I heard that one ship can easily earn them tens of millions of profits. Adding to the usual maintenance, it's all under them as well. In one year, with just this shipbuilding company, they can earn tons of fortune. 
This is also the basis of the financial securement for the Zion family. Jasper smiled softly and said, If they're from other industries, or if they weren't working with big companies in Harbor City, then it might take some time to defeat them. Mr. Lambert's heart skipped a beat. He was making a guess internally. Does this son-in-law have any connections in Harbor City? With that thought in mind, Mr. Lambert's impression of Jasper was that he was getting more mysterious. At that moment, the sound of the door being knocked on was heard. It was Mr. Wood from earlier. Mr. Lane, the boss of Ambition Corporation, Xavier Johnson, has arrived. Jasper waved his hand, beckoning Mr. Lambert and the rest to leave the office. He said, allow Mr. Johnson to enter. A moment later, the office door was pushed open and a middle-aged man with a prestigious physique entered while giving off a domineering aura. There was an astonished look on Xavier's face when he saw that the boss of JW Real Estate, Jasper, was so young. However, very soon, he composed himself and said politely, Nice to meet you, Mr. Lane. I'm Xavier from Ambition Corporation. Jasper smiled and got up. He shook hands with Xavier and asked him to have a seat. Jasper was no stranger to Xavier. In his past life, Xavier's building materials company left Brack County and became the number one building materials supplier in the entire province. However, the real reason that made him famous was that his family of three was suddenly met with a robbery when his business was at its peak. All three of them were murdered. Then, his building materials company was inherited by one of his best friends. Coincidentally, that best friend of Xavier's went by the surname of Quair. According to what I know, there's a vice president in Ambition Corporation who has the surname Quare. I think he's also the biological brother of the boss of Future Industries. Hearing Jasper's question made Xavier, who thought Jasper would first discuss business with him, dumbfounded. You're right, Mr. Lane, but my vice president is also my friend, my brother. Even though he's Douglas Quare's biological brother, they've long since been separated. Initially, when I got transferred back from the military, I couldn't find a good job for a while. It was this brother of mine who brought me onto this path of building materials. I can say that Ambition Corporation was able to get to today's scale mostly thanks to my brother. Xavier did not hide anything. This incident was known by everyone in Brack County. As long as one went asking around, they would be able to figure it out. However, Mr. Lane, does this have anything to do with the corporation between your company and Ambition Corporation? Asked Xavier. Jasper said faintly, of course, there's some connection to it because right now, JW Real Estate is choosing a reliable partner in the building materials industry. Obviously, we can't just find someone who will end up losing his family because of his brother to cooperate with us. Xavier's expression changed drastically after hearing it. He was quite joyful when he initially heard that JW Real Estate was having the intention to choose a reliable partner. In Brack County, that was just a branch company to JW Real Estate. Even though there were some difficulties that prevented it from moving forth because of the pressure exerted by the Zion family. However, in the view of the entire province, JW Real Estate was definitely an upstart in the property industry. If only we can become their reliable business partner, then Ambition Corporation will be in charge of all the building materials of JW Real Estate throughout the entire province. That'll be such a great thing. However, Jasper's words made Xavier's good mood immediately disappear into thin air. Mr. Lane, what do you mean by that? My relationship with my brother is not something an outsider like you can understand. How is it possible that he'll make me lose my family? I wouldn't be here if it's not for him. Although he had changed countless jobs throughout the years, Xavier still retained the boldness of a soldier from his time in the military deep in his bones. At this moment when he saw that Jasper was trying to sow discord, he argued back ruthlessly. He can even betray his own biological brother. So what more you? Said Jasper immediately. That statement left Xavier speechless for a long time. Mr. Johnson, honest people won't say things behind other people's back. You can look into it, how the siblings got into a fight in the beginning and ended up going their own pathways. Besides, go and look at your company's account. You'll know what I'm talking about soon enough. Xavier's expression became more awful as he heard Jasper's words. Out of trust, he had basically handed over the company's account to his brother to manage, and he would not bother with those matters. However, Jasper's words were like a thorn, making it hard for him to accept the words. 
Jasper shook his head slightly when he saw Xavier's expression that was changing for the worst. So it means that people like Xavier aren't suitable to run a business. He's too honest and easily trusts others. Take Jasper, for example. No matter how good of a relationship he shared with others or how great the ability of that person was, he would never hand over the financial authority to another. Except for Wendy. She was different because she was Jasper's lady. However, for those who were not his family, Jasper would beat that person's head into pieces with a bat if they wanted to lay a finger on the finances of the company. Mr. Lane, you called me over today just to talk about this matter, asked Xavier. Jasper said faintly, as I said before, I'm planning to choose a building materials supplier who is reliable for JW Real Estate. Ambition Corporation is the first company that I'm considering, but if you can't solve the problems within your company, then I won't choose you guys. Xavier gritted his teeth and said, I need to go back and have a look. Since the opponent has already decided to do it, he won't allow you to catch him red-handed so easily. I have a better idea that can help Ambition Corporation conquer the market of building materials in Brack County, and it can also make this whole incident come to light. It's up to you whether or not you'll give us your cooperation, Mr. Johnson. Xavier's eyes sparkled, and he looked at Jasper before saying, I'm all ears. Jasper said with a smile, strike down future industries. Xavier was dumbfounded when he heard it. He felt that Jasper was making fun of him. Future Industries was his greatest enemy. Never in his wildest dreams would he think of taking down Future Industries. But why is he taking it lightly? Indeed, there's some difficulty to it, but with the full support given by JW Real Estate, things will be much easier. It was as if Jasper could read one's mind and had seen through what was on Xavier's mind. The building materials market is mostly just like other industries. From supplying the goods to providing the goods, the account is being settled in a cyclical phase, right? Asked Jasper. Xavier nodded. It was not just building materials. Most of the industries were like that. Even if they were the one providing the building materials to JW Real Estate, JW Real Estate would at most pay 20% or around 30% of deposits for the goods and pay the rest later. Mr. Johnson, you can go get in touch with your supplier. Ambition Corporation will pay full for the goods with the only request that they have to stop supplying goods to future industries. Xavier was shocked when he heard Jasper's comment and said, This is indeed a way to finish someone off. But where do I get so much money to immediately pay everything to them? JW Real Estate can pay for all the goods. With this, don't you have the money? Said Jasper with a giggle. Xavier was stunned for a long time. He looked at Jasper deeply and said, Mr. Lane, do you mind me asking you something? Do you happen to have a grudge against future industries? Jasper answered faintly, Nope, I just don't like them. Xavier took in a deep breath. He could not comprehend what was going on in this young man's mind. He immediately blurted such huge news the moment they met up. First of all, Jasper claimed that his brother bore ill intentions. Then he told him a method to take down future industries, both in just a single night. The main point was that Jasper did not just provide the idea, but the execution of the plan as well. Currently, JW Real Estate's business was doing very well. As long as the company was willing to clear off all their debts, then he would be able to hold on to all the supplies and make future industries fall. To be blunt, this was like having a dog sitting on a chair. Even a dog could accomplish it well, hence it was not something that could only be done by being ambitious. And this is just because Jasper despises future industries? Xavier felt that this world had changed. I'm doing it, said Xavier, determined. Jasper said with a smile, a toast to our cooperation. After Xavier left, Jasper pinched Wendy's nose and said, What are you thinking about? Why are you being absent-minded? Wendy blinked her eyes and said, Isn't it going to be very troublesome if you want to take down future industries? If it's within the rules of the game, Future Industries is deeply involved in the building materials market in Brack County. Even Ambition Corporation is not worthy of being their opponent. It's indeed not an easy feat for a property company like mine that comes from a foreign land to take the company down. While saying this, Jasper shrugged his shoulders. But why should I abide by the rules of the game? I can just overrule these rules anytime I want. When I'm the one who gets to have a saying about the rules, what is Future Industries going to use to go against me? Hurting others with the lowest cost. Wendy covered her mouth and smiled. Smart lady. 
Jasper held his phone, lowered his head in search of a number, and praised her. Who are you calling? asked Wendy curiously. It took me about half an hour to contact Xavier and convince him to take down future industries. Now, I'll let you see how long it's going to take me to take down the Zion family, said Jasper to Wendy with a smile when he dialed a number. He was waiting for the call to go through. How long? asked Wendy. Just a phone call's time. Over at Harbor City in another shipbuilding company, Jasper was calling the ship king, Spencer Boyle. He did not wish to trouble Spencer over such a trivial issue. It was because he did not know any of the Boyle family members who were slightly younger. Spencer, who was far away at Harbor City, was flabbergasted to receive the call from Jasper. After laughing while talking for a moment, Jasper then revealed his intention behind this call. Spencer knew what was going on and was able to grasp the situation after just listening to half of Jasper's speech. I'm not familiar with the Zion family's shipbuilding factory in Brack County that you're talking about. After all, there are just way too many shipbuilding company partners who provide us with the original equipment manufacturer. Most of it is being arranged by the underlings. However, in regards to this issue, I'll order my men to settle it. So, rest assured, the Ship King's reply showed that he greatly respected Jasper. After all, as the head of one of the four affluent families in Harbor City, to be able to say such a thing already represented an attitude. Thank you. Next time when I head over to Harbor City, I'll definitely come to visit you, said Jasper with a smile as he also knew how to reciprocate with the same respect. Spencer burst into laughter and said, Sure. When you're here, be sure to be my guest. After another word or two, Jasper hung up the call. Just now was, Wendy looked at Jasper, astonished. Even though she was aware that Jasper had a good relationship with the four affluent families in Harbor City, witnessing Jasper being able to call Spencer straight and even have a nice conversation with him made her feel that it was rather ridiculous. It's exactly the person who you're thinking of. The next trip to Harbor City, I'll bring you along and introduce you to him, said Jasper with a smile. Wendy let out a faint smile. Earlier, I think you said a total of ten sentences. Among them, eight of them were greetings. With just two sentences, the matter is settled. You finally get to witness the ability of your man, right? Come, let's go have lunch. Jasper smiled and held Wendy's hand before walking out of the office. In Harbor City, Spencer indeed attached great importance to Jasper. As soon as he ended the call with Jasper, he immediately dialed another number. He made a call to his son, Eustace Boyle. Currently, most of the businesses of the Boyle family were under the control of his son. Eustace, who was having a meeting, immediately raised his hand to stop the meeting when he saw the incoming call. He ordered a group of staff from the higher management to watch over the situation while he answered the call. What's up, Dad? Hearing Eustace reply made all of the higher-ups stand up straight subconsciously as if the old man was able to see them through the phone. After listening to the words, Eustace answered and said another two sentences before hanging up the call. A dead hush befell the conference room. Eustace loosened his necktie and asked, Who knows if we're cooperating with a shipbuilding company under the Zion family of Brack County in the mainland? All the bosses exchanged terrified looks. Who the hell is that? We've never heard of them before. Such a trivial matter yet it made Spencer, who was half-retired, personally make a call to inquire. After some time, a man who was sitting at a corner of the conference room got up weakly. Mr. Boyle, I vaguely have an impression of this name. It seems that it's true. Eustace waved his hand and said, You shouldn't continue with the meeting. Go give them a call and tell them that we, the Boyle family, will not continue working with them. Eustace thought for a moment and added, Send regards to others who are involved in the same industry. Just say this is my old man's intention. Old man referred to his father and the crowd knew the meaning as well. The identity of Eustace's father. The higher up sighed internally. I wonder which unknown shipbuilding company this is. It seems they are done for this time. Spencer's intention was passed on. It was foreseen in the future that anything that floated on the ocean, even if it was just a little boat, would not involve the shipbuilding company of the Zion family. The plan to go against future industries still needed some time to take effect. However, the call from Harbor City immediately made the entire Zion family fall to their doom. Initially, Harvey was still in a good mood. 
Even though in the property industry he had lost his pride because he could not win against JW Real Estate over that piece of land, the arrangement after that incident still made Harvey rather confident that he was able to exert pressure on JW Real Estate. Plus, their shipbuilding company had received another two boat orders. With this, the Zion family was able to enjoy their lives even without needing to work for the remaining year. However, just when he was having his lunch, he received a call from Harbor City. The caller, without even being courteous, immediately claimed that they were going to halt all cooperation agreements. From then on, there was no more cooperation, let alone the two orders for ships that were just placed. At that moment, Harvey was dumbfounded. He wanted to ask, but the caller had hung up the call. Following then, he received a call from the underlings of the shipbuilding company, saying that the caller had released an official memo to officially halt all cooperation. The underlings were stunned, and even Harvey was stunned as well. What the F asterisk CK? Harvey was so mad that he threw his cutleries and plate. Who the hell is making fun of me? Mark, who was sitting at the same dining table, was dumbfounded as well. Dad, I thought our cooperation over at Harbor City was proceeding well. Why did they suddenly call off the agreement? Harvey was like a disgruntled bull and said through his gritted teeth, Someone is setting us up. Mark thought for a moment and said, We didn't offend anyone though. Suddenly, Mark thought of something and said with a shocked voice, Could it be JW Real Estate? Mark said with his brows furrowed, Where did JW Real Estate gain the ability to exert influence in Harbor City? However, I met with the boss of JW Real Estate yesterday. As he said that, Mark then blurted the entire incident that occurred last night. You fool. JW Real Estate from the province is the one who worked with the Law family of Harbor City in developing the project on the South Face River. This incident caused a huge turmoil at that time. It's obviously Wendy and Dawson trying to set us up through their relationship with the Law family. Harvey's words were making so much sense as he spoke. He frowned and glared at Mark ruthlessly, roaring, You useless thing. All you know is to cause trouble outside. How is it possible that Wendy will not seek revenge after you humiliated her? Mark's expression was dark as he said through gritted teeth. I also didn't expect that lady who was so quiet to actually carry out such a cruel plan. Even if she didn't, did you think Dawson wouldn't? Harvey kicked Mark's body and roared. You'd better go and look for Wendy right now to apologize to her. Whatever she requests you to do, you have to obey her. Mark's face went pale as he said with a teary face, Dad, if I show up before them, do you think she'll let me off the hook? Our family relies on our shipbuilding business. If this business is gone, that will be the end for the Zion family. Go over this instant. If Wendy is not satisfied, don't ever think of coming back. Harvey barked. All right. All right, I'll go find them now. Mark could sense the anger from his father. He dared not waste a single second and immediately nodded to agree. He made a move to search for Wendy to apologize to her. After having a meal with Jasper, Wendy happily planned to drag him to watch a movie with her. However, she did not expect to see the person whom she did not wish to see. Mark Zion. He was standing at the entrance of their hotel room. Judging from the looks of it, it seemed that he had been standing there for quite some time. What are you doing here? Hearing Wendy's cold tone, Mark silently gritted his teeth. However, he had a smile on his face to try to get on her good terms. Miss Schuler, I am here today to offer my apology. I've thought through it and realized that my attitude last night was terrible. I was being too arrogant. So, I purposely came here to apologize to you, Miss Schuler. I hope you'll be generous enough to forgive me. Mark tried his best to lower his ego as he blurted the most humbling words. Even so, he cursed with the crudest words internally. Throughout his entire life, he had never suffered such humiliation before. He engraved the entire incident in his mind and vowed to seek revenge. I will. Wendy looked at Mark coldly. Naturally, she knew that it was impossible for this person to have realized his mistakes. It seems that Jasper's method has already taken effect, forcing him to show up to apologize. Wendy let out a cold smile. Then, she spun around and looked at Jasper. Wendy would never make any decision when it came down to dealing with outsiders. As such, she granted the final decision to Jasper. Jasper smiled. 
After opening the room door, he entered with Wendy. Since the beginning, Wendy and Jasper never reacted to Mark's apology. They did not mention any words of forgiving him, but did not comment that they would never forgive him either. They just ditched him at the doorway. Mark was dumbfounded. He looked at the room door that was half closed. Finally, he gritted his teeth and followed them to enter. Upon entering the room, he stood still in the middle of the hall. Mark saw Jasper sitting on the main seat while Wendy was cutting an apple for Jasper. At that moment, perhaps Mark was deeply jealous of Jasper. F. Asterisk Kerr. Steve was right. Jasper is just a B. Asterisk starred who relies on ladies. How dare he rely on ladies like this? Since the beginning, Mark never thought that the incident had anything to do with Jasper. In his opinion, this fight was obviously because Wendy had suffered some grievances and experienced terror last night. She then told Dawson about it, leading Dawson to arrange all of this. As for Jasper, he was just a B asterisk starred who relied on ladies. Hence, seeing Jasper sitting in front of him and showing off his mightiness made Mark feel mentally uneasy. I'm here to apologize to Miss Schuler. Why are you sitting here? Hurry up and get lost. Mark said in a mystifying tone. Jasper leaned on the sofa and looked at Mark calmly. He let out a vague smile and said, Aren't you here to apologize? Looks like you're not sincere enough in your apology. Son of A B asterisk Tisich, why are you acting almighty? Since when was it your turn to put on an act before me? I'm here to apologize to Miss Schuler, not to some F asterisk cur like you. Mark said with a cold smile. Wendy looked at Mark coldly. Then, she carefully cut the apple into smaller pieces and used a toothpick to poke on it. She fed them to Jasper. That gesture explained it all. Mark gritted his teeth. His icy yet exasperated gaze stared at both Jasper and Wendy. In Mark's opinion, Wendy was intentionally using someone who relied on ladies like Jasper to humiliate him. As for Jasper, he's an arrogant F asterisk cur who relies on ladies. That's more disgusting. I heard that your family's shipbuilding business is about to come to an end, said Jasper faintly. Indeed. Mark clenched his fist while his expression tensed. Indeed, it's this stupid couple who's responsible for this. Mark took in a deep breath. He went all out and said coldly, This time, I admit my defeat. Spit out what you want me to do. I just request that you'll let go of the Zion family's business. All right, nice. Being able to say this statement can at least prove that your dad didn't waste his efforts bringing you up for so many years, said Jasper with a smile. Mark stared at Jasper and said with a cold smile, Shut the F asterisk CK up. You're AB asterisk starred who relies on ladies. You're just relying on the power of the Schuler family. I despise such a worthless man. Jasper got up and sauntered lazily to Mark. When he raised his head, there was a dark gleam within his eyes. Mark did not seem to back off as he matched up to Jasper's gaze and coldly said, What do you want? Down on your knees, said Jasper calmly. Mark's eyes widened. His pupils were dilated as he glared at Jasper, as if he was trying to confirm whether it was Jasper who said it wrong, or it was himself who misheard it. You want me to get down on my knees? Mark got so mad that he ended up laughing. It's fine if you don't kneel down. Jasper's chin was in the direction of the room door that was still left half-opened. He pointed at it, saying, The door is just right there. Off you go. I won't be seeing you off. Jasper Lane. Mark raised his voice. Don't cross the limits. Is it? Jasper sneered and fixed his gaze on Mark. Smack. Suddenly, a slap was swung and landed on Mark's face, leaving behind a fiery red palm mark. This is your last chance. If you don't get down on your knees and apologize, then get lost. Mark felt the burning sensation on his face. He gritted his teeth and stared at Jasper. If it had occurred in the past, Jasper would have long ago been tortured to death by him. However, at that moment, Jasper was with Wendy. Besides, if he failed to obtain Wendy's forgiveness, then that would truly be the end for the Zion family's shipbuilding company. He had a ferocious expression as he glared at Jasper. He spun around and looked at Wendy, saying with much effort, Miss Schuler, I? Don't talk to me. Wendy lowered her head and played with her phone. I only listened to Jasp. Nash, 
Mark was gritting his teeth as he stared at Jasper mercilessly. He said with a miserable smile, Do you think you have what it takes to make me get down on my knees? Jasper looked at Mark calmly and said, I have no interest in your knees. When I asked you to kneel, I wanted you to kneel before Wendy to make up for the inappropriate comments you said to her last night. The thought of his family's business made Mark so mad that his body was trembling when he recalled his father's fierce and merciless gaze before he left home. Jasper just looked at him faintly, not saying a word. After some time, with his teeth clenched, Mark gradually lowered his head and bent his knees. Bang! Both of Mark's knees knocked against the floor, letting out a deep sound. It's my fault, Miss Schuler. Please forgive me. Mark lowered his head, and his voice was heard. You're too soft. I can't hear you. It was as if Mark was going all out as he raised his reddened eyes and roared, It's my fault, Miss Schuler. Please forgive me. Jasper smiled, then got back to his seat and said calmly, Get lost. With both of Mark's hands supporting his thighs, he stumbled to peel himself from the floor. Mark, with a cruel gaze, glanced over at the two people then spun around to sprint out of the room. Jasp, I'm afraid he won't just let this matter end like this. Wendy put down her phone and said to Jasper, Earlier, did we just do something that crossed the line? Obviously not. Just now, his gaze was saying that he wanted to eat us up so badly. Jasper nodded. It was not the first time Jasper was meeting a young master from a rich family like Mark. Isn't Zayden just like him? However, right now, Zayden is not even worthy as a dog. Then, will he go and do anything irrational? asked Wendy. Jasper smiled and said thoughtfully, If he doesn't become irrational, how are we going to utterly defeat the Zion family? Downstairs of the hotel, Mark sprinted out. He sat in the car and slammed the car door. He was panting hard, out of breath. Bang! Mark's punch smashed against the steering wheel. His ferocious and cruel voice echoed within the car. Jasper! Wendy! Just you guys wait and see. I'll never let this matter slide aside. It was as if Mark had thought of something. He took out his phone and made a call, roaring into it in a hysterical manner. Steve! Come and look for me now. I want to make that lowly couple suffer like hell. I'm coming over to look for you right now, young Master Zion. Steve received the call from Mark. After hanging up the call, he immediately rushed over. In no time, he arrived at the designated place chosen by Mark. He was dumbfounded the moment he saw Mark's face. What's wrong, young Master Zion? At that moment, Mark's face had a bright red handprint on it. His expression was extremely dark. Steve had no idea what had happened and dared not imagine who in the entire Brack County would have the guts to hit Mark. I must make Jasper fall, regardless of the price I have to pay for it. Mark glared ruthlessly at Steve and said with a deep, ferocious tone. The corners of Steve's mouth twitched. He had the desire to inquire the reason, but he gulped down his saliva as he had no guts to blurt out another comment. He thought to himself, could it be it was Jasper who personally hit Mark? No matter what, Mark vows to make Jasper fall. This is great news. Indeed, Steve did not think into it. His deep voice sounded as he said to Mark, Young Master Zion, if you really want to make them fall, I have an idea which will definitely make them wish they were dead instead of alive. Mark stared at Steve and said evilly, Stop beating around the bush and spit it out. Steve chuckled and said, Young Master Zion, no matter how great Jasper and Wendy are, they're just two ordinary beings. We can find someone with a much more powerful ability to beat Jasper till he's disabled, then kidnap Wendy. At that time, won't it be your call to do whatever you want to a beauty like Wendy? Even if you rape her in front of Jasper, he can only lie on the ground and roar all he wants. Hearing Steve's comment made Mark's eyes sparkle. His mind was flooding with images of Jasper being beaten till he was covered with blood and lying on the ground. Meanwhile, Wendy was tied up, allowing him to go on top of her body. Mark felt a warm sensation coursing through his body as if the slap on his face no longer hurt. However, in the next second, Mark hesitated and said, But Dawson is not someone we should simply go against. If we do that, Dawson is the richest man in the entire province and naturally cares for his pride. If such a thing happens to his daughter, will he even have the dignity to spread the news out? 
Steve counter-questioned, and on his face was a devilish expression. He knew that he would not be able to obtain Wendy's heart. However, even if he could not gain it, he would want to at least destroy Wendy. Aren't you a goddess? Aren't you someone who's always at the top? Aren't you always looking at me disdainfully? Then, I might as well instigate Mark to rape you. We'll see whether you'll still be able to act all elegant then. Steve, who was out of his mind because of the jealousy and hatred that was dwelling within him, was utterly delighted. Young Master Zion, you're the young master of the Zion family. You have a prestigious status. When everything is settled, there's no turning back. The Schuler family will have no choice but to give in. After all, the incident has already happened. It's either Dawson makes a fuss about the incident and allows everyone in the province to tease him, or he'll just have to acknowledge you as his son-in-law. If he's smart, he won't choose the former. With that being said, not only will you counter them and obtain victory, but you'll also obtain Wendy. What's more important is during that time, it'll be up to you how you'd like to torment Jasper, the man who only relies on ladies. Hearing Steve's analysis made Mark squint his eyes. The evil gleam within his eyes was getting more intense. Not bad, not bad. Mark patted Steve's shoulder and said, If this matter is a success in the future, your family's future industries will be the Zion family's business partner. Steve was thrilled. He could no longer suppress the smile that was plastered on his face. He took the opportunity and said, Young Master Zion, the most crucial point in this plan is to look for a person who is reliable yet has a great ability to help you kidnap Wendy, and in the meantime, he can finish Jasper off too. And I happen to know such a person. Mark said excitedly, Great. Indeed, even the gods are helping me out. Hurry, go summon this person over here. Remember, the guy must be a reliable one inch. At Brack County General Hospital. Where's Kathy's family? A nurse shouted out loud into the hall that was filled with people. A man, who was not even 180 centimeters in height, stepped over. He had a physique that was not bulky but still emanated a sharp cold aura. I'm her younger brother, said Julian to the nurse. The nurse sighed and stuffed a pile of bills into Julian's hand, saying, These are Kathy's bills for this week. Right now, the account is stating that you haven't paid for the bills. Hurry and go collect the funds. After the nurse left, Julian stared at the big stack of bills in his hand. His stern face revealed sorrow and torment. Ever since his sister was diagnosed with leukemia, the siblings had used up their entire savings. The prize money he previously won from martial arts tournaments and the money earned through his performances all these years was way too trivial in amount when dealing with leukemia. Julian gritted his teeth and came to the ward upstairs. A lady with a fragile look on her face was sitting on the hospital bed. It was his elder sister, Kathy. You should take a good rest, sis. In the afternoon, you're going for dialysis, said Julian. Kathy sighed and said, July, we don't have any money already, right? Julian forced out a smile. Don't worry, sis. I'll go borrow some from my friends. You don't have to worry about the money. It was impossible that Kathy could not see through Julian's intention to comfort her. She said, July, let's go home. I don't want to be treated. One session of dialysis costs more than 200000 We don't even have the money. Furthermore, we can't find suitable bone marrow. I'll still be gone either way. Julian put on a stubborn look and said, No way, sis. Even if I have to go all out, I'll make sure you're treated. Don't worry about the money. I'll think of a way. Just when the siblings were in an argument, Julian's phone rang. Julian walked out of the ward and answered the call. After half an hour, Julian came to a private room in a restaurant. Steve, the person who called him, was sitting in the room with Mark. They had been waiting for his arrival. Seeing that Julian had come in, Steve spun around and faced Mark before saying with a giggle, Young Master Zion, this is the good fighter I was talking about. He started training in boxing at the age of five. At the age of eight, he started going into professional boxing. At the age of 15, he managed to achieve good results in the boxing industry and became champion in the national boxing tournament in the youth category. He's a three-time back-to-back -back champion in the 60 kilograms category. He's a rare fighter and one of the best in the entire country, let alone in Brack County. Mark's eyes glittered the more he heard. He nodded and said, not bad. He has the required ability. 
Steve smiled proudly, spun around and said to Julian, This is young Master Zion. He needs you for a favor. Once the matter is done, you may immediately leave with one million. Julian's breathing became heavier when he heard the one million figure. In terms of fighting ability, he was confident he could defeat everyone in the country of the same age group as him. However, because of a small incident, he was unable to proceed further. Currently, Julian was in need of money. For the sake of the money, he was willing to do anything. Mark took out a photo of Jasper and Wendy, which had been taken in secret, and tossed it onto the table. He said, These two people are now at Marriott Hotel. Go beat this guy till he's disabled, then kidnap this lady. When you're done, inform me. It's as simple as that. On the other hand, Wendy and Jasper had almost spent the entire day playing outside. That day, Wendy had played with much excitement. She had never been that happy in her life. They had strolled along the streets, watched movies, had snacks, and even took a trip to the amusement park. It was just that Wendy was not that brave. Those thrilling rides such as the drop tower, she had no guts to ride. Finally, she yanked Jasper over to ride two rounds on the carousel. Jasper followed along with her plans. It was a rare occasion for Wendy to be this happy, and he was happy as well that he relaxed for a moment. While they were heading back to the hotel from the snack street, Wendy was so tired that she dozed off. Jasper took out his phone and saw that there were about 10 missed calls from Xavier. He finally called back. Mr. Johnson, I was accompanying my girlfriend earlier. Is there anything the matter? asked Jasper calmly. Judging from the way Xavier was looking for Jasper in such an urgent manner, perhaps Xavier had already verified some information regarding the matter that Jasper told him about earlier in the morning. Mr. Lane, I finally got through to you. Xavier could not help but let out a bitter smile when he heard Jasper's casual reason. However, he dared not say anything unrelated and immediately said, Regarding the matter you told me about today, I sent someone to check on it when I got back. It's not looking too good. Humans are truly unpredictable. Jasper smiled as he replied, Since ancient times, the hardest thing to predict is a person's thoughts. Since you've already gained some insights, then I believe you'll agree with my plan, right? Xavier said with a deep voice, Although I've found some traces, there's no evidence yet. It's just that I can already sense something even without the evidence. Regarding your plan, I'll carry it out to the best of my ability. I've already contacted a few suppliers who are very powerful. No one will be able to refuse the generous terms I'm going to offer them. Tomorrow, I'll be sure to cut off Future Industries' entire supply chain. Jasper said with a smile, Nice one. Tomorrow, the first batch of funds for the cooperation between JW Real Estate and Ambition Corporation will be credited. In regards to those suppliers, you ought to bear in mind to be careful when signing contracts with them. Xavier nodded and said, Got it. You can rest assured about that, Mr. Lane. It's just that, aren't you afraid I won't keep to my promise after you credit those funds to me tomorrow? At that moment, the car had come to a halt at the entrance of Marriott Hotel. Jasper opened the car door and helped Wendy step down from the car. While he was walking to the lobby of the hotel, he said, You won't have the guts, Mr. Johnson. Xavier kept quiet for a long time and suddenly said with laughter, Mr. Lane, I realized being your friend is much more assuring than making an enemy out of you. I'll wait for your good news tomorrow. Jasper smiled and hung up the call. As soon as he put down his phone, Jasper noticed the moment when he entered through the doors, a man got up and walked toward him with clear motives. There's danger. Jasper looked at the face that was very familiar in his memory, but it was a face that looked far too young. He suddenly spun around and said to Wendy, Do me a favor and head over to the lounge area to order some supper for me, all right? Wendy was puzzled. Jasper did not have the habit of having supper. What was more, they had both just returned from the snack street. However, since Jasper had already spoken, Wendy did not think any further and obediently answered him. She then spun around to head over to the lounge area beside the lobby. Wendy and Julian passed by each other. Julian saw Wendy's back figure. Then, with a dark expression, he came to Jasper. Having lived two lives after being reborn, he had made lots of enemies. Jasper could sense that the man who was approaching him posed a very dangerous threat to himself. However, in Brack County, who would arrange for someone to cause him trouble? Could it be Mark? Except for him, there's no one else. 
Before Jasper could speak, Julian beat him to it. Someone gave me money, asking me to do him a favor. I'm sorry. After saying this, Julian bowed deeply to Jasper without any prior warning. Julian only practiced boxing due to interest in it being a hobby. Boxing was his life's passion, but he never thought that one day, he would use this ability to commit a crime. Plus, it was against two strangers too. However, Julian had no way out. He had to do it for the sake of money. Julian planned to immediately take action once he was done talking and bowing, but when he straightened his body, Jasper suddenly spoke. If your sister who has leukemia finds out that you're helping the evil commit a crime all for the sake of money, she will never forgive you even after she's dead. Julian's pupils quickly shrunk. He stared at Jasper and stood frozen on the ground. He was dumbfounded. Jasper looked at Julian and sighed internally. Very few people knew of Julian. After five years, he would astonish the entire nation using another name. Rexy, the fighting monk. He learned boxing, and he was the first one to defeat 18 people in one go throughout the 50 years of boxing history. With his ability, he had made a name for himself. He was not just a master of boxing. He was familiar with other fighting styles, including mixed martial arts. He had truly mastered all sorts of fighting styles. Later on, he went to join a world tournament and had a winning streak with 22 consecutive wins. He never lost a match. With the status of a 60-kilogram athlete, he used only 15 seconds to knock out the boxing king of 110 kilograms, creating himself the title of the legendary fighting monk. During Julian's interview after that, he revealed that his biggest regret in his life was to witness his biological sister being tortured to death because of leukemia. Many leukemia patients could not find suitable bone marrow donors and passed away. However, his sister had actually found a bone marrow donor that was compatible, but because they did not have the money for the transplant surgery, she ended up dying on the hospital bed with regret. That was Julian's greatest pain. Calculating the timing, this was when Kathy, the fighting monk or Julian's sister, was being tormented by leukemia. If there were no accidents, Kathy would pass away after another half a year. Then, Julian would give himself the name Rexy the Fighting Monk. He would give his all to learn fighting for four years and became famous. Jasper did not expect Mark to be able to look for Julian. If it was another person, Jasper would really be in trouble. However, he knew that deep within Julian's heart laid the spirit of a knight. Adding to the words he said earlier, Jasper was confident that he was able to make Julian return to the bright side from the dark side. I know your sister has leukemia. Right now, you two siblings are very poor to the point where you can't pay for the hospital bills. You're on the brink of being chased out of the hospital. But I can help you, Jasper stared at Julian and said. Julian stared at Jasper and said with a deep tone, How do you know about me and my sister? There are very few things in the world that I'm not aware of. Jasper let out a smile because he could feel the kindness that was still in Julian. If there was still a ray of hope, he would never take this path. As for Jasper, he could give him hope. Not just hope, but a path that was bright and where he could cure his sister. I even know that it was Mark who made you come forth, am I right? Jasper's comment made Julian speechless. Being silent would mean he had agreed to it silently. Jasper said with a smile, Think about it. Mark sent you to go against me. Once things are settled, he'll be holding on to your weak point. Do you think you'll be able to shake off his setup? Julian's expression changed for the worst. At that moment, he did not think much as to why Jasper knew so much about his matters. Instead, he was starting to reconsider Mark's intention. Earlier, it was because of his mindset to get the money to save his sister that he did not consider the outcome. However, at this moment, he started to hesitate. Mark doesn't dare to come and look for me but got you to fight me instead. That means he's afraid of me. Think about it. If anything happens to me, do you think you'll be able to escape? Julian's expression became dark as he said, I can't be bothered too much right now. I just need the money. I can give you the money. And I can even give you the bone marrow that can save your sister. Jasper's words impressed Julian. He certainly did not want to break the law if he could. What did it matter if he was strong? Was he able to fight the law? During this time, he had clearly understood that personal strength meant nothing in the world. Only wealth and power mattered. As for Jasper, 
His calm and unhurried demeanor since the start made him so much more powerful than Mark or Steve. How can I trust you? Julian asked. Jasper chuckled when he realized that Julian was having a change of heart. How much did Mark give you? One million, Julian answered honestly. What a big deal, Jasper said quietly. Then, Jasper took his phone and made a phone call in front of Julian. Hi, Mr. Lambert, it's me. Withdraw two million in cash from the company's vault. You have 30 minutes. Then, Jasper hung up and turned toward Julian to say, So, can we sit down and talk now? Julian stared intently at Jasper before he nodded. Jasper treated Julian to supper in the lounge. He was full and did not feel like eating anything, so he just got himself and Wendy a drink each. As for Julian, he was so broke from using all his money to purchase Kathy's medicine that he had not eaten for two days. Besides, he was a martial artist, which further increased his body's need for food. Thus, he managed to eat enough for eight in one sitting. Wendy's eyes widened in shock as she looked at the number of empty plates. Who is he? He has such a large appetite. Are you sure nothing will happen? Wendy asked as she poked Jasper. Jasper smiled. He's the bodyguard I've set my eyes on. He's great in combat. Wendy batted her eyes. She was born into a rich family and thus was familiar with the concept of bodyguards. Her father's bodyguards were usually retired members of elite troops, and they could beat up six people in one go. Other things aside, Wendy felt that Julian could defeat five or six of her dad's bodyguards in terms of appetite alone. Half an hour later, Mr. Lambert sprinted toward the hotel with a combination lock case. Panting, Mr. Lambert placed the case down and glanced at the time. 29 minutes and 30 seconds. Mr. Lambert let out a breath. Thanks for your hard work. Jasper looked at Mr. Lambert, who had thrown on his clothes haphazardly after being roused from bed, as he spoke. No worries. As long as I didn't hold up any procedures. Mr. Lambert was a smart man who made his leave after replying respectfully. Jasper pushed the case toward Julian and motioned for him to open it. When Julian opened the case, he saw 200 bundles of $100 bills placed neatly inside it. Excitement flashed through Julian's eyes as he said to Jasper, What? What do you want me to do? Nothing much. I just want to be friends, Jasper replied smoothly. Julian was startled. Was this how rich people acted? They would spend $2 million just to become your friend? However, Julian was not stupid. He knew which side he should be on after doing a cost-benefit analysis. Steve and Mark wanted him to break the law, but it was obvious that Jasper would not let him do that. His sister had also taught him since he was a child to be a law-abiding citizen. Steve was the one who got in touch with me, and the other person you're referring to must be Mark. Steve paid me to do stuff for Mark. He wanted me to come meet you at this hotel and beat you up and then kidnap her. Julian paused before saying, before I left. I heard them saying that Mark will humiliate her in front of you, so that you'll beg for death before they did what had to be done. The expression on Wendy's face turned frosty after hearing that. She was angry. How vile and shameless. I never expected them to be like that. Jasper remained calm as he tapped Wendy on the arm, signaling for her to calm down. I'll take care of these two, Jasper said. Wendy nodded and said angrily, Jasp, you must teach them a lesson this time. Teach them a lesson? Jasper smiled as he said slowly, I've already taught them a lesson, but it seems that they aren't in touch with reality yet. Lessons aren't enough for people like them. Jasper was smiling, but Wendy, who knew him like the back of her hand, knew he was furious. Wendy knew Jasper was this angry because Mark had malicious intentions toward her. Her heart glowed with the warmth of that knowledge. I'm going to have to trouble you with something, Jasper said to Julian. Call them and tell them that your plan has succeeded. Julian did not understand what was going on, but he could sense the iciness hidden within the calm expression on Jasper's face. Without asking more questions, he nodded and took his phone out to make the call. In a restaurant near Marriott Hotel, Mark and Steve smoked on cigarettes as they stared at the silent phone on the table, panic building within them. Suddenly, the phone rang. Steve immediately answered the phone. A while later, he hung up and smiled broadly at Mark. Young Master Zion, it's done. Mark stood and suppressed his excitement as he asked, Really? Steve nodded and said, That was Julian on the phone. 
He told me that he has successfully taken control of Jasper and Wendy. All we need now is for you to grace them with your presence, young Master Zion. Mark laughed uproariously as he clapped Steve on the back gleefully. Not bad. I'll remember your contributions in this matter. Steve laughed with him as he said sinisterly. I wonder how wild Jasper and Wendy will be this time. Don't worry. I'll make sure you get the chance to humiliate Jasper. I'll make him lie on the floor and watch me have fun with Wendy, Mark guffawed as he said. The two excited men hurriedly stood up and set out toward Marriott Hotel. Within ten minutes, Mark had brought Steve to the door of the suite. Mark could not conceal the delighted grin on his face as he knocked on the door. Just today, Jasper had slapped him and forced him to crawl out of the room. Now, he was back. Everything had come to a full circle. Now, he was going to step on Jasper's face and ask him who was the actual winner. As for Wendy Schuler, she could pretend to be high and mighty all she liked. He would see if she could continue maintaining that aristocratic persona of hers after he ripped her clothes off. Her screams must be music to the ears. Mark's face turned red from excitement as he imagined the scene. He could not wait. The door soon opened. Julian was standing behind the door. Ha ha ha, good one, Julian. I admire you. Mark laughed as he spoke to Julian. Then, he pushed the door open to enter. Steve followed behind him. Julian watched them enter the room before he calmly closed the door and locked it. Mark and Steve must not have noticed that in their excitement. The minute he entered the room, Mark roared with laughter as he yelled, Jasper Lane, you didn't expect this, did you? I'm back. I can do anything I want to you in Brack County. It's too late to be sorry now. Jasper, you. Mark realized that Jasper was sitting comfortably on the couch when he strode into the room. He forgot what he was about to say. Silence took the place of his arrogant, smug voice as if someone had wrapped their hands around his throat. Jasper swirled the glass of red wine he was holding and raised it at Mark and Steve, who were shocked to their cores as he smiled. He looked calm and elegant. Young Master Zion, are you surprised? Mark and Steve felt as if they were going crazy. Their elation fell from the heights of heaven to the pits of hell the minute they saw Jasper. They did not know what to do. They really did not know what to do. In their imagination, Jasper had been lying in a pool of blood, ready to either hurl curses or get on his knees and beg when he saw them. No matter what, he should not be sitting on the couch in one piece and sipping on red wine, looking as if he was awaiting their arrival. Who was the mastermind in their elaborately planned scheme? Steve began sweating profusely as he panicked. Mark's lips trembled as the sparkle left his eyes. Instinctively, the two looked at Julian together. Julian had a calm expression on his face as he walked toward the couch Jasper was sitting on. He stood at attention. An answer that Mark was reluctant to accept surfaced in his mind as he looked at Julian, who stared back with an indifferent expression. They had been betrayed by Julian. Julian Lager, you dare betray me? Steve stared at Julian in shock and roared in anger after understanding what was going on. Julian did not answer, acting as if he had not heard anything. Mark was so angry that he turned and slapped Steve. Gritting his teeth, he said, This is the reliable person you found? A F asterisk king backstabber? Steve was shocked by Mark's slap. He turned his head to the other side, afraid to meet Mark's furious expression. His entire being had been consumed by feelings of fear and trepidation. Where had his smugness vanished to now? Jasper inclined his head and downed the rest of the wine before he gently placed the glass on the side table. I suppose that's all you have? When he heard Jasper, Mark took a deep breath and shuddered as he said, Jasper! No, Brother Lane, this is all that idiot Steve Quare's fault. He's the one who coerced me into this. I never wanted to seek revenge against you. He was also the one who got in contact with Julian. Brother Lane, please forgive me. Mark had not imagined this would happen. His father had wanted him to apologize, and indeed he had come over to apologize earlier. However, he had been angered by the humiliation and thus orchestrated this plan. He did not dare imagine what would happen when his family learned of this accident that would undoubtedly affect his family's shipyard. Thus, Mark decided to grovel first. No matter what, he would sell out Steve first. What was important was soothing Jasper's temper. Steve could not believe that Mark was selling him out. He said furiously, 
Mark Zion. You were the one who contacted me in the first place to help you find. He had not finished speaking when Mark, who was beside him, kicked him aside and roared angrily. Would I be in this mess if it weren't for you? F asterisk king shut your trap. Enough. Jasper's voice rang out, stopping the two from ripping each other to shreds any further. Young Master Zion, we're all adults here. Don't treat the other party like an idiot. Wouldn't it be nice to just let things go? Then, Jasper's gaze landed on Steve, who had a hurt and furious expression on his face. He chuckled as he said, Steve Quare is a lapdog at best. Would he have the guts to do something like this? Mark calmed down after hearing that. He took a deep breath and gazed intently at Jasper as he asked, What do you want? What do I want? Jasper's tone was light and playful as if he was talking to a friend. However, in the blink of an eye, Jasper had grabbed the wine glass on the table and smashed it on Mark's head. The glass shattered into countless tiny pieces with a crash. Mark yelled out in pain as he stumbled backward with his head in his hands. Blood oozed out between his fingers. Jasper took a napkin and carefully cleaned the stains on his fingers. The gaze he directed at Mark and Steve was impossibly cold. It's normal that you want to attack me, but we only look at a man's power. If I lost, that means my ability isn't up to par. Then I should surrender myself to you. However, that means you should do the same if you've lost. You should have never, ever, directed any of your filthy thoughts toward my woman. Mark felt his head throbbing and spinning as he raised it to look at Jasper. At that moment, he did not bother taking any more chances and decided he might as well say while grinning evilly, Shut the F asterisk CK up with your bullsh asterisk T. Of course, you're in the right when you've won. Kill me if you can. But do you dare to? Do you really F asterisk King dare kill me? You'll have to pay a life with a life if you kill me. I'm the sole heir to the Zion family. You dare kill me while you're in Brack County? Jasper laughed as he looked at Mark, who still insisted on having the last say, even when there was no chance of escape for him. I love seeing how emboldened you are. To you, your family losing its power would be much more painful than dying, wouldn't it? If I can cause the Zion family shipbuilding company to go out of business, I can treat the entire Zion family as my playthings. When that happens, you, Mark Zion, will be worth even less than AB asterisk TCH in Brack County. Jasper patted Mark on the cheek and chuckled while saying, You've made quite a number of enemies in Brack County over the years, haven't you? Many would like to kill you even more than I do. Why would I dirty my hands with your blood? Mark's pupils dilated when he heard that. He screamed, it was you who contacted Harbor City and not Dawson Schuler. You were behind all this. Who the F asterisk CK are you? What the hell do you want? Mark had flown into a state of genuine panic. It was because he had realized that the actual mastermind behind this since the start was Jasper Lane, someone he had never paid attention to. This had all been masterminded by Jasper. How else could Julian's betrayal be explained? How else could Jasper's calmness be explained? However, how was that possible? Was he not a poor B asterisk TCH? Where did he gain the power to influence the tycoons of Harbor City? Fear washed over Mark as he thought about that. He suddenly realized that Jasper was filled with secrets and power. Perhaps he could actually do what he claimed and sabotage the entire Zion family. Mark did not dare imagine what would happen to him, who had made countless enemies in Brack County over the years, if that happened. It would be an attack on the enemy while they were down. Jasper smiled slightly. I'll give you another chance. Call your dad and get him to come to talk to me. The corners of Mark's mouth twitched slightly with both fear and disbelief. He could not think of any reason why Jasper would do that. However, he understood that the situation was out of his control now. No matter what, he had to make that phone call. Mark got out his phone with difficulty and dialed his dad's number. Jasper walked towards Steve and asked calmly, How would you like to die? Steve shuddered when he heard what Jasper said. He had realized something just by listening to Mark speak, which was that Jasper had used some sort of method to cause not only Mark but the entire Zion family to suffer extreme losses. Then, he remembered when he met Mark today. Mark had a handprint on his face and was so furious that he could not wait to swallow Jasper whole. Steve realized that he was in deep trouble now. He did not have a background as powerful as Mark's. 
His family could not even be called a prestigious family. It was just that his family's company had the slightest bit of fame and fortune in Brack County. With this little capital, how could he fight against Jasper who could cause the Zion family to suffer extreme losses? Jasper, we were classmates. We were high school classmates for three whole years. You'll keep that in mind, won't you? I know I've made a mistake. How about I kneel to you? I'll get on my knees and beg for forgiveness. As he spoke, Steve fell to his knees and slapped himself without hesitation in front of Jasper. Steve poured all his efforts into trying to live, slapping himself loudly each time. Within minutes, his cheeks had turned red and swollen. Jasper narrowed his eyes as he stared at Steve, who looked as red as a roasted pig. To him, Mark was nothing more than a worthless rich kid who was spoiled. He had neither the guts nor brains to be useful to him. However, Steve was different. He was more intelligent than he seemed and was much eviler. Steve was the one who had instructed Julian on what to do today. If that had not been enough, Steve could even grovel in the blink of an eye when plans failed. Even a casual onlooker could feel the pain from his slaps. However, that did not mean Steve was easier to deal with than Mark. They were the truly poisonous ones. If you did not kill them now, they would cause you more trouble in the future. Jasper watched quietly as Steve slapped himself repeatedly. He made no action to stop Steve, nor did he say a single word. Soon, Steve had slapped himself so much that he began seeing stars in his vision. His cheeks were numb, and blood oozed from the corners of his mouth. When he finally lost the strength in his arms to continue hitting himself, he said to Jasper, Please forgive me. I swear that I'll be a decent person in the future. I won't cause you any more trouble. Jasper smiled slightly. It seemed as if he was going to forgive him. Then, Jasper pulled out his phone just as Steve allowed a flare of hope to ignite in his heart. He called Xavier Johnson who answered the phone swiftly. How do you do, Mr. Lane? Xavier sounded both confused and respectful. Do you dare become the lord of Brack County's building materials industry tonight? Xavier sat upright in bed when he heard what Jasper said. His breathing became quick and labored. Yes. Xavier said in a low voice. All right, spread the news then. Once done, contact the suppliers that you've been in touch with and arrange a meeting with them at Future Industries to settle previous payments. Xavier's heart thumped as he asked, Mr. Lane, has something changed? Jasper turned to look at Steve who had a confused and terrified expression on his face. Steve Quare is beside me. That one short sentence was enough for Xavier to realize that something sensitive and sinister was going on. He repressed his curiosity as he said, I'll get to it immediately. I'll give you my word that the front doors of future industries will soon be filled with people looking for payment. Jasper smiled and asked, You're in the building materials industry. Your cash flow is supported by default payments and bank loans, right? Xavier nodded and said, Yes. We usually pay a settlement of 40%, and then pay the rest of the money periodically. That accounts for half of our cash flow. Bank loans support the other half. Do what you're supposed to do. Tomorrow, no bank in Brack County will issue a loan to future industries, and they'll start demanding payments for loans that have already been made. When Jasper finished speaking, he did not wait for Xavier's surprised reply before hanging up the phone. At that moment, Steve felt the top of his head go numb as he stared at Jasper. Jasper was going to kill his entire family. What? What are you doing? Who did you call? Steve's voice shook while he asked his questions. Who would most enjoy seeing future industries fail in the entire Brack County? Jasper asked calmly. Steve shuddered as he roared, What the F asterisk CK do you want to do? Jasper ignored Steve. It was because Harvey Zion had arrived. Harvey had been discussing tactics with his brothers when Mark called him. All orders for their shipbuilding company had been cancelled, and Harbor City refused to give them a chance for a discussion. Harvey could not have kept it a secret from them even if he tried. Relationships were a complex thing within a family business. Harvey might be the head of the family, but he was not yet at the stage where he could control everything. He was furious when he heard that Mark, whom he had asked to apologize, did not bear good news. Rather, he was now being held captive at a hotel. In his opinion, JW Real Estate was showing no respect for the Zion family at all. The Zion family might be at fault here, but they were still one of the tyrants of Brack County. 
If JW Real Estate was so aggressive that they not only refused to accept their apology but even captured one of his people, would that not be a loud slap to the face? Thus, Harvey immediately left with two of his best bodyguards. When he arrived at the hotel room, Harvey immediately spotted Mark who had his hands wrapped around his bleeding head. He also saw Steve whose face had swollen to twice its size as he knelt before Jasper. His eyes narrowed. You're Jasper Lane? Harvey asked quietly. Jasper replied calmly. You're the head of the Zion family? Harvey huffed, not thinking of Jasper as someone important. He said, Where's Dawson Schuler? I want to speak to him. Does he think I would negotiate with any runty scamps he sends my way? Jasper shook his head. Negotiate? I think you've made a mistake. Besides, we don't need to trouble him with matters like this. I can take care of it myself. Harvey scoffed angrily. Dawson is too arrogant for his own good. He should know his place as the richest man in the province and me as the tyrant of Brack County. Does he really think the Zion family will sit back on their laurels as he bullies us? Dad. Mark yelled out desperately as he tried to tell Harvey that Jasper was the mastermind behind everything. However, Harvey frowned and interrupted his son when he saw the state Mark was in. Stop talking. I'll take you to the hospital now. As he spoke, he got ready to take Mark with him. Jasper's low voice rang out. Who dares leave this room without my permission? Julian, who had been standing behind him, stepped forth. He roared as he cracked his knuckles which sounded more like he was popping corn. It caused goosebumps to appear on one's flesh. The expressions on the faces of the two bodyguards Harvey had brought along stiffened as they stood in front of their boss. Boss, this is not someone we can mess with. Harvey had a furious expression on his face. This was the first time he had been threatened in Brack County. Dad, this was all Jasper's doing. He was the one who contacted the people at Harbor City. We've all been fooled by him. Jasper finally found an opportunity to yell out desperately. He sounded miserable. It was as if he had finally gotten the chance to bed a beautiful woman, but it turned out she had a thicker schlong than him. Harvey's eyes widened after hearing that. He stared at Jasper in disbelief. The expression on his face and the look in his eyes looked identical to the one Mark showed just moments ago. Then, Harvey laughed. Not bad. I've been making my way around Brack County for more than 20 years but this is the first time I've had a youngster run circles around me. You're Jasper Lane, aren't you? Well done. That was wonderfully executed. Harvey pushed his bodyguards aside and stared straight into Jasper's eyes as he said calmly, You've proven yourself by being able to deceive me at this age. Tell me, what do you want? Jasper stood behind the couch, using it to rest his arms. He seemed to be smiling as he stared at Harvey and said coolly, So? You think I'm doing all this to prove my worth to you? Harvey's face fell as he said, Young man, you were still in your mother's womb when I took charge of the Zion family's business. It's worth more than $10 billion. I would advise you not to get too. Snooty, is $10 billion a lot? Jasper asked calmly. Harvey was angry now. In a cold voice, he said, Don't be too arrogant. Not even Dawson would speak like that to me. That means you're not on that level yet. You might think you're in high society, but those actually in it can't even be bothered to look at you, Jasper said playfully as he shrugged. The larger the crowd, the higher the number of idiots. You're one of those idiots. Do you think you're royalty after making a name for yourself in Brack County, which was just a municipality a while ago? Harvey's expression stiffened as he listened to Jasper speak. He roared, the audacity. And who do you think you are? God. Jasper smiled as he pointed at Mark. I'm not God, but your son is. Mark's face turned as white as a sheet when he remembered he had uttered those words before Jasper. Standing in front of the father and son, Jasper took out his phone once again. Harvey and Mark had a somber expression on their faces when they saw Jasper do that. Steve was so afraid that he shuddered. Mere moments ago, Jasper had used his phone to make a call that would cause his family's business, future industries, to suffer from extermination. What was he going to do with his phone now? Was he going to piss all over the Zion family? Steve shuddered, his eyes wide with fear. Jasper dialed Dawson's number. Soon, Dawson's sleepy voice rang out across the line. Jasper, what's the matter? Jasper smiled as he said, I've made matters clear on my end. 
You can begin exerting pressure from the province, Uncle Schuler. I've already dealt with the Zion family's shipyard. You can ask your friends from other industries for help. Dawson grabbed his glasses from the bedside table and walked toward the study. He did not ask for a reason, nor did he ask for details about the Zion family. He simply answered, All right. One word was enough. Schuler Group had recently been transitioning into the real estate industry and causing economic growth. Thus, they were extremely important to both the provincial and city government. As Schuler Group's fame and power rose, so did the number of people who wanted to curry favors with them. Thus, Dawson could not care less about who the Zion family was. If Jasper said they were to be defeated, he would make use of his resources to ensure that was done. After Jasper hung up, he looked at Harvey whose eyes were glinting despite the stony expression on his face. He said calmly, You were right about one thing. Both Harvey and Mark looked at him. If I did the math correctly, I was indeed still swimming in my mother's womb when you took over the Zion family's business. Then, Jasper shrugged and walked over to Harvey from the couch. He still had a calm smile on his face. However, now that I'm out of my mom's womb, I'm in such a high position that you wouldn't be able to see it even if you incline your head and stand on your tiptoes. Meanwhile, you're still rolling around in your business that's worth a measly billions of dollars. Jasper's words stung Harvey as much as if he had been slapped. It felt as if a layer of his flesh had been scraped off his face. Just then, the ear-piercing sound of a phone ringing echoed. It was Steve's phone. He felt terrified beyond measure as he answered the call. His father roared furiously on the other end of the line. Where are you? Hurry back. All our suppliers are demanding payment right now. And you're still loitering? Get your ass back right now. Steve's lips trembled as he said, nearly on the verge of tears, Dad, we're done for. We're all done for. The furious man was stunned for a moment before he said through heavy breaths, What do you mean? Steve lay paralyzed on the floor, his eyes vacant as he stared at Jasper and said, It's not just us. The Zion family is done for as well. As if it had been a signal, Harvey's phone rang as well. Harvey answered the phone with great difficulty. His brother, whom he had posted at Ambition Corporation as a spy, was on the other end of the line. Brother, they know who I am. Xavier Johnson's men are on the hunt for me now. Brother, what should I do? I just went home, and the entire family is in chaos. All our partners want to dissolute their contracts with us. What's going on? Amidst the chaos, Harvey lost the strength in his arms. As his phone fell to the ground, he could still hear his brother's desperate voice. Harvey shuddered and stared at Jasper with wide eyes. Who the F asterisk CK are you? Jasper Lane. J for Julius, L for Lord. Jasper relayed this coolly to Harvey before he placed his hands behind his back and left the room. Julian was right behind Jasper. He did not give the room a second glance as he walked after Jasper. Mark was as white as a sheet as he stared at Harvey who had a hideous expression on his face. He asked nervously, Dad, what should we do? Harvey's face turned a bright shade of red as he curled his hands into fists and roared like a wounded animal. What should we do? How am I supposed to know that? Harvey glared at Mark before he raised a hand to give Mark a resounding slap across the face. I asked you to come to apologize. Is this how you apologize? Huh. As Harvey bellowed, his vision went black and he nearly collapsed onto the ground. In the end, he gritted his teeth and said, The Zion family will preserve whatever power it can. As for the rest, we'll talk about them in the future. Jasper had gotten himself another room to work in so that he would not interrupt Wendy's sleep. When Jasper returned with Julian, he found Wendy curled up lazily on the couch and watching television. Done? Wendy asked. Yes. Jasper nodded and asked gently, Aren't you going to bed yet? I was waiting for you, Wendy answered in a matter-of-fact tone. Laughing softly, Jasper said, It was a success. We should be able to move the project forward tomorrow. How are you planning to get rid of the Zion family? Wendy asked curiously. Jasper thought for a moment. The Zion family owned several businesses, but only the shipyard was worth something. He did not have his eyes set on anything else either. I'll have Mr. Lambert deal with it tomorrow, Jasper answered. Wendy nodded and looked at Julian who was standing wordlessly at the door. She called out to him, 
You're Julian, right? Julian, who rarely talked to strangers, let alone beautiful women like Wendy, was startled. He nodded. His expression was one of surprise and bewilderment. Wendy giggled, her liking toward the large, down-to-earth guy increasing. You can be Jast's bodyguard. Your monthly salary will start at 30000 with a bonus at the end of the year. Your basic salary is 30% of your annual salary. We'll sponsor two trips per year to any location you like, and you can bring your family along. As for the workload itself, it'll be harder for you at first since you'll be alone, but I'll continue adding members to JASP's team of bodyguards, and you'll act as the leader. Your workload will decrease once you have subordinates. This was what Wendy had been thinking about before. Now that Jasper's status in society was elevating, he needed to start paying attention to his safety, especially after what had happened tonight. Who knew what would have happened if they had been more vicious? Thus, Wendy wanted Julian to stay. To her, Julian seemed much more reliable and better at combat than her dad's bodyguards. Not only was Julian stunned at what Wendy had said, but even Jasper was also on the verge of laughter. He had once told Wendy that he would like Julian to stay and work as his bodyguard, but he had not expected Wendy to be this many steps ahead of him. Even so, Jasper was quite touched. He could tell that Wendy was undoubtedly serious about this matter. She would not have made this decision on her own unless she was convinced it would benefit Jasper. But, Julian said hesitantly, to be honest, he had no reason to reject an offer with such great benefits. Moreover, Julian was broke and wanted to find a rich family that he could rely on to earn a living. However, he could not leave now. Wendy guessed the reason for his hesitation. Is this because of your sister? I'll go visit your sister tomorrow. Don't worry about her bone marrow transplant surgery. We'll do our best to scour the entire country to find someone who's a match. We'll search the entire globe if needed. And we'll pay for all the treatment as well. Wendy laughed gently as she asked another question. What level of education does your sister have? Julian's eyes lit up as he hurriedly answered, She's a university student. I can arrange for your sister to work in our company when she has fully recovered. That way, you won't have anything to worry about. Julian was extremely excited, but he still glanced instinctively at Jasper. Jasper laughed as he said, Why are you looking at me? She's in charge here. Julian immediately nodded and said, You have such high expectations of me. I'll do my best to protect Mr. Lane. Wendy smiled and said, All right, that's that then. The next day, Brat County found itself in chaos. Suppliers arrived at Future Industries, demanding payment, whilst banks refused to sign them a loan. Moreover, they had even demanded that Future Industries repay all their loans immediately. Future Industries' financial support chain was on the verge of collapse. Just when things could not get even worse, Ambition Corporation put out the word that the Quare brothers from Future Industries were laundering money from Ambition Corporation. Xavier claimed that he was going to kill the Quare brothers. Future Industries collapsed in an instant. As for the Zion family, as one of the most famous families in Brack County, their shipyard piqued the attention of many when Harbor City ripped apart their contract. Then, the various businesses they owned got exterminated. They suffered an industry-wide closure. Anyone who had any sort of relation to the Zion family immediately abandoned them to save themselves. It was as if a large invisible hand had crushed everything the Zion family had built in Brack County over the years. The members of the Zion family sat in Harvey's house, sobbing hysterically. Now that the family business was done for, members of the Zion family began stabbing each other in the back. They were hoping to take whatever remaining benefits there were for themselves. Harvey sat at the head of the table. He seemed to have gone gray overnight. He smoked cigarette after cigarette, the ashes piling next to his feet like a tiny mountain. As for the other members of the Zion family, they were arguing over how the money should be divided. They were all preoccupied with securing themselves the best deal. Just then, a group of people showed up at the front door. Good day, Mr. Zion. I'm Mr. Lambert from JW Real Estate. Mr. Lambert smiled as he handed Harvey his name card. He felt ecstatic when he saw the chaos the Zion family was in. Just a few days ago, he had been at the disposal of the Zion family. Anyone in that family could humiliate him. However, the Zion family was done for now. He felt jubilant as he arrived with the task at hand. Mr. Lambert was ecstatic. However, 
He also had massive respect for Jasper who managed to pull all this off quietly. That man was horrifying. Harvey glared at Mr. Lambert as he said coolly, What are you doing here? Mr. Lambert smiled condescendingly at Harvey. He never had the right to do this before, but things were different now. The ecstatic Mr. Lambert said haughtily, Mr. Lane sent me over to strike a deal with you, Mr. Zion. Huh? Harvey snorted. What does that asterisk show want to talk about? Does he think that he hasn't caused the Zion family enough harm? Tsk, TSK, TSK. Mr. Lambert shook his head and said condescendingly, Mr. Zion, that's where you're mistaken. Mr. Lane can't bear to watch the Zion family beg on the streets, which is why he has decided to give you another chance. Mr. Lane says that he's willing to pay $50 million to buy the Zion family's shipbuilding company. When Harvey heard that, fury consumed him as he stood and roared, Bullsh asterisk T. My shipyard is worth at least $1.3 billion. Does Jasper Lane think he can get it for just $50 million? Mr. Lambert calmly wiped Harvey's spit off his face and said, do you think anyone will want to buy your shipyard now? Do you think there's a soul out there who doesn't know that this shipyard has been blacklisted by Harbor City? Moreover, who dares offend Mr. Lane? The three questions stunned the entire Zion family into silence. Mr. Lambert smiled as he procured a check. Gazing at the Zion family, he said, $50 million. It's your last chance. If you refuse to sell, it'll stay there and rot. The rest of the Zion family stared at each other, their hearts thumping. How much was the Zion family's shipyard worth? The 800-ton gantry cranes they had imported from Germany were worth 400 million themselves. There were also the most advanced computer numerical control machines of the day, each of which had a starting price of 100 million. The members of the Zion family understood that even if the machines were dismantled and sold as scrap metal, they would be worth way more than 50 million which was why Jasper's offer of 50 million infuriated them. Yet, did they have a choice? No. The Zion family was in shambles both on the inside and on the outside. When they left the house, they were confronted with people demanding the Zion family to pay off their debts. When they returned home, every person in the family was calculating how they could get the greatest amount of money. Most importantly, they understood one thing. No one besides Jasper Lane would dare buy their shipyard. It did not matter if there were great benefits or profits if you were not alive to spend them. Jasper understood that, which was why he had let Mr. Lambert drop by with a check for 50 million. If it were any less, there would not be enough money to divide between the family members. They would not take the bait. Jasper wanted to claim the shipyard without causing any casualties. If the Zion family decided to take the risk and not accept the offer, it would not fit Jasper's consistent approach to maximizing benefits. This amount of money was just enough to make the Zion family stop and think. It would hurt them if they agreed. However, it would hurt them even more if they refused. Eldest brother, I think we should sell it. Harvey's younger brother, Herman Zion, was the first one to speak. The minute he spoke, his other relatives turned to glare at him. The expression on Harvey's face faltered before he yelled, Are you stupid or crazy? We inherited this shipyard from Old Master Zion. It's our family business and it's worth well over a billion dollars. How could you agree to sell it for 50 million? When Harvey finished yelling, he looked at his other relatives but realized that they did not look angered. Rather, they had sly expressions on their faces. Harvey's heart sank as he got a bad feeling. Eldest brother, I think second brother has a point. Another woman spoke. Harvey glared at her his eyes resembling those of an angered tiger. The woman avoided his gaze but continued saying stubbornly, look at the situation we're in now. There's no way the Zion family is going to survive any longer in Brack County. To hell with a family business. You might have earned a lot over the years, but we only got a small portion of that money. We have our families and kids to feed. A murmur of agreement rang out as the woman spoke. That's right. Eldest brother, you should sell it. What's the point in staying stubborn? You can even get 50 million if you agree to sell it to Mr. Lane. Do you think anyone else in Brack County will dare buy our shipyard? The more Harvey listened to them, the angrier he became. He roared, If no one in Brack County wants it, I'll go to Green City and Fortune County. As long as there's a sea, there will be a shipyard. Does Jasper Lane think he can dominate the world? Dad, Mark said weakly, 
People are demanding we return our debt. They're surrounding the outside now. There's no way you can get out. They won't give us time to raise the money. The furious expression on Harvey's face melted away as his face turned ashen. Mr. Lambert dusted his shirt as he looked at the expressions on the members of the Zion family. His respect for Jasper grew by another notch. How terrifying. Mr. Lane's calculations when it came to dealing with humans were terrifying. Jasper got him to arrive at this time because he knew that the entire Zion family would either be arguing over the money or discussing strategies. Harvey might be the head of the family, but who would be thinking for the family when they could not even protect themselves during a crisis like this? Every member of the family had a share in the shipyard. Now is the time to make off with as much money as possible. With this interjection, Harvey would not be able to stop his family member's greed no matter how insistent he was. Mr. Lane also instructed me to only give you 20 minutes to think about it. It's been 15 minutes. I'll leave if you aren't going to agree, Mr. Lambert spoke pompously. That caused members of the Zion family to have an even uglier expression on their faces. I'll sell. Herman gritted his teeth as he stood and said, I own 20% of the shipyard shares. The rest of the Zion family could not sit still after hearing what Herman said. I'll sell too. I own 13%. I have 17%. I'll sell too. A lively discussion took place. Soon, Harvey was the only one who had not spoken yet. Mark's face was pale as he tugged on Harvey's shirt and said chokingly, Dad, why don't we sell it? We can go abroad and start again. Harvey heaved a long sigh. He seemed to have aged at least 10 years as he said listlessly, I'll sell. I'll sell it all. Mr. Lambert smiled in satisfaction. As members of the Zion family looked on impatiently, he retrieved a contract that had been prepared earlier from his briefcase and said, If that's the case, I'll need everyone's signatures. The contract will come into effect once everyone has signed their names. Your family will then own an additional $50 million. No one hesitated when they saw the check in Mr. Lambert's hands and surged forth to sign their names. When Harvey finally managed to sign his name, Mr. Lambert took the contract and placed the $50 million check on the coffee table. He smiled as he said, It's been a pleasure doing business with you. I hope we never meet again. Then, Mr. Lambert roared with laughter as he turned to leave. As he shut the door, he could hear the sound of Harvey roaring in both anger and indignance. He sounded like a wounded beast. How dare you fight against Mr. Lane with such capabilities? Mr. Lambert smiled coolly as he got into the car and drove off. Brack County was a cryptic place. As the Zion family faced disaster, Jasper and Wendy were at Brack County General Hospital. Don't worry. I'll have you sent over to the province where you'll receive treatment from the most elite medical team. Moreover, we'll stick to our promise of helping you find a match for your bone marrow transplant surgery. Wendy spoke gently to Kathy. Kathy had an embarrassed, bewildered expression on her face. She could not stop glancing at her younger brother, Julian. Even though Julian had already introduced her to both Jasper and Wendy, she still felt dubious. She could not believe that such fortune would befall her. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kathy said sincerely. As the two women spoke, Jasper gave Julian a look. The two walked out of the ward. We'll return to the province this afternoon. I'll arrange for the hospital to prepare an ambulance that will follow us all the way so that your sister can receive the best treatment in the province, Jasper said. Julian had a solemn expression on his face. Suddenly, he knelt and said, Thank you, Mr. Lane. That action caused everyone nearby to sneak glances at them as they wondered what was going on. Jasper hurriedly grabbed Julian's arm and pulled him to his feet as he said, I gave you a job where you can work without any additional worries because I need you as my loyal protector. It's a fair trade. Go easy on your knees. Good men kneel only to their parents and God. No one else, not even the king, is worth you kneeling to. Julian said solemnly, Mr. Lane, I owe you my life. Jasper chuckled at Julian's words. He patted Julian's shoulder and laughed softly. I don't need you to give me your life. You just have to stay by my side and work hard. I won't mistreat you, he said. Julian nodded slowly. He had previously come here to destroy Jasper. Although Jasper had given him two million dollars, he had also kept to his words and chosen not to take revenge on him. Despite this, Julian knew that Jasper absolutely dared to do so. 
Julian had watched how Jasper defeated Mark Zion and Steve Quayright before his very eyes. He knew that if Jasper intended to seek vengeance against him, that he would easily be vanquished despite his abilities. He could escape, but what about his sister? Nevertheless, not only did Jasper choose not to take revenge on him, but he also treated him well and employed him as his personal bodyguard. Julian viewed Jasper as his saving grace due to the kindness he had bestowed upon him. Thus, he decided to stay by Jasper's side loyally and continue protecting him in the future. Anyone who wants to bring harm to Mr. Lane will have to do so over my dead body, Julian said solemnly. At that moment, Jasper was holding hands with Wendy as they left the ward and headed downstairs. Thus, he did not hear Julian's words. With their financial power, Kathy's transfer procedure went smoothly. The procedure was completed within half an hour. While waiting for the operation to be completed, Jasper met up with Mr. Lambert. Mr. Lane, take a look. This is the contract for the shipyard. It has already been signed, Mr. Lambert said. He took out the contract and held it before Jasper with both hands. Jasper took the contract and flipped through it. I will arrange for someone to take over later. In the meantime, find a few reliable men to look after the shipyard, he ordered. The shipyard was equipped with top-notch facilities. The raw materials stored there were extremely valuable as well. If nobody looked after the place, the materials may be stolen by greedy people. It would be unwise to underestimate these people. There was once a gang of seven to eight thieves that stole a batch of steel worth tens of millions in three days. Their skills were comparable to that of a professional transport and demolitions team. Mr. Lambert patted his chest and said, Don't worry, Mr. Lane. With me there, nobody will be allowed into the shipyard. Has the project commenced? Jasper asked. Mr. Lambert chuckled. It started this morning. Without the Zions causing trouble, those few stubborn jerks signed the agreement at once and moved away. The project is progressing very smoothly right now, he replied. Jasper nodded. The resettlement compensation provided to normal households that have been demolished must be in strict accordance with the regulations. Meanwhile, welfare protection must be in. Place for the migrant workers. Wage arrears are absolutely prohibited, he added. These rules are to be stated in black and white, and nobody is allowed to breach them. If anyone causes trouble due to non-compliance, I'll fire them immediately. Is this understood? Mr. Lambert had a solemn expression on his face. Understood, Mr. Lane, he replied at once. Jasper nodded. In that case, you can continue with your tasks. If anything comes up, get in contact with the provincial headquarters. I can't watch the project in Brack County every day, he said. In short, you will have indispensable benefits if you do well. An executive like you can get dividends from the project's profits, so you'll be rewarded with at least a few hundred thousand dollars. However, if you don't do well, whoever is in charge will have to take responsibility. As the manager, there's no way you can escape from the brunt of the punishment. I understand, Mr. Lane. I'll get going then, Mr. Lambert replied courteously. Waving Mr. Lambert off, Jasper accompanied Wendy into the car. An ambulance followed them which Julian and his sister were seated in. They all headed back to the province together. It was already late into the evening when they arrived at the province. Jasper originally planned to let Julian send Kathy to the hospital and settle down before coming to work on the next day. However, Julian came back immediately after sending Kathy to the hospital and ensuring that everything was all right. Jasper did not send him away either. Back at the Schuler's household, Dawson had already arranged for their meals to be prepared while he waited for them. You handled the incident at Brack County pretty well, Dawson told Jasper with a smile. Jasper chuckled in response. It's all thanks to your support, Uncle Schuler. Your phone call alone managed to crush almost half the Zions, he said. Shaking his head, Dawson replied, The Zions' most important assets are in that shipyard. When those people saw that the Zions' shipyard had been destroyed, they began outsmarting each other. It was brought about by a collective effort, my phone call only fueling the fire and sped up the process. Right, I heard that you've taken over the Zion shipyard? Dawson asked curiously. Jasper nodded and said, that shipyard is a premium asset. I am close to the people in charge in Harbor City. If the shipyard operates well, it can bring in a large sum of profits in one year. Even if I don't have the time to manage it, 
I can sell it for more than a billion dollars. A business like that is a no-brainer. I have a friend that's involved in shipbuilding. I've heard that he is currently on the lookout for opportunities to expand his production capacity and is out and about looking for equipment. If you don't intend to operate the shipyard on your own, why don't I help you inquire to see if it can be sold off? Dawson suggested. Jasper's eyes shone in interest. Sure, my main focus is still investing in the internet, real estate, and entertainment industries. Shipbuilding involves high amounts of professional talent, and I don't have the ability to manage the shipyard either. If he proposes a suitable price, I'll sell it to him, he said. Nodding in response, Dawson said, All right, let's eat first. I'll help you inquire about it soon. If he's interested, I'll ask him to come to the province for a meeting with you. After having their meal, Dawson was surprised by Julian's arrival. Wendy explained everything to Dawson, who suggested that Julian should train with his personal bodyguards. Julian wanted to prove himself as well. Hence, he immediately agreed to it after seeing Jasper nod his head. Alas, Jasper's gamble in him was soon shown to have paid off. Julian went against five of Dawson's personal bodyguards alone. Not only did he win, but he also defeated them impactfully. Dawson looked upon Julian in admiration. His bodyguards consisted of highly skilled men that he had recruited via reliable sources. They were either ex-special forces or martial arts specialists. Therefore, they were all highly capable men. Let Julian come over to train my bodyguards when he's free, Dawson proposed. Sure, Jasper said with a smile. Julian, I'll leave this to you, he added. Julian grinned widely. No problem, he said. The moon shone in the clear night sky, which was speckled with stars. Jasper was lounging on the balcony of the room on the second floor while reading a book leisurely. Suddenly, his phone rang. The call was from Hudson Moore. Hudson's angry voice rang out from the other end of the call when he picked up the phone. Mr. Lane, Senna has gone overboard. They hired hackers to attack our server. We're in big trouble now. What happened? Jasper asked in a heavy tone, a frown forming on his face. He put down his book at once. Two hours ago, our users suddenly discovered that their connection was severed over a large area. The server was severely jammed and the portal website completely collapsed. We have confirmed that it was an attack launched by hackers. While listening to Hudson's account of the incident, Jasper walked into the study, turned on the computer, and logged into KK. Like Hudson had described, he could not go online despite having logged in for more than 10 seconds. Not long after, a notification stating that there was a server connection failure appeared. After that, Jasper clicked on TerraZone's portal website. Similarly, the original web page, which was rich in content, had become blank and was now completely devoid of words or pictures. Users are scolding us on discussion forums everywhere. What should we do, Mr. Lane? Hudson asked bitterly. Netizens were still relatively simple-minded back in the year 2000. The battles between internet companies were also not as competitive as they would be in the future. However, due to these exact reasons, the opinions and comments published online reflected the most authentic user experiences. Hudson and the others frequently compiled user reviews from discussion forums because of this. Unfortunately, they were all scolding Terry Zone right now. KK kept disconnecting when they wanted to use the software to chat online. They could not log in and the webpage was completely blank as well. Who were the users to blame if not the? Jasper pondered upon it for a while. What about Zane and the others? he asked. They've gone to the machinery room to carry out emergency maintenance, Hudson said. Maintain the server first, then solve the problem of user disconnection as soon as possible. You guys are the top programming professionals in the country. You should be familiar with the groups of hackers within the country, right? Jasper asked. Zane was once the backbone of the Scarlet Union. However, he quit the group. Nevertheless, a lot of people within the hacking industry know him. Without him here, we might be in a worse situation right now, Hudson replied. In that case, use your connections to get in touch with the relevant people and ask them to help you deal with the attack. We must at least try to resist the attack no matter what. Purchase all the firewalls you need for the machinery room. Don't be afraid of spending money at times like this. Next, issue an announcement to notify users that the server has been hacked and let them know that we promise to resolve it as soon as possible. 
we must first calm down the users, so write it with a sincere attitude. Should I tell everyone that Senna was the one who launched the attack? Hudson asked, gritting his teeth in anger. Jasper laughed. Hud, have you lost it due to your anger? Do you have any evidence that Senna launched this hacker attack on us? He asked. No, Hudson said in exasperation. Exactly. Senna may be waiting for Terry Zone to mess up. Once you blame Senna for the attack, they will follow up with another step, which will bring much worse consequences. In any case, our first priority is to stabilize the server and shield ourselves against the attack. At the same time, we will have to appease the users. These two things must be carried out concurrently to resolve our problems. We'll talk about how to get back at them after I arrive at Cavern City, Jasper said. All right, I'll wait for you in the office tomorrow then. The next day, Wendy sent Jasper to the airport. Julian followed them as well. Take good care of yourself. Remember not to overwork yourself, Wendy reminded Jasper gently as she helped him straighten his collar. Jasper stared at the beautiful woman before him and chuckled. I realize that you've been acting more and more like a devoted wife and loving mother lately, he said. Wendy glared at Jasper and huffed out. Devoted wife and loving mother? You make it seem as if I'm gray and old. You aren't old at all. You'll forever be a goddess in my eyes, Jasper teased Wendy as he reached out to pinch the bridge of her nose. Ah, you're so annoying, Wendy remarked, pursing her lips into a smile as she flicked Jasper's hand off her. Go ahead and build your empire. I'll protect you from behind, she said. Nodding, Jasper squeezed Wendy's hands and said, Wait for me. I'll build a huge empire and gift it to you as dowry. Wendy blushed and pulled her hands away immediately. She turned over in embarrassment. What a load of nonsense. Who wants your dowry? I'm not going to bother you anymore. I'm leaving, she said in a flustered, low voice. Wendy then turned around and ran away. Jasper chuckled at the sight of Wendy running away. He greeted Julian, turned around, and walked toward customs. Jasp! Wendy's voice suddenly rang out from behind him. Jasper turned around and was met with the sight of a graceful belle standing in the middle of the crowd. She stared at him affectionately, her gaze reminiscent of brilliant stars shining in the night sky. I'll wait for you to come back. Resisting the urge to turn around and hug her, Jasper nodded earnestly. He then turned around and walked toward the customs. On the plane, Jasper took a light nap. As Jasper's personal bodyguard, Julian sat right beside him. Mr. Lane, you have such a loving relationship with Miss Schuler, Julian said. Jasper opened his eyes and glanced at Julian. He chuckled. You're not that young anymore. Should I ask her to introduce a girl to you? Julian shook his head solemnly. Work is my priority, he replied. True. Since we are men, how can we start a family without first having a stable career? Work hard by my side for the next two years. After that, I'll arrange something for you, Jasper said. Julian smiled, but he did not put much thought into his words. In his mind, protecting Jasper was his topmost priority. Everything else was secondary. Two hours later, the plane landed at Cavern City International Airport. Jack Tanner came to pick them up from the airport. Mr. Lane, you're finally here, Jack said after stepping forward. Jasper could tell that he had spent an all-nighter working with Hudson and the others from his pale and tired complexion. Work is important, but you need to rest as well, he said. Jack laughed and said, I can't help much in terms of technical skills, but it's my responsibility to manage and reassure all the employees. Let's talk in the car. Jasper led the way as they walked out of the airport. After they got into the car, Jasper realized that Jack kept staring at Julian. He's my personal bodyguard, he explained. Jack gasped in realization. He was not surprised. Considering Jasper's net worth and social status, he should have employed a personal bodyguard a long time ago. How's everything at the company right now? Jasper asked. The competition between both parties lasted till four in the morning. Although it was extremely tough, we managed to protect our server. However, we took a huge loss this time round. The firewalls we purchased and the server upgrades in the machinery room alone cost millions, Jack replied. Nonetheless, the good news is that both the portal webpage and KK have been restored. This incident impacted us greatly. KK has been disconnected for nearly 13 hours, 
and the users are still not reassured about the situation. Jasper's expression brightened a little after listening to what he said. He then nodded and said, since losses are inevitable, all we can do for now is try our best to minimize it. Soon after, the car arrived at the two-story commercial building that Terry Zone had just moved into. Upon entering the building, Jasper was met by the sight of dozens of employees working busily at their respective desks. Terry Zone had recruited all of these employees later on, so Jasper did not know any of them. Everyone was loaded with work right now due to the incident. Despite this, the atmosphere was lively as there were frequent exchanges of conversation and movement between desks. Jasper was impressed with the vibrant work atmosphere at Terry Zone. Jack, it seems that you're managing the company pretty well, Jasper joked. I just proposed a general structure. I can't deny that the founders of Terry Zone are all extremely talented. Most of the results should be credited to them, Jack said in a humble manner. Jasper nodded and told him, You'll have to return to JW Capital in the future. I allocated you here just to assist these startup rookies so that they can familiarize themselves with the management methods of a contemporary company as soon as possible. It seems that everything is progressing well. After that, Jasper opened the door of the meeting room and walked in. Zane and the others were all fast asleep in the meeting room. Logan, in particular, was snoring loudly as he slept. This seemingly unorganized and unrefined team would be known as the core of Terry Zone Incorporated, a world renowned company in the future. All of it would be made possible because of them. Thinking about this, Jasper reminisced upon the fact that regardless of in the past or the present, their success was definitely meant to be. Everyone pulled an all-nighter yesterday, and they fell asleep not too long ago, Hudson said in a hushed tone after making his way toward Jasper. Let them rest. Let's talk in your office. After speaking, Jasper walked out of the meeting room with Hudson, Jack, and Cameron who were all wide awake, following behind him. Although Hudson had the highest-ranking company position in Terry Zone, he had the simplest office. His office consisted of a small space separated by wooden boards. There was only a desk, a computer, a bookcase, and a few sofas in the room. Other than that, it was barren. It's a simple room. After all, the company has a lot of expenses right now, Hudson said, sounding slightly embarrassed. He poured a cup of water for Jasper. Jasper chuckled. That's why I was willing to invest in the lot of you. From your stingy demeanor, I can tell that your future will definitely be bright, he said. Hudson nodded. He was glad that Jasper approved of his mindset. Although we have persevered through this incident, it was mainly because Senna stopped the attack halfway through. Otherwise, we may not have been able to recover our system even now. There was an overcast expression on Hudson's face. Although he had not slept in more than 30 hours, he did not feel even a hint of fatigue. He was overcome with rage and aggravation. We're still too weak. We had close to zero resistance against Senna's treacherous means of attack. How are our losses? Jasper asked. Hudson's expression darkened. We lost more than a million dollars in terms of funds. However, the loss in user count is way more significant. There has been a decline of one third of portal visits he exclaimed. Jasper nodded. The main priority of internet companies was their user count. A decline in users was way more terrifying than a loss in cash. That be asterisk star Dane Warren is being too harsh. Cameron Scott huffed in anger. Senna is now vying against Terry Zone, so they must still have plans for us. Jasper said after a momentary pause. Worry filled the others' faces after registering what Jasper said. To be honest, in terms of technical aspects, I don't know as much as you guys do, Jasper said, shrugging his shoulders in exasperation. However, I'm pretty skilled in fighting a business war, Jasper added with a chuckle. Leave this matter to me. I can deal with Senna, he said. Hudson's gaze lit up almost immediately. Just as he was about to say something, his phone rang. After exchanging a few words on the phone, Hudson hung up on the call excitedly. Mr. Lane, our savior is here. If it wasn't for his help last night, we wouldn't have been able to withstand the attack, he told Jasper. Does such a talented person exist? What's his name? Jasper asked in surprise. Theo Wright. Jasper slowly raised his brow after hearing this name. This name belonged to a legendary man. He was the creme de la creme of hackers within the country. 
He was a godfather-level figure. He was the founder of the Hawk Alliance, one of the top hacker organizations. Under the leadership of this godly figure, the Hawk Alliance would raise their national prestige through their groundbreaking performance in several global hacker battles in the few upcoming years. In several global hacker wars a few years later, the master of the Eagle Alliance led by this great god can be said to have beaten the competition severely. This man was also the only person publicly known to have hacked into the United States military database. Jasper did not expect Hudson to be well acquainted with him. Jasper met Theo Wright in the meeting room. He assumed that a hacker god like him must be someone who was cold and daunting. Nevertheless, Jasper found it nearly impossible to associate the short, plump young man with middle, parted hair that was standing right before him with the most powerful man in the online world, the godfather of hacking. Theo, let me start with the introductions. This is the actual head of our company, Mr. Jasper Lane. This is Mr. Jack Tanner. Hudson introduced Theo to everyone passionately. Theo looked at Jack and smiled. I know you. You used to be a high-level executive at Worsoft, he said. After the both of them shook hands, Theo turned over to look at Jasper. Jasper grinned and extended his hand. You're the number one hacker in the country. I've admired you for a long time, he said. Theo was actually rather nervous. He was not accustomed to interacting with strangers in real life. Jasper's confident demeanor, which radiated from his actions and behavior, made him feel particularly uneasy. Nice to meet you. I don't dare to claim the title of being the top hacker in the country. Hacking technology consists of extremely profound knowledge. No one would dare to say that they are the best of the best. I'm still learning. Theo's words made everyone burst out into laughter. A successful person must stand out in one way or another. This applied to any field out there. Take Theo as an example, who had an extremely normal appearance. He looked like any other average young man out there and was not particularly good at socializing with strangers. However, his reverence toward technology was enough to prove that he did indeed have the potential and ability to be the top hacker in the country. Hudson and Jasper exchanged a glance. Theo, I have previously told you that we would like you to join our company. You would be in charge of all aspects of network security. What do you think about that? Hudson asked. Theo chuckled in response. He said, Hudson, you know very well that people like us are used to having all the freedom we want. I don't have the intention of joining a company, so? Jasper laughed. You're extremely capable. Do you want to remain as a hacker for your entire life? He asked. Theo raised his head to look at Jasper. A look of distaste flashed across his face. Jasper's choice of words made it seem like he was looking down upon hackers. Jasper did not pay any heed to the expression on Theo's face. He continued speaking. You must know that as laws and regulations gradually improve, even the most highly skilled hackers will start to experience growing restrictions on the internet. It will be impossible for you to continue doing as you wish in such an unscrupulous manner. However, everything will be different if you join Terry Zone. With your skills, you can help Terry Zone build a protective firewall. During the process, you can also compete against hackers from everywhere around the world. The only thing that would be different is that you're doing everything for a good cause. Don't you want to rely on your skills to become someone respected and admired by those within the hacker industry? Theo's expression changed. Jasper's words had managed to speak to his heart. How do you find Terry Zone? Jasper asked, suddenly changing the topic. It's excellent, Theo replied. As one of the top hackers within the country, Theo had an even more precise and professional vision of the internet compared to everyone else. He knew that Terry Zone had great potential right now. KK, in particular, had attained massive control of the market. It was truly the top online chatting software in the country. TerraZone's team of founders consists of individuals who are capable of dominating different fields. However, they currently lack a master that's capable of handling cybersecurity issues. Join us. With you on the team, TerraZone will soar to greater heights. Theo laughed at Jasper's sincere words. Since you guys are inviting me so enthusiastically, I can't find any reason to reject this offer, he said. Jasper and Hudson looked at each other and burst out into laughter. However, I have a condition, Theo suddenly announced. You can tell us anything, Hudson said. I have two other friends. They're currently in poor financial conditions 
and are in urgent need of a job. I would like to bring them into the company so that we can work together. After all, it would be difficult for me if I was to work alone. You can rest assured of their skills. They're extremely competent, Theo said. Hudson chuckled. Since you've recommended them, I'm sure their skills are impeccable. You can ask them to come over. I'll have someone make the relevant arrangements so that you guys can start working as soon as possible, he said. Theo nodded. All right, it's a deal, he said excitedly. It's a deal. With that, Hudson and Theo shook hands enthusiastically. In the office building of the Terra Regional Branch of Colossal Investments located in Cavern City, Dane Warren, the chairman of Senna, and William, the president of the Terra Regional Branch of Colossal Investments, each signed their respective agreements. Dane laughed as both of them shook hands. William, I hope that Colossal Investments can help us achieve our plan of getting publicly listed as soon as possible, he said. William chuckled in return. Now that we've signed a contract, we're even more eager than you are to get Senna publicly listed. We can only cash in our investment and earn money after Senna gets listed, he said. Dane snickered and said, I am in urgent need of funds to acquire Terry Zone as well. During this period of time, I have been carrying out the relevant preparations required for the acquisition of Terry Zone. William shrugged. Warren, I don't actually understand why you're being so insistent on taking down Terry Zone. You need to know that Senna's public listing is our top priority right now, he said. Dane laughed. There's something you don't know. Senna's public listing is already set in stone. However, Senna is merely one of the four major internet portals right now. What would happen if I also acquired Terry Zone and managed to get my hands on the largest online chatting software in the domestic market? He explained. William's gaze perked up in interest when he heard this. There will definitely be a major spike in Senna's stock price, he said. Dane grinned in satisfaction. That's right. One of the reasons I intend to do so is to get back at Terry Zone for defeating Senna Chat with their platform, but this is a relatively minor point. My true goal is to acquire their company after defeating them, he said. You're indeed the best internet merchant in your country, Warren, William praised him. Chuckling, Dane replied, those few young men are still way too inexperienced and naive to found a startup company. They don't know anything about the harshness of the business world. It's only natural for them to experience such an outcome. William asked his secretary to open a bottle of champagne. Handing a flute of champagne to Dane, William raised his glass and made a toast. To your wealth and prosperity, he said. Dane and William clinked their glasses together. To our wealth and prosperity, they laughed while making a toast. Half an hour later, below the office building, Dane narrowed his eyes and looked at the magnificent office building. He snorted coldly, seeming extremely unhappy. Mr. Warren, you don't seem too happy. Isn't it a good thing that the contract has been signed? His secretary walked forward and asked him. Dane's expression darkened. These people are vampires. They want to acquire 25% of Senna's shares in exchange for helping us list the company on the Nasdaq. They're scoring a huge bargain. His secretary shrunk into himself. He did not dare to interrupt Dane when he was talking about important affairs. Mr. Warren, are we going back right now? He asked cautiously. Go back? Since we're already in Cavern City, we can't miss out on the opportunity to pay a visit to our former competitor, Dane said. His lips twisted into a cold sneer as he ordered, Let's head to Terry Zone. Everyone in Terry Zone received the news about Dane Warren's visit immediately. Hudson and Logan were sitting in the meeting room with troubled looks on their faces while Jasper stood by the side. Jasper looked at the solemn expressions on their faces and let out an inward laugh. It seemed as if they were preparing for a battle. Relax, guys. Dane Warren is just paying us a visit. Do you guys intend to beat him up once you see him? He asked. Zane and the others are still in the operations room. If they were here, they may really beat up Warren, Logan said in distaste. Hudson glared at Logan. Can the problem be resolved through fighting? We are businessmen now. We should focus on business alone. Everyone will treat us as a joke if we start a brawl, he said in annoyance. Logan scratched his head and huffed in anger. I simply can't get over it. How dare he greet us and tell us that he's coming over to get acquainted with us? Acquaintance, my asterisk is, why is he acting so courteously toward us? 
Don't we all know that he's the one who brought all this sage asterisk tea upon us? Those in the business world have their own way of solving problems. Being expressive of your emotions will only allow people see through you at a glance. As Hudson said, everyone here is an adult. Don't act in a childish manner, Jasper said in a calm and controlled tone. Logan nodded and fell quiet after hearing what Jasper said. Not long after, the door to the meeting room opened and Dane Warren walked in with his secretary following closely behind. No matter how unhappy Hudson was, Dane Warren was still paying a visit to his company as the chairman of Cinna. As the host, he had to accommodate him out of common courtesy. Therefore, Hudson stood up and plastered a smile onto his face. He then walked toward Dane Warren. You took time out of your busy schedule to visit us, Mr. Warren. It's a huge honor, Hudson remarked politely in a relatively neutral tone. Dane burst out into laughter. He had a booming voice and hearty laughter. One who did not understand him would have thought that he was a bold and simple-minded man. However, under the facade of his honest and straightforward persona, he was a vicious man with an extremely cruel heart. You're being way too courteous, Mr. Moore. I had to attend a public meeting surrounding the internet industry in Cavern City. So I stopped by your office to look around, Dane said as he clasped Hudson's hand in a tight grip. Right. Didn't you get invited to the meeting, Mr. Moore? Dane asked while feigning doubt and uncertainty. Hudson's face stiffened. He drew back his hand and said matter-of-factly, There has been a lot of company affairs lately. You should understand, Mr. Warren. That's why I wasn't free. Dane could not help but sneer in his heart upon noticing the somber gaze in Hudson's eyes. Alas, these young people were way too inexperienced. They could hardly hold it in after receiving a few taunts. Scanning through the crowd, Dane side-eyed Logan before finally setting his eyes on Jasper. And this is? Jasper stood up lightheartedly. With a calm demeanor, he gently extended his hand. I'm Jasper Lane, the president of JW Capital, he said. J.W. Capital. Dane's heart lurched. He glanced at Jasper in amusement. If he wanted to acquire Terrazone, J.W. Capital, who owned more than half of Terrazone's stocks, would be an inevitable hurdle. Mr. Lane, I've heard all about you. Dane said as he extended his hand toward Jasper. A smile that did not reach his eyes formed across his lips. Jasper shook his hand and chuckled. You have an extremely well-known reputation, Mr. Warren. Juniors like us have a lot that we can learn from you, he said. Dane laughed at his choice of words, which reflected the bare minimum of politeness. Despite this, he did not mind at all. From his perspective, Terry Zone had already lost. Losers would inevitably hold some grievances after the battle. Their insinuating words were more like a compliment to him. Only winners deserve to accept a loser's derision and mockery, was it not? Dane took a seat on the chair in a calm and collected manner. I heard that Terry Zone faced quite a number of difficulties over these two days, he said cheerily. Logan clenched his hands into fists upon hearing what he said. He could hardly stop himself from aiming a blow straight at Dane's head. Everyone already knew that the problems faced by Terry Zone were caused by Dane himself. Nonetheless, he still came over to feign compassion and gloat about it in front of them. Without paying any heed to Logan's fuming gaze, Dane continued speaking. You guys are still young. You have no idea how ruthless the business sector can be. Operating a business isn't an easy feat as your senior. I would like to give you guys a reminder. It's important to quit while you're ahead, he said. Hudson sat down and stared at Dane impassively. Mr. Warren, if you have anything you want to tell us, just say it to us directly. Young people like us don't have much experience and I'm afraid we don't quite understand what you're trying to imply, he said. Dane chortled gleefully. In that case, I'll just say it directly. Dane then beckoned his secretary over. His secretary immediately took out a document from his briefcase. Dane waved the document in front of them and announced, Since Terry Zone is facing so many hardships, I'm here today to lend a helping hand. Senna would like to acquire Terry Zone. After hearing what he said, Logan could not contain himself anymore. What bullsh asterisk T are you going on about? Warren, you were the one who stirred up all these problems in the first place, and now you're saying that you want to acquire our company. What do you take us for? Let me tell you, there's no way that that'll happening. Dane sneered. Young man, first of all, 
I don't understand what you mean by stirring up problems. I have never done anything to Terry Zone. The hardships that you're facing are all due to your own incapability, he said. On the other hand, a wise man submits to his circumstances. Terry Zone is barely surviving right now. Is there still a need to continue struggling? Senna is giving you a way out by acquiring the company. Hudson glared at Dane. He was trying his best to control his fury. We reject your acquisition. If this is the only thing you're here for, please leave. We won't see you on your way out, he said stiffly. Dane's expression darkened. Appreciate my act of kindness while I'm still offering it graciously. How long can Terry Zone persist under such circumstances? He asked icily. As the leading portal among the four major portals, Senna has reached an agreement with Colossal Investments and is about to get listed. Once Senna becomes a public listed company, we will have a market value of at least several billion US dollars. Dane then narrowed his eyes at Hudson. He continued rambling on haughtily. What about Terry Zone? God knows when you guys will be able to get Terry Zone listed. If Senna wanted to crush you guys, it would be easier than stomping an ant to death. I'm giving you guys a chance right now, so you'd better appreciate my kindness. Once Senna gets listed, I won't bother to look your way even if you guys stand before me asking for help. After speaking, Dane looked at Hudson with a proud, overbearing gaze. He believed that anyone with a decent head on his shoulder would carefully consider what he had said. Mr. Warren. Jasper interjected abruptly. The calm tone attracted Dane's attention. You've been talking for a long time, but I'm curious. How much do you intend to acquire Terry Zone for? Dane chuckled in response to Jasper's question. You're a smart person, Mr. Lane. It's no wonder that you have such a precise vision and decided to invest in Terry Zone so early in advance, he said. Senna has prepared $20 million for a full acquisition of Terry Zone. After that, Dane threw the agreement on the table. He seemed pretty full of himself. It was the year 2000. How many millionaires were there in the country? $20 million was a monumental price for the acquisition of a company like Terry Zone. It meant that these few young men were about to become millionaires. Jasper had previously invested $10 million into Terry Zone in return for 51% of the company's stocks. This incident had largely boosted Terry Zone's reputation. This was no secret. Dane figured that Jasper could completely withdraw his investment within a few months. This deal was evidently a huge bargain. Twenty million is a large sum of money, Jasper said, letting out an inward laugh. Dane snickered. Young man, you need to understand the circumstances that Terry Zone is currently facing. If you continue operating the company like this, how long can Terry Zone survive? It may even go bankrupt tomorrow, he said contemptuously. When that day comes, your ten million dollars will vanish into thin air. However, you can still withdraw your full investment right now. Shouldn't you thank me for giving you this excellent opportunity? He asked. Jasper sighed. My apologies, Mr. Warren. I'm someone who doesn't act until I see the incentives. I'd rather lose everything than settle for a compromise, he said. It's just $10 million. I can afford to lose that much. Dane's expression darkened after hearing Jasper's words. Jasper Lane, how dare you turn a blind eye to my good intentions? I will gladly turn a blind eye to your good intentions. All of a sudden, Jasper stood up and placed both of his hands on the meeting table. He leaned forward and pinned a predatory gaze upon Dane. I'll address you by your name if I want to show my respect to you as a senior in the industry. However, if I look down upon you, you're nothing in my eyes, he articulated each of his words clearly. Quit acting almighty because of your experience in the industry. I don't care about those two measly steel bars of yours. How dare you come over to Terry Zone and appear before me to tell me that you want to acquire Terry Zone? Aren't you afraid of biting off more than you can chew? Bang! A loud slam resonated through the room. Incandescent with rage, Dane slammed his palm onto the surface of the meeting table. Jasper Lane, are you challenging me? He yelled. Jasper let out a soft laugh as he stood upright. You'll know very soon if I'm challenging you or not, he said indifferently. Logan, who was right beside Jasper, stared at him in awe. He retracted his gaze from Dane, who was consumed with rage, and turned to look at Jasper. His admiration for him instantly soared. Damn, 
He was standing up for the company like a real man. Dane looked at Hudson with an icy gaze. Hudson Moore, is this how you guys do things in Terry Zone? He asked in a low voice. Hudson shrugged nonchalantly and said, You'll have to excuse us. Mr. Lane is the controlling shareholder of Terry Zone. He will be the chairman of the board of directors once the board is established in the future. Therefore, his words represent the will of Terry Zone. Well, well, well. Very well. Dane was so infuriated that he insistently repeated the same words. He raised his hand and pointed at Jasper. You guys will eventually submit to us, even after rejecting my good intentions. He shouted angrily. Jasper arched his brow slightly. Will you be the one submitting to us, or will we be the one submitting to you? He questioned. Dane scoffed. Young man, don't think that you can act so recklessly just because you have some money. You're a lowly junior in the internet industry. How dare you challenge me? I've said everything that I've wanted to say today. I'm showing you guys a sign of respect by acquiring Terry Zone. However, since you guys refuse to be respected, you'll bear all the consequences on your own. This goes for you as well, Jasper Lane. All you have is an investment company. How great do you think you are? I'm sorry, but you're not worth sh asterisk t in front of Senna. Jasper narrowed his eyes at Dane. He then took up the document on the table and tore it into pieces. Pieces of paper billowed through the air. Mr. Warren, small transactions like this don't catch my eyes. Why don't I add another zero behind the 20 million? Shall I acquire Senna for $200 million? Dane cackled maniacally. Acquire Senna? Ha ha ha. You're being way too full of yourself. Why don't you look at yourself before talking big like this? What do you take Senna for? Senna is the largest website portal in the country. Do you think you can acquire it just because you want to? Mr. Warren, don't look down on the younger generation. Let's wait and see what happens. Jasper said in a frigid tone. An overcast expression formed on Dane's face. He looked like he wanted to devour them alive. Your sharp tongue is not something to be proud of. You guys are smiling happily now, but I'll make sure that you won't be able to cry even if you wanted to in a few days' time, Dane said. Mr. Warren, we still don't know for sure who'll be the one crying then. What goes around comes around. The time for you to cry will come on the day I show up before you to acquire Senna, Jasper said calmly. The expression on Dane's face morphed into one of all-consuming rage. He glared at Jasper and shouted, It seems that you'll only submit under force. Just wait and see. Dane stormed off angrily after saying this. After Dane left in a state of fury, Hudson looked at Jasper and smiled bitterly. What shall we do now, Mr. Lane? There's no rush. Let's just do what we need to do, Jasper said calmly. It's just Dane Warren. He can't raise hell upon us. Mr. Lane, what you said just now was so cool. Logan exclaimed in excitement while staring at Jasper. Jasper chuckled. Although Terry Zone is indeed below Senna right now, we shouldn't just take his insults since he took it this far. We must talk back and defend ourselves when we need to, he replied. Hudson nodded, seemingly lost in thought. Right then, Dane made his way out of Terry Zone with a dark expression on his face. He roared out in anger. There being way too much. How dare this bunch of shameless be asterisk stards treat me like that? Dane's secretary trembled in shock as he stared at him. The secretary stood by the side, not daring to utter a single word. Dane panted loudly. A venomous glint flashed across his eyes as he turned around to gaze at Terrazone's office building. He then pulled out his phone with a sneer on his face. The call went through soon after. It's me, Dane Warren. A courteous voice spoke on the other end of the phone. Mr. Warren, how can I help you? Launch a second attack on Terry Zone right now. Let them get a taste of despair through this attack. Do everything that you can. It'd be best if you could defeat them all in one go. Dane growled. How dare this bunch of jokers stand up against me? I'll teach them how to behave today. The person on the other end of the phone was evidently stupefied for a moment. However, there was no delay in his reply. All right, Mr. Warren. We will do exactly as you wish, he replied immediately. Hanging up the phone call, Dane grinned. He then bent down and got into the car. Back in Cavern City, Jasper, Hudson, and the others had just returned to the company after having their meals. Although Zane and the others had pulled an all-nighter, they were still young. 
Hence, they sprung back into action after getting a few hours of sleep. Hudson brought up the issue of their funds during the meeting. After moving to a new building and hiring so many employees in addition to the server bandwidth expenses, they had been spending hundreds of thousands on a daily basis. Furthermore, they had upgraded their server and bandwidth after the attack the night before. Another $1 million had been spent on that. Therefore, they had less than $10 million left right now. If you don't have sufficient funds, I can invest a bit more. We need to go up against Senna right now, Jasper said. The meeting room fell pin drop silent after he spoke. Jack spoke up as well. I've got a grasp of Dane Warren's personality back when I was working at Warsoft. He's extremely good at doing business, but his biggest specialty is his cruelty. His cold, hearted methods and unscrupulous way of handling affairs was a major contributor to the rise of Senna. During the early days of Senna's development, a lot of his competitors were defeated by him through disreputable means, so he had a pretty poor reputation. What should we do? Logan asked worriedly. Jasper looked at Theo and said, We will need your help, Theo. Theo had a solemn expression on his face. Since I've already joined Terry Zone, I will do everything I can to the best of my abilities, he said. Jasper nodded and said, We can't let our guard down during these next two days. Senna could launch their attack on us at any time. We must be sufficiently prepared this time around. Sure. After agreeing to Jasper's instructions, everyone left the meeting room to work on their respective tasks. Only Jasper, who was consumed by his thoughts, remained in the room. Senna was a bomb that would eventually blow up in their faces one day if they did not get rid of it. Terry Zone was still too vulnerable right now. It would not stand a chance against any harsh blows. If this problem was not resolved as soon as possible, Terrazone's future development may be severely delayed. In his past life, Senna rushed to obtain a public listing due to a major shortage of liquidity. Senna had now delayed its listing for such a long time. Furthermore, the internet economy bubble had burst, making it even more difficult for Dane Warren to obtain investments within the country. Therefore, Senna should be short of funds as well. However, Jasper knew very well that the progress of Senna's public listing would not come to a standstill. On the contrary, it would be fast-forwarded instead. Jasper called Jack over after thinking about how Senna succeeded in obtaining a public listing through its connections with Colossal Investments. Jack, do you know anyone from Colossal Investments? Jasper asked. Jack was momentarily stunned. He then nodded and said, I know William, the president of the Terra Regional Branch. We don't know each other very well, but Celine Maynard, the general manager, was my classmate. She's also from Harbor City, so we're quite closely acquainted. Celine Maynard. Jasper knew this name very well. In his past life, he had also been involved in the financial industry. Therefore, he had been greatly influenced by the Queen of Investment, who was widely renowned within the global financial circle. According to the timeline, she should have just gotten married right now. At the same time, she had just taken up the position of general manager of the Terra Regional Branch of Colossal Investments. For years later, she would advance further up the hierarchy and become the president. When Jasper got reborn, the Queen of Investment had gotten promoted to the position of executive chairwoman at Colossal Investments. Sure, can you make an appointment with her for me? Jasper asked. Jack nodded and said, All right, wait for a while. I'll contact her through a phone call. A few minutes later, Jack returned. She happens to be in Cavern City for a business trip right now. She will be returning to Harbor City tomorrow afternoon. She said that she's free to meet up with you anytime, he said. Acting decisively, Jasper stood up and said, Give me the address. Jack told him the address of a hotel, then proceeded to ask him curiously, Mr. Lane, may I ask if you know her? If I knew her, why would I bother to ask you to help me set up an appointment? Jasper asked in amusement. Jack thought that this reply made sense. Initially, I told her that you would like to meet her, but she didn't agree. This is expected because, as you know, a company like Colossal Investments with a large-scale business tends to be haughtier and more arrogant. However, she immediately agreed to meet up with you once I told her your name and that you own JW Capital, he said. Jasper did not find this surprising. If Colossal Investments, which ranked the highest among the top four investment banks, did not know anything about what he had done in Harbor City, they ought to just close down. 
Maybe she managed to sense my domineering stance through my name alone, Jasper joked. Silently, Jack watched Jasper leave the company in a hurry. The hotel that Celine Maynard was staying in was quite a distance away. Jasper received a call from Hudson while he was still on the way there. You guessed correctly, Mr. Lane. Senna has launched their second attack on us, Hudson said in a heavy tone. I'm on the move right now. Hold on over there. Make sure what happened yesterday doesn't repeat itself, Jasper said calmly. Understood, Hudson said with a nod. Hudson, what did Mr. Lane say? Logan, who had an overcast expression on his face, immediately asked Hudson once he put down the phone. Mr. Lane wants us to persevere through it to the best of our abilities. He has begun taking action over there. He won't allow Senna to continue acting so recklessly, Hudson said. F asterisk CK it. Dane Warren is such a B asterisk starred. We're all operating our own respective businesses. He's just messing with us just because he's more experienced and owns a larger company than us. Logan yelled angrily. Logan's words represented everyone else's innermost thoughts. Hudson's gaze deepened as he voiced out, Weakness is not an excuse. This is a lesson that each and every one of us must remember. The more aggressive Senna and Dane Warren are, the more we have to bear it and protect ourselves. The day will come when we'll grow bigger and stronger than them. When that day comes, everyone will look highly upon us. Cavern City, Ritz-Carlton Hotel as one of the top global five-star hotel brands, the Ritz-Carlton in Cavern City was the second branch of the flagship hotel in the country after it first opened in Andrus. Needless to say, this was the most luxurious hotel in the whole of Cavern City right now. No other hotel could top the degree of luxury it provided. Following the address Jack gave him, Jasper went straight to the highest floor of the hotel. The presidential suite was located on this floor. A woman dressed in a business suit was standing by the door once he got out of the elevator. May I know if you're Mr. Lane? The woman, who resembled a secretary, asked him courteously. Jasper nodded. Please follow me, the secretary said while gesturing at him to follow her. She led the way in front of him. Miss Maynard is in the midst of a video conference right now. There was a last-minute decision to hold the conference, so we did not have the time to notify you, Mr. Lane she explained while walking. It's all right, I can wait for a while, Jasper said. The secretary brought Jasper into the suite. After arriving at a reception room, she prepared some tea and left the room. The presidential suite of this hotel had a master bedroom and a minimum of two other guest bedrooms in addition to a lounge, meeting room, reception room, and a study. It was fully equipped with a wide range of facilities. Even the reception room that Jasper was currently situated in was about 70 to 80 squared meters in size. After waiting in the reception room for almost an hour, the door suddenly opened. A pretty, tall, and slender woman that gave off an air of competency walked into the reception room. Celine headed straight toward Jasper after entering the room. She extended her hand with an apologetic smile plastered on her face. I'm really sorry, Mr. Lane. There was a last-minute emergency meeting, so it took quite some time. You must have waited for a long time, she said. I'm the one who's disturbing you. I should be the one apologizing instead, Jasper said politely as he shook hands with Celine. The two of them then sat down. Celine's secretary came forward and placed a cup of tea in front of each of them. After that, she sat down in a corner of the room and remained silent. Meanwhile, Celine and Jasper quietly sized each other up. She was indeed the same queen of investment that he had seen on a magazine cover in his past life. However, her aura had yet to grow to the same level of sophistication as it was in his past life. At the moment, Celine Maynard emanated a sense of competency and dominance that could not be compared to her future self. She had long been complacent and comfortable with her position in her future days. Thus, she did not shine as brilliantly as she did right now. In other words, once a woman concealed their ambitious demeanor, it would not be discovered easily. Nevertheless, that meant that she even more dangerous. At the same time, Selena was observing Jasper. Like most of the people who were meeting him the first time, her first reaction to Jasper was shock at his young age. At an age like this, Selene could hardly associate him with the powerful figure who had dominated Harbor City. As the general manager of the Terra Regional Branch of Colossal Investments, Celine knew very well about the incident 
whereby the Harbor City stock market had gotten attacked by Western Capital during the crisis of the bursting economic bubble some time ago. She even knew that Quantum Fund was the one behind all of it. This young man before her was the one who had presided over Harbor City's $100 billion rescue plan. Not everyone had the ability to do something like that. Not only did he handle it, but he also did an amazing job at that. Besides that, Celine also knew that this young man shared an extremely close relationship with the top four families of Harbor City. He was especially close with the laws. Even the Harbor City government took a great liking to Jasper as he had played a decisive role in this economic defense battle. If it had not been for these glorious achievements, Celine would not have decided to meet the mere chairman of a local investment company. Mr. Lane, Jack is a longtime friend of mine. He told me that you wanted to meet up with me because of an urgent matter. May I know what this matter is regarding? Celine spoke up first. Jasper pondered for a while before deciding to go straight to the point. I know that Cinna is planning to get listed on the Nasdaq. Did they ask Colossal Investments to be their agent? He asked straightforwardly. Celine was stunned. How did you know that, Mr. Lane? Yes, they have. Not many people know about this. Furthermore, Mr. William, the regional president, is handling this personally, she answered in surprise. Mr. William was the one who had called for an emergency video conference just now. The main topic of discussion was Senna's public listing. Once the listing plan for Senna gets launched, it would become the Terra regional branch's largest business deal of the year. They would gain a lucrative sum of profits from handling this. William, who was eager to present his achievements to the headquarters, placed a great deal of emphasis on this issue. Therefore, the conference just now was mainly centered on the arrangements. Required to help Senna obtain a public listing as soon as possible. Furthermore, this plan had only been circulated among the top executives of the Terra Regional Branch of Colossal Investments who had participated in the video conference earlier. How did Jasper Lane know about it? Jasper chuckled lightly. I have my ways. I came over today in hopes that you'd be able to work together with me, Miss Maynard, he said. Celine shook her head after listening to what he said. My apologies, but I can't help you with this. Mr. William is handling this issue personally, and no one else is allowed to interfere in his plans. Besides, both parties have already signed a contract. Why are you suggesting that we should work together, Mr. Lane? She asked. Jasper directed a scorching gaze at Celine. I don't want Senna to obtain a public listing. After registering his words, Celine's expression immediately changed. She looked at Jasper with a frown as she wondered what were the true intentions behind his words. Jasper looked straight into Celine's eyes. Miss Maynard, you don't really want to see Senna obtain a public listing, right? He asked this in a playful tone. I don't understand what you're implying here, Mr. Lane. The public listing of Senna is the Terra Regional Branch's largest deal of the year. There's no reason for me to sabotage this deal, Celine said in a cutting tone. Indeed. It is the largest bit of business for the Terra Regional Branch of Colossal Investments this year. However, this has nothing to do with you. Am I right, Miss Maynard? Jasper's words caused Celine to fall silent. They were both intelligent people. There was no need to squabble over a trivial matter like this. Although Celine was extremely competent, she had just taken up this mantle. She arrived at her current position after going through many exchanges of interests and cruel battles. Hence, both her opponents and those in support of her were all waiting to see how she would perform in this position. Evidently, William was not one of those who supported her. The responsibilities of the president and general manager both overlapped greatly, which meant that their individual capabilities would determine the one between them who would emerge as the boss. William would not remain dormant while watching Celine grab all the power from his hands. Therefore, Celine had not been involved in Senna's listing at all. Once the plan succeeds, it would be difficult for Celine, who did not have access to many resources in the Terra Regional Branch, to surpass the deal and soar toward greater heights. Jasper took a sip from his cup of tea. Miss Maynard, you need to preserve the right to speak for the Terra Regional Branch in order to retain the dignity and authority befitting of a general manager. Meanwhile, I don't want Senna to get listed. Therefore, we share common interests, he said with a smile. Celine pinned a deep and thoughtful gaze on Jasper. She was rather taken aback. What was the background of this young man, and why did he know so much about the internal strife for power within the Terra Regional branch of Colossal Investments? 
How could each and every of his words resonate with all of her heartfelt thoughts? Even if Celine was smart, she did not expect that Jasper had been rebirthed with more than 20 years' worth of memories. In her past life, when Celine had climbed the corporate ladder abruptly, people had dug up some secrets about her. One of the most well-known secrets was how she changed jobs from CIFA Securities to Colossal Investments as a young newbie, and then immediately jumped into the position of the general manager in the Terra region. Then, there was the story of how she fought for power with the current president in the Terra region, William, as a general manager. This later became Celine's entry point. Celine looked at Jasper calmly and said, Mr. Lane, what are you planning to do? How do you want me to work with you? Jasper smiled and said, First, I hope to know what price Senna had to pay for you to be their agent. Celine furrowed her brows and said bluntly, Mr. Lane, you should know that before the listing succeeds, that this is a trade secret. If I leak this, I'll face the risk of getting sued. Jasper held up his hands and said, There are no risks in this world that you can't handle, right? Power is always obtained from battles that are full of risks and never given to you by the enemies out of pity. Celine stayed silent for a while before saying indifferently, Senna is willing to give us 25% of their stocks in exchange for colossal investments to help them get listed on the Nasdaq. How generous! When Jasper heard this price, even he silently praised Dane's decisiveness. How much was 25% of the total shares worth? This would take away a quarter of Senna's value. Even though they would need to pay a huge price, in the face of Senna's capital chain rupture crisis, it was a necessary step. After all, you could not make an omelet without breaking a few eggs. If Senna wanted to get through this crisis and start anew, they would need to give up on short-term benefits. Ordinary people would not be able to do this. It was through bold moves like that Dane was able to make Senna into the most outstanding web portal in the country. No mediocre leader would be able to get to this position. Miss Maynard, will you work with me to take down this 25% figure from your investment company? Jasper asked indifferently. Celine's expression changed immediately. Jasper was saying that he wanted her to steal from her own company. This was not as simple as leaking a trade secret now. Before she could say anything, the secretary who had been staying silent this entire time stood up to speak. Impossible. The secretary's tone was stern. Miss Maynard, you can't promise him this. This is impossible. The company is planning to help Senna get listed. We can't transfer the shares away. You won't be able to get past William on this matter. More importantly, so what if he gets the shares? Senna won't be publicly listed, and they'll end up suing us. When that happens, we'll be in trouble. This person is harboring evil intentions. Who knows what's the purpose behind him coming here? The secretary's words caused Celine's face to darken. She did not say anything. A secretary was interrupting the conversation of their superiors, but was not immediately berated. This meant that her boss was carefully considering her words. Jasper's expression looked calm and tranquil. He ignored the secretary's overbearing attitude and was only looking at Celine. Mr. Lane, Miss Stone came here with me from CIFA Securities, and she's been working with me for six years. At work, she's my secretary, but in my daily life, she's my best friend. Therefore, her words are equal to mine. Celine had a calm look on her face. The implication was that she had already rejected Jasper. 150 million. Jasper suddenly said, Colossal Investments want Senna's stocks because you hope it might grow in the future. Despite this, I am currently offering to pay you 150 million on the spot in exchange for 25% of the stock. For an investment company like you guys, this is a deal that is a win for you any way you look at it. Celine replied without any expression on her face, Mr. Lane. I don't think you understand. For our investment company, the most important thing is trust. Since we've already signed an agreement with Senna, we'll do things according to the agreement. If that's the case, what if Senna is destined to never be listed? Even though Dane is the chairman of Senna, he might not be the biggest shareholder, said Jasper insipidly. In order to get more investment, Senna kept diluting and issuing stocks over the years. Three investment companies in the country held a total of 34% of Senna's stocks at the time, and that 34% are in my hands now. Jasper laced his fingers together and looked at Celine and Miss Stone whose expressions had changed abruptly. Then, he said calmly, 
a company will only go public after gaining approval from two-thirds of all of the shareholders. I already own over 34% of the shares, so I have the sole power to decide if we go public or not. If I disagree, what will Colossal Investments use to list the company? The decision alone from the internal shareholders of Senna will not be sufficient to save the deal in this situation. Is Dane going to use his head to try to get listed on the Nasdaq? Jasper's words felt like a clap of thunder. It was so shocking that Celine and Miss Stone started to breathe heavier. How is that possible? We did a background check, but we didn't learn anything about this. Moreover, does Dane not know about this? Miss Stone muttered. Jasper replied calmly, I am deliberately scheming against Dane, so why would I let him know? As for your background check, to be honest, you still need to strengthen your information network in the country. Celine looked heatedly at Jasper and said, If that's the case, then the contract William signed with Senna has major issues. I need to report to the headquarters now. Jasper said casually, While you're at it, tell your boss that you're only going to make them a profit of from this $150 million deal. Please wait for my update, Mr. Lane, Celian said. Jasper smiled and replied indifferently, I've been babbling for too long, so I should take my leave now. Miss Stone watched as Jasper left. Then, she could not control herself and asked Celine, Miss Maynard, can we trust him? Celine sighed deeply. If this were someone else, I would not believe them, but he hosted a market rescue of hundreds of billions in Harbor City and has a good relationship with the laws. Even the government of Harbor City admires him, so I don't think he has a need to lie to us. In that case, what are we going to do? Miss Stone said in a poll. I think we should ask the headquarters in Wall Street to start a shareholder meeting to talk about this, Celine sighed. What does Jasper want from doing all this? Even if he's all that, it was all done in Harbor City. Our country is not like Harbor City, yet he thinks he can defeat Dane? I don't believe him, Miss Stone spat coldly. Celine looked fixedly at her and said, We don't have any business in his gripe with Dane. Now, I need to immediately report this to the higher ups. Miss Stone huffed and was looking down on Jasper's personality. She felt that he was a vile character who would backstab others at a moment's notice. What big accomplishment could this despicable vermin achieve? She scoffed. Miss Stone was suddenly looking forward to this. She could not wait to see Jasper suffer a crushing defeat at Dane's hands even after doing so much and spending so much money. At this moment, Jasper had just walked out of the hotel as he called Jack. Jack, contact the person in charge of Montaigne Capitals. Tell them I want to buy their 34% stake in Senna. If they don't agree, tell them I've already gotten 25% ownership of Senna from Colossal. Investments After going back to Terry's own, Hudson and the rest were not back yet. Inside the office, Jasper and Jack were sitting next to each other. I've contacted Montaigne Capitals, and they want to confirm whether you've really gotten Colossal Investments 25% of the shares, Mr. Lane. After he heard what Jack said, Jasper smiled and said, You want to know too, right Jack? Jack chortled and said, I think it's true. If this was someone else, I won't believe them. But if it's you, there's a possibility. You think so highly of me. Jasper shrugged. He was not a god, so he could not make everything go his way. Basically, the plan this time was to use the misinformation between Montaigne Capitals and Colossal Investments to create a chance to gain some advantages. Jasper told Colossal Investments that he had Montaigne Capitals 34% of the shares. He was using this to threaten them to make them realize that if they did not nod their heads, Senna would not be able to float in the market. As such, they would definitely sell their shares. As it was Senna's internal problem that caused their float to fail, according to the agreement, Colossal Investments would automatically get 25% shares as compensation. On the other hand, Jasper could use the fact that he got Colossal Investments shares as a requirement to buy the shares Montaigne Capitals had. Montaigne Capitals would not have a reason to decline that as well. After Jack heard what Jasper said, he widened his eyes and said in disbelief, You're saying that? You're lying to them? Jasper smiled and said, I'm not lying because I'm this close to getting my hands on Colossal Investments' share of Senna's shares, and it is indeed 25%. Jasper told Jack about his plan. Jack was dazed and dizzy after he heard it. To be honest, I'm so impressed with you, Jack said sincerely. These are just cheap tricks. The main problem is that we're still not strong enough. If not, 
We wouldn't have to use such cheap tricks and could just crush them brazenly, Jasper lamented. Jack said, you're still young and have a long future ahead. In a few more years, you'll be able to reach the height you mentioned. To be honest, I have no idea where you'll be in the future, but it must be a height that other people can only look up to. How should I reply to Montaigne Capitals then? Jack asked. Jasper hesitated for a while before saying, Did they quote a price? Jack said, They did. 200 million. They only invested 80 million back then, right? It's just been two years, and they're selling it for 200 million. What great business people, Jasper said dully. Jack laughed and said, There's still a very large chance with this price. Jasper shook his head and said, No, we don't need to negotiate the price. Just promise them. The requirement is to deal immediately. Jack was stumped for words. He could not help but say, We could at least get it down to 180 million. Jack, we don't have any stocks with us. If this drags on, problems will arise, Jasper said with a smile. The most important thing is that I can double this 200 million very soon. Everyone underestimates that Senna still has the value of Terry Zone. If I combine these two companies into one, who else would become the king of the internet in this country? Jack stopped speaking abruptly and looked at Jasper while overwhelmed with shock. He muttered, If that's the case, Terry Zone could skyrocket. It would be immeasurably valuable to be number one in the country's internet industry. That's why I'm asking you to talk to them about this for me. Go as soon as you can, Jasper said. Jack got up and said seriously, All right, I'll get to the airport now and talk to the people from the headquarters of Montaigne Capitals. I'll do my best to close this deal. Thank you for your hard work. Jasper patted Jack's shoulders. Jack smiled and said, I'm included in the vesting. The more the company earns, the more I'll get. So this is not hard work at all. Indeed, Jasper said with a loud laugh. Sometimes, actual benefits would be more trustworthy than relationships and feelings. Colossal Investments was an investment company that was top in the world and could be said to be very efficient. Jasper received a call from Celine that night. An hour later, the sky turned black and Jasper once again came to Ritz-Carlton Hotel. This time, Celine was standing at the door to wait for Jasper unlike in the morning. Mr. Lane, we meet again, said Celine as she reached out her hand to shake Jasper's. Jasper smiled and shook Celine's hand. He said, is there a conclusion? Celine nodded and said, actually, the higher-ups are moved by Mr. Lane's suggestion because to us, gratuitously making $150 million just by reselling our stocks and agreement would be like finding money on the streets. Jasper and Celine walked into the hotel shoulder to shoulder. After Jasper heard that, he laughed and said, under normal circumstances, this would be followed by bad news, Miss Maynard. Celine looked at Jasper in surprise. She said, Mr. Lane, do you know how to read minds? I'm just very observant, Jasper smiled and said. Celine pondered for a while and then said, Just as you expected, Mr. Lane, Mr. William is very opinionated about this plan. He thought we should investigate this properly. Even if we're violating an agreement, we can only talk about this after we let Senna violate it first. His reason being that as long as Senna can float successfully, then the profit Senna will bring to Colossal Investments might be much more than $150 million. Jasper nodded and said, Things will be as he said. After all, if Senna floats successfully, the shares of 25% would definitely be more than $150 million. What do the higher-ups think then? Celine's expression looked solemn. She looked at Jasper and said, I've already convinced the higher-ups, but Mr. Lane, I want to know how confident you are. Jasper chuckled softly. 100%. At one side, Miss Stone had been silent the entire time. However, at this moment, she displayed a cold smirk. Mr. Lane, don't talk big. In order to side with you, Miss Maynard has had to bear a very huge risk. Jasper furrowed his brows and looked at Miss Stone. He said coldly, There are only advantages and no disadvantages to this plan no matter for Colossal Investments or Miss Maynard. This is a plan that benefits three parties, including me. Miss Maynard needs a huge contribution to stabilize her position, and there can only be one voice in the Terra region. It would either be hers or William's. Miss Maynard, if you're worried that this plan isn't reliable, then you can say no. I'm not begging you to work with me. After Jasper said that, 
Miss Stone had a horrible expression on her face. When she was about to say something, Celine said, All right, Miss Stone, your emotions are too stirred up. Miss Stone looked angry, but she did not dare to say anything more. However, it could be seen that she hated Jasper to the bone from the way she looked at him. Jasper did not know why this woman was so hostile toward him. At the same time, Jasper's phone rang. It was from Jack. I need to answer this call. Excuse me. After Jasper said that to Celine, he walked away to answer his phone. Miss Stone looked at Jasper's back with rancor and could not help but say, Miss Maynard, why is he so menacing? I can't stand him believing himself to be infallible. Who does he think he is? He thinks he's all that just because of something he did. Miss Maynard, you're the general manager of Colossal Investments in the Terra region, and he's still acting so cocky in front of you. Celine looked at Miss Stone and said with an indifferent expression, Firstly, he's not being cocky. You're the one who's deliberately infuriating others the entire time. You're minding too much as a secretary. Don't you notice that? Celine's words caused Miss Stone's expression to freeze. She was speechless for a moment. Mr. Lane, it's done. From his voice, Jack sounded incredibly excited. The main reason why Montaigne Capitals invested in Senna was to make money. Now that Jasper was offering them a reasonable price and they've acknowledged Colossal Investments' background, Montaigne Capitals did not hesitate too much before signing the agreement with Jack. After Jasper heard this, he let out a huge sigh of relief. Compared to Montaigne Capitals, Colossal Investments was a harder bone to chew. However, his lie had finally become reality now. Send the copy of the contract to me. After Jasper said that, he hung up the phone. Jasper then walked in front of Celine and said, Miss Maynard, you want confidence, right? I'll show you right now. After he said that, his phone buzzed. It was an MMS from Jack. Jasper opened the MMS in front of Celine. After the slow loading time, a contract appeared. It was the agreement stating that Montaigne Capitals had agreed to transfer their 34% shares in Senna to JW Capitals. When Celine was about to let out a breath of relief after seeing this agreement, she suddenly noticed a detail. You signed this agreement today? Celine lifted her head in shock to look at Jasper. Jasper smiled softly and said, It's the truth no matter when it's signed, right? Celine was a smart woman. If she could be crowned the queen of investment in her previous life and got to the position of executive chairwoman in Colossal Investments, it was proof that she was not just a pretty woman to look at. After pondering for a while, she immediately understood what was going on. Good tactic, Mr. Lane. Celine sounded a little angry after she had been lied to. At the same time, her tone was also laced with admiration for Jasper, but at the end of the day, it sounded more complicated than that. She did not expect there would be a day when she would be lied to. However, this lie was not truly a lie. Mr. Lane, can you tell me how you did it? Celine asked. Jasper smiled and said, I told you this morning that I have 34% of the shares, and then I told almost the same things to Montaigne Capitals. Coincidentally, both of you believed me. So, my lie is not a lie anymore. Celine was not a petty woman. After Jasper explained things and she understood what was going on, she said sincerely, Mr. Lane, your tactic is amazing. Very old-fashioned. Standing at one side, Miss Stone's expression changed. She yelled angrily, You're a liar indeed. Jasper peered at her and said insipidly, Did you not see my agreement? I already have the 34% shares. How am I lying? Miss Stone said coldly, but you said it yourself that you didn't have it when you were here this morning. You admitted that. The business world is like a war zone, and this is one of the tactics, Jasper said flatly. You only have yourself to blame for being unable to see through this. Miss Stone was so mad that her face had turned white. When she was about to say something, she saw that the way Celine was looking at her was becoming colder and colder. Miss Stone felt flustered and quickly shut her mouth. However, she was cursing Jasper a million times in her heart. Jasper ignored her. He looked at Celine and said, Now, the basis for our collaboration has officially been formed. Miss Maynard, can we talk about the transfer of the shares now? Celine said indifferently, There's nothing to talk about. We agree unanimously on your conditions. I've already prepared the documents too. While she said that, Celine took out a transfer of shares agreement to hand it to Jasper. 
After Jasper looked at it and made sure there was nothing wrong with it, he signed it instantly. For now, Jasper had successfully pocketed Senna's shares that were stranded out there. The money will be transferred into your preferred account today, Jasper said with a smile. Mr. Lane, you already have 59% of Senna's shares now. May I know what you're going to do next? Celine asked curiously. Jasper chuckled lightly and said, I'm going to send a huge surprise to Dane from Senna, of course. Celine looked as if she was in deep thought. Finally, she smiled and reached out to Jasper. She said, even though there were a lot of ups and downs, no matter what, I'm still going to wish us all the best in working together. Jasper reached out his hand to hold Celine's. He smiled and said, best of luck. I hope I still have a chance to work with you in the future, Mr. Lane. However, I hope such exciting things won't happen again. Celine displayed a look of terror and said jokingly. Jasper chuckled lightly and said, I'm sure we will have a chance to work together in the future. When Jasper was about to leave, Celine walked him to the door and said, Mr. Lane, William was warned by the higher-ups regarding this. He's furious now, so he might have some misunderstandings toward you. If you come across him in the future, you have to be careful. Jasper looked deeply at Celine and said, Miss Maynard, it seems that you're more than happy for me to be rivals with William. Celine said calmly, You tricked me as well, Mr. Lane. So I think we're even now that I've appropriately transferred some of William's anger onto you. After laughing, Jasper said, Sounds fair. Celine smiled and said, The enemy of my enemy is my friend. I hope to replace William's position and since you've already offended William, then you should just go to the extreme. This way, we can be closer friends. Jasper looked deeply at Celine. He felt that this woman was not so easy to deal with. Farewell. Safe travels. While looking at Jasper's back, a complicated twinkle appeared in Celine's eyes. Suddenly, she chuckled softly and said, This man didn't get angry even after I put it out in the open. He's such a sharp-witted man. What right does he have to get angry? Miss Stone finally found a chance to speak and said coldly, He's the one who tricked us first. But when we were directing William's anger to him, we didn't know he was setting this scheme and we're still feeling pleased with ourselves like dummies, Celine said. Miss Stone said angrily, Miss Maynard, I told you we have to be careful of this man. I know for certain that he's not a good person. So you're saying that I have a horrible perception of people? Celine asked airily. Miss Stone's expression changed as she said hurriedly, I didn't mean that. Celine said coldly, That's why you'll always be a secretary. There are no real friends or real enemies in the business world. Mr. Lane was indeed the person who set a trap this time. But did his trap hurt our profits? Not only did it not, but it also gave us a good chance to strike William's prestige. This is a good thing for us. Miss Stone said aggrievedly, I just can't stand him. I know my husband asked you to report to him about any one of the opposite sex who appears around me, but I'm working, do you understand? After Miss Stone heard this, her expression changed. Miss Maynard, you've misunderstood? You should know best whether I've misunderstood or not, Celine said calmly. You don't have to explain anymore. Since I've said it, it means that I'm very confident. Do you need me to show you the proof? Our marriage is based on mutual benefits. We need each other, and that's why we got married. I'll allow him to be a male chauvinist in the right amount. But I hope you can understand that if you infuriate me, there won't be good outcomes for both of you. Especially you. You should know your position because you're just a chess piece. After Celine said that, she turned around to leave. Miss Stone stood where she was, and her expression fluctuated irregularly. After recovering from the post traumatic stress, she gritted her teeth in rancor and said coldly, Jasper, this is all your fault. Just you wait. After successfully buying 59% of Senna's shares, Jasper was in a great mood. Even though he had spent $350 million on these shares, not only did he not lose money, but instead, he made a profit. Once he successfully combined Senna and Terry's own, this $350 million would be $3.5 billion or even more. After he went back to the office, Jasper noticed that Theo and Zane were here. Logan was telling them about Dane swinging by. All of them had furious expressions on their faces. Even Theo, who just joined, had a gloomy look on his face. After all, for these hot-blooded young people, 
It was not a good thing to be hacked and then get bullied by the other party. Damn it. If I was here, I would have beaten up that Warren guy until his mother can't even recognize him. The hot-tempered Don yelled angrily. Hudson was focused on his computer. He said without turning his head, Then what? Get arrested? Do you think it's worth it to get locked up for a few days because of something like this? Don't you think people will laugh at you after word about it gets out? Zane said while feeling pissed, but you can't let him feel so pleased with himself. He won't be pleased with himself after tomorrow, Jasper walked over and said while beaming. After they heard Jasper's voice, they lifted their heads to look over in surprise. Have we stabilized the machinery room? Jasper asked. Zane said excitedly, yes, and it's all thanks to Theo. He wrote some codes which greatly increased our defense. If not, I think we would have needed to work overtime again tonight. Theo said while feeling a little embarrassed, No, no, it was everyone's hard work. I wouldn't have been able to do so much on my own. Jasper smiled and said, You don't have to be modest. Everyone has witnessed your ability. After he said that, Jasper looked at Hudson. He said with a smile, Hud, are you interested in going to Capital City tomorrow? At this critical moment, there must be something especially important for Jasper to ask Hudson to go out station in Capital City. Hudson asked curiously, why? Jasper smiled softly and said, do you want to experience how comfortable the chair under Dane's but in Senna's headquarters is? Jasper's words caused the entire office to go into a state of commotion. What do you mean? Cameron widened his eyes and looked like a curious child. Why do I not understand what he's saying? Logan asked foolishly. Zane scratched his head and said worriedly, Mr. Lane, have you gone stupid from anger? It's not worth it to get sick from anger because of people like that. It's not worth it at all. Daniel coughed awkwardly and said to Jasper, Mr. Lane, Zane is right. We'll just think of a way to get it back. We don't have to hurt ourselves. Theo wanted to say something, but since he had just joined the team and had not fully blended in with them, he did not dare to talk bad about Jasper. On the other hand, Hudson looked heatedly at Jasper like he had a lot of things to ask. Jasper chuckled lightly and slammed his phone displaying the MMS Jack sent as well as the agreement he signed with Colossal Investments just now on the table. I'm Senna's boss now. A tossed stone would cause a thousand ripples. The entire house went silent. Everyone was staring at the photo on the phone and the freshly signed agreement. What was left was the sound of all of them there gulping. Zane then pinched Daniel who was standing next to him with all his might. Daniel yelped in pain and broke the silence. He said angrily to Zane, Why did you pinch me? I wanted to know if it's true. I thought I was too exhausted from working overtime that I started to hallucinate. But judging from your reaction, it seems to be true. Cameron started at the agreement, and his saliva dripped down from his mouth. He said, It's real. Of course, it's real. It's black and white. And there's also the official seal. How could he have faked this? Hudson looked at Jasper in shock and said in disbelief, You bought Senna? Jasper pulled a chair over and sat down. He said, Indeed. Senna has a big business now, and Terry's own can't compare to them, be it talents or technology reserves. So, Terry's own is not Senna's rival. It's a fact. After thinking about it, there just isn't a better plan. Since Senna is so great, then I should just buy it. After I buy it, then we'll be a family. We don't have to worry about them attacking us. Did you hear what this man said? He bought the other person's company because he disagreed with them? Since they were too strong and he could not compare to them, that was why he bought their company. This was as if he was too lazy to queue in the bank, so he directly bought the entire bank to avoid queuing. Yeah, there was no problem with that logic. Zane and the gang's hearts were shaking. Their throats felt dry, and they kept swallowing their saliva. They looked at the agreement and then back at Jasper. In the end, they drew long breaths and sighed. The next morning, Jasper and Hudson showed up in Cavern City International Airport with Julian. After about half an hour, Jack hurriedly came out from the exit. After the four of them met up, Jack solemnly took out a shares transfer agreement to Jasper. Luckily, I didn't fail to accomplish this mission, Jack smiled and said. Jasper looked at the contract worth 200 million in his hand and smiled. He said, thanks for the hard work. Jack shook his head and said, I'm just doing my job. Jasper said, 
I'm going to Capital City with HUD now to incorporate Senna into our troops. Since we won't be in Terry Zone, I'm going to trouble you to watch over it for me. Jack smiled and said, All right, I'll keep an eye on it. The two of them shook hands. Then, Jasper led Hudson and Julian onto the plane. A few hours later, Hudson felt his heartbeat fluctuating when he was outside Senna's headquarters that was located in the best location. In the depths of the bustling commercial district, he looked up at Senna's gigantic logo hanging above the building. Dane just went to Terry Zone yesterday. I didn't think that we'd come to his den today, Hudson said. How do you feel? Jasper smiled and said. Hudson's eyes looked firm as he said, In the future, Terry Zone will definitely be more powerful than Senna. Jasper laughed. It was good that Hudson had ambitions. This was how the head of a future trillion dollar company should look like. The three of them headed into the building. The moment they got through the door, Jasper and Hudson were stopped by two security guards. The guards walked over. When they saw that they did not have employee tags and looked foreign, the guards immediately determined that they were not employees of Senna. They quickly asked, Stop right there. What are you doing here? We're here to discuss something, Jasper said insipidly. Register as visitors, please. The guard was taking his job seriously. While he was at it, he also asked, Who are you looking for? Do you have an appointment? Dane Warren. I don't have an appointment. Jasper's answer caused the guard to lift his head. He then scoffed. You're looking for our chairman? You're looking for our chairman, and no one's here to welcome you? You guys look impoverished, and yet you're barging in here to look for our chairman with nothing? While he said that, the guard placed down the register book and waved his hand impatiently to chase Jasper and Hudson away. However, the moment he was about to do something, Julian, who was eyeing covetously from the back, charged over and grabbed the guard's arm. The guard yelped. When he was about to escape, he realized that the man's palm was like a pair of pincer pliers, gripping his wrist tightly. He could not escape from his grip no matter what. Damn it, let go of me. The guard was nervous as he yelled. In an instant, three to five security guards who were on duty came over. They were looking at Jasper and the rest with unfriendly faces. One of them said, Are you looking for trouble? Don't you know where this is? How dare you behave atrociously at this place? Julian. Jasper said insipidly, don't hurt anyone. Jasper was here to incorporate Senna into his troops. He did not come here to fight with the security guards. Julian nodded and pushed the guard away. He backed away and stood next to Jasper with a calm expression on his face. Jasper led Hudson forward with his hands on his back. With Julian around, the guards did not dare to stop them. They could only stare fixedly at the group. When they got to the elevator, a staff member with some documents in her arms walked out just in time. As such, Jasper stopped her. Hello, which floor is the chairman's office on? The woman blushed when she saw the elegant and refined man in front of her. She said, 16th floor. Thanks. After thanking her, Jasper led Hudson and Julian into the elevator before pressing the button to the 16th floor. The 16th floor was the core office in Senna. There was a huge meeting room here as well as Dane's office and the office of the chairman's secretary. The other higher-ups would be working on the lower floors. From this alone, Dane's superior status in Senna could be seen clearly. Inside the meeting room, all of the higher-ups in Senna were sitting upright and still as they listened to Dane's speech. This time, we have to make up our minds to get rid of those little companies that will affect the development of Senna. After being humiliated in Terry Zone, Dane rushed back to Capital City that very night. He was so furious that he did not get a good night's sleep. Today, he called all of the higher-ups to have this meeting early in the morning. He decided to teach Terry Zone a lesson to let them know that they would not have anything good awaiting them after offending him. We're the ensign for the internet industry in the country. We're the number one web portal among the four. In this country, it can be said that Senna is the boss. Dane coldly scanned the higher-ups in the room with an arrogant look in his eyes. His words sounded powerful and resonating. Senna is going to float very soon, and once it's done, all of you will be the higher-ups of a listed company. You guys will have vestings, and it'll be able to make you into millionaires overnight. The higher-ups were excited as they looked passionately and enthusiastically at Dane. 
The news about Senna signing an agreement to float with colossal investments was not a secret in the office anymore. At this moment, everyone was calculating how much money they could make as a higher-up in a listed company after Senna floated successfully. However, before that, we have to crush Terry Zone. Then, we'll dominate the instant messaging market in the country. Once we've done that, the stock price of Senna will be higher and the valuation will be much higher as well. Hence, you'll get even more benefits. Dane looked at the excited faces of the higher-ups and laughed loftily. He was enjoying the feeling of being chased after and worshipped. Jasper, I want to see how you'll compete with me now. Suddenly, Dane felt a slight hint of remorse. He wanted so badly to get Jasper here to let him see how many talents he had under him and how much power he held. If this power erupted, they would be able to crush Terry Zone into pieces in a blink of an eye. At this moment, it was as if Dane's wishes had come true. Suddenly, the door was being pushed open from the outside. Jasper had Hudson by his side and Julian behind him as the three of them appeared at the door of the meeting room. Are you having a meeting? Good. Then I don't need to get all of you here one by one. Most of the higher-ups in the meeting room did not know Jasper, but they did know what Hudson looked like as he was the company's rival for the past two days. When they saw Hudson, they displayed extremely shocked expressions on their faces. They did not understand why he was in the meeting room of their company. Now, this scene was like the leader of the enemy suddenly barging into the other troops' base camp when the two troops were facing each other and were about to go to battle and fight. Dane was staring straight at Jasper, and his face looked like he had just seen a ghost. Jasper, what are you doing here? Dane cried out involuntarily. He then roared with a dark expression on his face after he came back to his senses. Security! Where's security? Why did they just let irrelevant people inside? Don't they know that the company is having a meeting with the higher-ups? Dane had a bad feeling in his heart when he saw Jasper and Hudson showing up all of a sudden. At this moment, a group of security guards hurried over. While they were facing Dane's roars with their faces turning pale, they gasped and said, Mr. Warren, till they barged in forcefully. Dane ignored the guard and looked at Jasper gloomily. He said with an insincere smile, Jasper, who do you think you are? I went to Terry Zone yesterday, so you came to my place today. Do you think we're kids playing house? Jasper walked into the meeting room with his hands behind his back and said dully, The reason I'm here today is to announce a few things, and while I'm at it, I need to call a meeting. Dane started guffawing from anger. Is there something wrong with your brain? This is Senna. This is my company, and you're telling me that you're here to announce a few things and call a meeting? If your brain is faulty, you should go to the psychiatric hospital for treatment. Stop causing a ruckus here. Do you understand? Hudson looked coldly at Dane and said, Dane, watch your mouth. If not, you'll be the one who's going to be embarrassed and put in an awkward position. Dane chortled and pointed at Hudson to say, More, when I started Senna, you were still in school. Since when do you have the right to speak to me? What's wrong? Is Terry Zone struggling now? I went to you to purchase Terry Zone yesterday, and you rejected me. Are you coming to beg me now? Dane chuckled coldly and said nonchalantly, However, I won't give you such a favorable price anymore. Five million. I'm going to give you five million for Terry Zone now. If you don't agree, then get out of my company and wait for my Senna to crush your Terry Zone bit by bit. Dane's arrogance and overbearingness that was well known in the country's internet industry was vividly and thoroughly displayed here. He genuinely looked down on Hudson and Jasper. Now he was trying to think of a way to humiliate them back after he was humiliated by them yesterday. With a light chuckle, Jasper said insipidly to Dane, So you think you're the only one who can come to Terry Zone unannounced and I can't come to Senna to reciprocate? Dane scoffed and said, You're comparing Terry Zone with Senna? Are you insane? Not only Dane, but the rest of the higher-ups were also looking at Jasper and Hudson like they were idiots. They felt that these two might have something wrong with their brains and came here to get insulted and humiliated. Indeed, Terry Zone is still small now, but after a few years, Senna won't even be fit to lick Terry Zone's shoes, said Jasper coldly. Dane was staring blankly at him before guffawing loudly. The higher-ups were all laughing as well. The entire meeting room was filled with their jeers and irreverent laughter. Jasper shook his head amidst the laughter of Dane and the rest. He said, even though I want to use my ability to prove it to you, 
I can't wait anymore. Slam. Two agreements were slammed down on the table. This is the stock transfer agreement signed by Montaigne Capitals and Colossal Investments to transfer their shares to JW Capital. These two agencies have transferred their shares from Senna to JW Capital, and with their shares combined, it's a total of 59%. So in short, I am now the biggest shareholder in Senna. I'm ordering a shareholders meeting right now. Jasper turned around and faced the higher-ups in the room, who abruptly stopped laughing. Their expressions looked brilliant. Jasper's tone was cold but calm. He was emitting a majestic and imposing aura of a sovereign king who towered above the world while looking down at it. Dane stared at the two agreements on the table, his entire body shaking. The incomparable shock made him feel as if he had been electrocuted. His brain and limbs felt numb. How is that possible? Impossible. Dane howled madly. He grabbed the two documents and scanned the contents quickly. Two statements were clearly stated in the agreements in black and white. Montaigne Capitals will sell their 34% shares in Senna to JW Capital for $200 million. Colossal Investments in the Terra region will be selling their 25% shares in Senna to JW Capital for $1.5 million. Dane's hands were shaking uncontrollably. Blinded by his rage, he violently ripped the two agreements into pieces. He stared malevolently at Jasper like a hurt wolf and roared wildly, These are fake. These agreements are fake. Jasper smiled lightly and said, The ones in your hands were only copies. If you like ripping things up, I still have a lot, so you can rip them slowly. As for whether they're fake, you'll know after you make a few calls. Dane stumbled backward. He almost lost his footing and nearly fell to the ground. In the end, he clenched his fists and stared at Jasper to say, How is that possible? I didn't get any news about this. Colossal Investments got Senna shares in exchange for helping Senna float. How could they have transferred them to you? Are they not worried that I'll sue them? Jasper chuckled lightly and said, Have you become foolish from anger? I already have 34% after Montaigne Capitals transferred their shares to me, so I can make a one-vote veto and I vetoed Senna's plan to float. So, how are you going to float now? So, it was destined for you to violate the agreement. As it turned out, my collaboration with Colossal was very delightful. While he said that, Jasper shrugged and his face looked neutral. Dane's vision went black, and in the end, he still could not resist the urge to fall back into his chair. It looked as if all of his energy, vigor, and spirit had been sucked dry. He lifted his head to look at Jasper. His eyes were filled with extreme rancor. He said wretchedly, What are you going to do now? Jasper looked at the higher-ups and said coldly, Now, as the biggest shareholder of Senna, I suggest we have a shareholders meeting right now. There are two topics of discussion for this meeting. Number one, proposal to dismiss the chairman and director general of Senna, Dane Warren. Number two, proposal to combine Senna and Terry Zone. The first of these two topics of discussion was to get rid of Dane. The second one was to destroy the entire Senna. All of the higher-ups were in an uproar. Their faces looked alarmed, and they did not know what to do. Dane stood up suddenly and yelled with courage that he got from some unknown place. Impossible! I won't agree to this. This is murder, and you're separating Senna. Even if you're the majority shareholder, you don't even have 67% of the shares, so you can't achieve a two-third voting right. I can still reject your proposal. Jasper seemed to have predicted this. He chuckled lightly and said, All right, I announced that JW Capital will convertibly increase 300 million worth of shares for Senna. It will be diluted according to the corresponding proportion of the shares of the shareholders. Dane, it's either you follow and inject 300 million so that you can still be guaranteed one third of the stock right, or my 59% will be increased to 85% after this injection. Everyone in the room was silent, including Dane. All of the higher-ups had pale faces at this moment. The silence was deafening. After Jasper did this, it was as if a clap of thunder had struck down on top of Senna and it was going to turn over the entire company. Hudson was excited after watching this. He felt that some hot blood had been washed off from a deep part of his heart and he needed to pour out what was on his mind. As a student of great ability and the fact that he had led Terry Zone from nothing to what it was now, Hudson was pretty familiar with the operation of the capital in a company. 
The convertibly increased shares and fund injections were basically rogue strategies to hurt someone with money. For example, if a company had a market value of $1 million and had two shareholders, they would both own 50% of the shares. If one of the shareholders wanted to own a controlling number of shares in the company and they convertibly increased 1 million of shares, then the company's market value would increase to 2 million. The shareholder who convertibly increased the shares would have 75% of the shares, while the other would have the remaining 25%. This strategy would usually be used by extremely powerful shareholders. This would be a frequent tactic for them to control the company. What Jasper was doing now was exactly that. If they were going to hurt each other with capitals and compare the depths of their pockets, then Dane Warren could not defeat Jasper Lane. After Jasper said that, Dane's face went gray. He knew he had failed by a landslide, and there was no saving him now. Never in his wildest dream would he imagine that Jasper would quietly complete the purchase of Senna in just one day. Even if he did not convertibly increase the shares, his 59% of the shares would seal the fate of Dane's tragic ending. Dane chuckled bitterly and looked at Jasper. He said, You've won. You're savage. You're such a savage. Everyone in the industry says that I always do things by fair means or foul, but they're all blind. Jasper, you're the true savage. You go for the neck immediately and don't leave any room to maneuver. Splendid. Tremendous indeed. Jasper had on an indifferent expression while listening to Dane. There was no pleased look on his face nor modesty. He looked as natural as if he was eating or drinking. Who's agreeing or disagreeing with the two proposals I made before? Jasper looked at the higher-ups of Senna while standing next to the table. His tone sounded calm, but there was great danger hiding in his voice. No one dared to stand up and disagree with him. They knew once they disagreed, there would be only one ending for them. To pack their things and leave. I'm forfeiting. Dane closed his eyes and said as if he was submitting to his fate. When the higher-ups heard Dane saying that, they all lowered their heads. Dane stood up shakily and pointed to his seat. He smiled at Jasper and said, This seat belongs to you now. Jasper did not decline. He walked straight to Dane's seat and sat down. At this moment, all of the higher-ups sighed internally. They knew that Senna had already staged a comeback. The flag of the internet industry in the country and the head of the four web portals, Senna, had officially gotten a new boss. This would be a huge piece of news that would shake the internet industry and the whole nation. While sitting on the seat of honor in the meeting room, Jasper said flatly, The decision has been made after the shareholders' meeting and will be dismissing Dane as the chairman and director general of the company. After this, I'll sign the official document to pass it down to every department in the company. Now? The company will stop all attacks on Terry Zone and stop the plan to float. The rest of the tasks and human resources will stay the same. When he said this, Jasper looked at the higher-ups and said dully, There's a change in the person with the highest position in the company and it will undoubtedly affect the working attitude of the other employees. I hope everyone here can pacify the employees later so that they can carry out their jobs as usual. Even though the owner of Senna has changed, we still can't relax about what should be done and what needs to be done. The higher-ups looked at each other, and someone even stole a glance at Dane. However, they saw that Dane was like a cock that had lost in a cockfight. He had lost his spirit, vigor, and energy. He was sitting at one side like a puppet. The higher-ups sighed, and it was unknown who took the lead to call out, Yes, Mr. Lane. Yes, Mr. Lane. All of the higher-ups agreed at the same time. Jasper nodded and said, Dismiss. The higher-ups walked out one after another. Before leaving, they would subconsciously look at Jasper and Dane. One of them was full of metal like a new king who just ascended the throne. The other one had his head lowered in dejection after being kicked out of the position of power. After the higher-ups left, this earthquake that started from the core of Senna immediately spread throughout the office. After that, it spread to the outside world before finally shocking the entire nation. Inside the meeting room, Dane walked out the room dispiritedly. He knew he did not have a place in Senna anymore. Mr. Warren, wait, Jasper called out to stop Dane. When Dane heard Jasper changing the way he addressed him, he clenched his teeth and turned around to look at Jasper. He asked, are you going to humiliate me again? Jasper said unenthusiastically, I plan to invite you, Mr. Dane Warren to be the new general manager of Senna. 
I wonder if you're interested in this. Dane was startled after he heard that. He stared fixedly at Jasper, and his eyes were filled with doubt. Aren't you going to kick me out of Senna? Dane was not the only one with this question. Even Hudson was curious. He looked at Jasper curiously to know the reason. Jasper said flatly, I detest your moral character, Mr. Warren. But I have to admit that as the founder, you're responsible for getting Senna to the scale it is now and its achievements. Do you think I purchased Senna just to kick you out and vent my anger? That's too childish. You're beneficial to the company, so I'll consider keeping you. If you weren't, then I'd kick you out even if you're super close to me. Jasper said, and stood up to walk to Dane. He continued, Now, even though Senna's owner has changed, Senna is still Senna. I still hope that it will continue to develop under your leadership. Dane's body shook slightly. What happened today had too many twists and turns. Dane felt as if he was on a roller coaster, and his mood was fluctuating so rhythmically. When he was feeling fully content with his achievements, Jasper purchased Senna. When he was feeling mad and frustrated, Jasper gave him an opportunity. Dane even felt as if he was a puppet under Jasper's control that would do whatever Jasper wanted him to. I, Dane clenched his fists tightly and looked reluctantly at the meeting room as well as the bright and wide office. This was all his blood and sweat. I'll do it, Dane closed his eyes and said. Jasper smiled and reached out his hand to Dane. Dane reached out as well to hold Jasper's hand tightly. The two men looked into each other's eyes. Dane suppressed his anger and hatred, hiding them in the deepest part of his heart, leaving only conflicts behind. In ancient times, Queen Boudicca had suffered patiently but firmly resolved for revenge. Now, Dane Warren would be willing to bear the humiliation to save his skin for the time being in order to avenge himself in the future. Jasper patted Dane's shoulder and pretended that had not noticed anything. His smile looked tranquil and unhurried. Inside the chairman's office, of course, Dane would not be able to continue staying in this office anymore. After he packed his things, he went downstairs to find an empty office. He hung the plaque stating, General Manager, and went inside. On the other hand, Jasper and Hudson were having tea in the chairman's office. Dane truly knows how to enjoy himself, Jasper smiled and said while taking a sip of the superior green tea. Hudson looked admiringly at Dane's office with a floor area that was exaggeratedly large. There was a parlor, meeting room, and lounge inside his office. When he thought back to his simple and unpresentable office, he sighed. I wouldn't have known if I hadn't made a comparison. After comparing, Terry's own indeed can't compare to Senna. Jasper laughed and said, You don't have to undervalue yourself. Even though Terrazone's office is unpresentable, the feeling it gave me was much better than a bright and wide office. Hudson nodded and smiled. He said, I believe Terrazone will soon have an office that's much more extravagant than this one. You don't have to worry that I'll pay less attention to Terrazone because I have Senna now. Jasper laughed and said, It would be better for him to say something earlier. In the future, JW Consortium will keep Terrazone and Senna as two separate companies but the two of them will naturally be the closest allies. JW Consortium. This was the first time Hudson heard Jasper saying this. From here, he was able to know some of Jasper's ambitions. He wanted to turn JW Capital into a financial group that was built up of different companies. This was not an idea that a normal person would have. Hudson sucked in a deep breath. He decided that whether JW Consortium would be a reality or no matter what stage it would get to in the future, his Terry Zone must be the best among all of the other companies. After coming out of the office, Jasper lifted his gaze to see Dane. He was standing at the door, hesitating whether to knock or not. After their eyes met, Dane felt a little embarrassed. Is there anything I can help you with? Jasper asked. Dane said challengingly, I need to report on some business. Report. Dane had no idea when was the last time he reported something to someone. It could be years. After starting Senna, he was always the person with the highest power and the person who people reported to. Jasper nodded and allowed Dane into the office. He said, What's wrong? Dane quickly recomposed himself and said, My job scope in the office has changed, so who's going to be responsible for the work that's going to come in after this? What's the arrangement? Jasper said, Still you. Jasper looked at Dane who had a look of shock on his face and said enthusiastically, 
I'll arrange someone to be the Director General of Senna. When that happens, you just need to cooperate with him. Dane felt his heart tighten as he asked, May I know who that will be? Jack Tanner. Dane was proud and arrogant. He would not allow himself to surrender to Jasper. Jasper knew this from the start. In fact, Jasper had considered kicking Dane out of Senna before. However, this would cause a very intractable problem for Jasper. He did not have many people who could handle such a huge company like Senna. Senna was such a huge company, so he would need a professional and experienced team to operate this company. Jasper was not a god, so he would not be able to support Senna on his own. As such, keeping Dane was one of his stopgap measures. Besides, it would be impossible for Jasper to completely trust Dane. In his previous life, after Dane's Senna became a listed company, he had a huge conflict with the financiers because of his attitude. When they were at the most serious phase, he led his management team to threaten the financiers. He said if they did not fulfill his requirements, they would have a mass resignation. This attitude had angered the financiers completely, so they kicked Dane out of Senna. As the founder, Dane was fired by his own company. This was the first time it happened in the country and caused such a controversy. As such, Jasper understood that Dane was useful, but he could not give him too many responsibilities. Terry Zone was slowly progressing now, and with Hudson around, Terry Zone would be fine. As such, Jack could finally make some time. As for management, Jack's ability was enough to give Dane a crushing defeat. Jasper was reassured to transfer him to Senna. Dane was stumped for words after he heard Jack's name. He eventually nodded, and Jasper could not tell whether he was happy or angry. I'll tell Jack to brief you later about what's going to happen next. After hearing Jasper's statement that sounded like a dismissal, Dane turned around to leave. Mr. Lane, are you going to transfer Mr. Tanner to Senna? Hudson asked. Jasper nodded and said, Back then when I transferred Jack to Terry Zone, I told you he was there to help you manage the company as he could use his experience in Worsoft to help you guys build a management system. Now, Terry Zone is tentatively stabled, so you alone will be enough. Hudson sighed and said, Jack and I had so much fun working together and we're pretty close and private too. I'm a little reluctant for him to leave just like that. Jasper laughed and said, everyone is still under JW, so you'll still get a chance to meet in the future. Hudson smiled and nodded. After making the decision, Jasper called Jack and told him his intention to transfer him to Senna. Jack was stumped for words and it was evident that he was shocked. Then, he frowned and said, Mr. Lane, I'm not complaining to you, but I just don't think I'll be able to break new ground within a short period after going to Senna. Jasper smiled and said, Senna is filled with Dane's people. Even if he has been demoted to the general manager position, he's still a core member. A leader who just fell from the sky like you will definitely not get the respect of everyone. So, you have to give me some support, Mr. Lane, Jack said jokingly. I'll authorize you as the director general of Senna. You can go look for the core members you want. This way, you'll have power, and we'll see how long you need to take down Senna completely, Jasper said. Jack's eyes lit up. To be honest, he was longing for a platform where he could fully exhibit his ability. Even though he was happy when he was in Terry's zone, at the end of the day, his hands and feet were bound. It was different now that he would be transferred to Senna. Even though it would be tough because Jasper wanted him to break the ice and break new ground, this was a test and also an opportunity. All right, three months. You'll see results in three months. Jack said seriously. Jasper chuckled lightly and said, If you don't accomplish that when the time comes, you'll get smacked. After he hung up the phone, Jasper went downstairs with Hudson for lunch. However, his phone rang again. Jasper took a look and it was from Dawson. He quickly answered the call. Jasper, remember what I told you back then about Easy Media? You need to close the deal as soon as possible. I received news that someone with an extensive background has met up with the King brothers and they're planning to buy their company. After Jasper heard that, his face became solemn. He asked, an extensive background? Do you know who that is? Dawson said, I have no idea, but according to my friend, he's the son of one of the rich families in Capital City. If we don't get this right, it'll be troublesome for us. Jasper frowned and said, I'm in Capital City now. Give me the contact number, Uncle Schuler. I'll handle this as soon as I can. Dawson gave him an address before saying seriously, Jasper, 
I have more than 10 years of friendship with this friend of mine, so he's reliable. You can go to this place to find him. I don't think he'll lie to me. If the other party really comes from Swallow Capital Residence, then we'll just give up if we know we'll fail even if we give it a try. After all, there are still a lot of entertainment companies out there. If we can't buy this one, we can buy another. However, the people from the great institution are not easy to deal with, and they're very demanding as well. We don't have to cause trouble to ourselves. Jasper smiled and said after hearing that, Don't worry, Uncle Schuler. I'll go about things while sticking to the norms. Dawson laughed and said, I know, but you don't have to be weak. We're not fruitcakes that will allow people to do just anything to us. All right then, go and take care of your business now. After he hung up the phone, Jasper tapped the surface of the desk with his fingertips. He looked as if he was in deep thought. Even though Hudson did not know what was going on, from Jasper's face, he could tell he had come across a difficult problem. He became silent as well and did not disturb Jasper's train of thought. According to his memories of his previous life, on the surface, Easy Media always had the King brothers as the person in charge. However, Jasper had heard from some gossip forums that the King brothers came from an extensive background. Back then, he thought it was just a joke from the netizens. However, from the looks of it now, it might be true. No matter in which industry, Jasper knew that he would need to interact with people on a much higher level in the country if he had come to this stage. However, he did not expect this to happen this fast. However, the sky was gradually turning dark, and it was not convenient for him to go visit them now. As such, Jasper decided to only think about this tomorrow. The next morning, he came out from the hotel. Since Jack would be coming to Capital City today, Jasper arranged for Hudson to pick Jack up before familiarizing himself in Senna's office with Hudson. On the other hand, he would go to East Cotter Road. There, he found an office building in the most well-known central business district in Swallow Capital, Rosie Commercial Consultants. Jasper looked at the signboard and walked in. Hello, sir. Who are you looking for? The beautiful receptionist asked courteously. Jim Yap, Jasper said. The receptionist was staring blankly at him before quickly saying, Oh, you're here for Mr. Yap. Please wait. After she said that, she made a call. After a while, she gestured respectfully for Jasper to follow her. Jasper came to the door of an office after following the receptionist. Then, a portly middle-aged man walked out of the office. You're Dawson's son-in-law, Jasper, right? Jim laughed loudly and pulled Jasper into the office. Hello, Uncle Yap. Jasper smiled and asked. Jasper could tell that Dawson had a great relationship with Jim after Jim's first sentence to him. If not, he would not directly call him Dawson's son-in-law. It was obvious that these two had discussed this matter before. Jim looked at Jasper up and down before saying in satisfaction, Not bad. You're young and have outstanding talents. An excellent young man like you is not easy to find even in Swallow Capital. Jasper smiled and said, I just rely on my luck. I don't dare to look down on everyone on earth. Jim chortled and said candidly, People who don't belong together don't get to live together. You're just like Dawson when he was young. You're talented and yet so humble. The two of them chatted for a while before Jim said, Jasper, before this Dawson said you're planning to buy an entertainment company. I had asked everywhere about this matter. I think you know what happened in the end. Easy Media had every intention to sell but the bosses of this entertainment company are brothers. Back then, they did not have a united opinion, so they delayed this for some time. After this delay, trouble arose. Another rival has appeared, and he has such an extensive background. When Jasper heard this, he asked, Who is he? Jim chuckled and said, Swallow Capital is not the same as other cities. There are a lot of high-ranking officials and big shots here. According to my knowledge, the one who appeared this time belongs to the second-ranking family in Swallow Capital. Jasper frowned slightly. The second-ranking family in Swallow Capital. Even the wealthiest family in the province would not be able to compete with them if they were placed in the same room. Plus, their family should have a very deep connection to the people who did publicity. Otherwise, this young master from the later generation would not want to buy a media company. After all, his family already has the resources so it would have been easy for him to do this. Jim's face looked solemn as he said, So, Jasper, if you're very determined, we shall give it a try. 
If you think this is dispensable, I suggest that you give up. Jasper smiled and said, Uncle Yap, since I'm here, I don't plan to give up so easily even if the other party has a powerful background. When it comes to business, I can't stay away from it just because he has his eyes on it, right? There's no rule about this anyway. Jim nodded and said, All right, I understand. If that's the case, I'll pull some strings tonight to invite the King Brothers for dinner. What do you think? Jasper got up and smiled. Thank you for going to all these troubles for me, Uncle Yap. Jim smiled and patted Jasper's shoulder. He said, You're Dawson's son-in-law, so you're kind of like my nephew. Naturally, I'll help you if I'm able to. The two of them walked out of the office while chatting. When they got to the door of the company, Jasper wanted to bid farewell to Jim when he heard an ear-piercing voice. Jim Yap, people always say you'll get smarter as you age, but I think you're getting more stupid as you age. How dare you steal the business Mr. Coombe has his eyes on? Jasper and Jim looked over to see a middle-aged man in his thirties walking over to them with a cold smirk on his face. When Jim saw this man, his face fell. He smirked and replied, I contacted Easy Media first, and it's Mr. Coombe's business if he's interested in them too. Are you saying I can't even show an interest in them now? George, you're just a middleman. So why are you acting like a poser in front of me? George Powell scoffed and said, You're saying it like you're so goddamn noble. If I'm a middleman, aren't you one as well? The only difference between us is that I'm working for Mr. Coombe this time. And you? Hurry up and tell your guy to tuck his tail between his legs and scram. Mr. Coombe said if anyone dares to steal easy media from him, then it'll mean that they're deliberately embarrassing him. Jim had a horrible expression on his face, and he subconsciously peered at Jasper. There was restrained fear and anger in his eyes. George was pleased with Jim's gaze. He looked at Jasper and said in disbelief, Is this the person who wants to steal easy media from Mr. Coombe? He looks like an idiot who still needs his bottle. Ha ha ha. What a joke. Jasper looked at George with no expression on his face. He said dully, I had my eyes on it first, so if you're talking about stealing, I think your master, Mr. Coombe, is the one who's stealing from me. Plus, who do you think you are? Do you think you have the right to interrupt us? After Jasper said this, George was furious. On the contrary, Jim smiled and felt extremely pleased. He said in his heart, attaboy, he's not a coward at all. George glared at Jasper ferociously and said, before you came out, didn't your parents tell you to be more low profile outside so that you don't offend other people? Jasper answered unenthusiastically, the elders in my home did tell me to be humble and low profile outside. Plus, they also told me not to hold others in contempt so rashly. When George heard this, he thought Jasper was scared and lacking in confidence. Just as he was about to say something after smirking, he heard Jasper continue talking. But they only told me that I should be courteous to humans. If a dog keeps barking madly at me, I can just kick it away. George's words that were on the tip of his tongue were then stuffed back into his throat forcefully. In an instant, his face looked extremely dark. Even Jim was stumped for words. Then, he guffawed and felt extremely carefree. George was his rival, and even their companies were in the same building. There were a lot of enemies in the same industry, but one could know how horrible their relationship was just from the looks of it. Jim had contacted Easy Media, and this man in front of them named George was coming between them right now, while using Mr. Coombe to separate them. He was just using Mr. Coombe's power and influence to mock and ridicule Jim for the past few days. Today, Jim did not expect he would be able to vent his anger through Jasper. Jim's laughter caused George's face to become even darker. There was a hint of coldness in his eyes that were glaring at Jasper. You little idiot. Aren't you afraid that people will step on you for being so cocky and swallow capital? Jasper looked coldly at George and said flatly, Kindness is always returned tenfold. But if you dare to cross me, you'll get a tenfold return as well. How cocky. You're so young yet you're already such a gigantic poser. You should know that Swallow Capital is not as simple as you think it is. There are people you can't afford to offend. If you get stepped on, you can only lie on the ground and beg for mercy. George smirked and his eyes were cold. Of course, there are a lot of people who'll step on me in Swallow Capital, but I can guarantee that you're not on the list. You're just a hired thug who barely wormed into their circle. Jasper shrugged. 
and there was an insipid look on his face. He was not even concerned about George at all. This kind of person was just a hired thug. His next meal depended on his boss mood. No one could insult Jasper even if he was in Swallow Capital. Plus, he could not mess up the purchase of Easy Media because of someone like George. Naturally, Jasper would not show him respect. W, who are you calling a hired thug? George felt a fire of rage surging from his stomach and it was heading straight to his head. He had been mingling in Swallow Capital for so many years, and aside from those members of the aristocratic families who came from the residence, he had never seen such an arrogant person before. Plus, he had asked around about the buyer who contacted Jim and knew he was not from Swallow Capital. In addition to that, he was definitely not someone from the residence. As such, George had no comebacks after Jasper kept calling him out. He felt as if he had been slapped a few times across the face and was in fiery pain. You little idiot. I'll teach you that you can't be too arrogant and swallow capital. After a cold chuckle from George, he turned around and yelled at the outside of the building. After a while, the door of a van outside opened and five to six burly men walked out. They all made their way over. Little idiot. It just so happened that I went out to settle some business and brought my men out for a meal. It's your unlucky day, George laughed nastily and said savagely. When Jim saw this, he frowned and barked at George. Hey, Powell, what are you trying to do? There are security cameras in the building and you're trying to attack us here? Are you insane? After a scoff, George said coldly, Shut up. You best F asterisk CK off. Let me tell you. Mr. Coombe has got my back, and if you spew more bullsh asterisk T, then I'll F asterisk CK you up too. Jim's expression was gloomy. He said to Jasper in a deep voice, Jasper, run back into the building. Run to my office and lock the door. Don't open the door if it's not me. I'll handle them. I've been in Swallow Capital for so many years. He won't dare to do anything to me. When Jasper saw that Jim was still helping him so sincerely at this critical moment, he felt slightly touched. He said, Uncle Yap, don't worry. They won't do anything to me. After Jim heard that, he said angrily, he won't do anything, do you? George is not a good person. He went to jail when he was young because he fought with someone. Plus, he has Mr. Coombe's support now. You're young, so don't get so hot-blooded and impulsive. It's not embarrassing to admit defeat at this moment. You don't need to suffer this. Jasper shook his head and walked in front of Jim. Now, he was protecting him. Julian! Jasper called out. Julian had been repressing it for a few days now, feeling pins and needles all over his body. He could not hold it in anymore. He stepped out, looking at George and his gang coldly. There were five beefy fighters next to George, so the man was extremely confident. When he saw what Jasper was doing, he could not help but burst out laughing. Idiot! You only have one person, and you dare to F asterisk king fight with me? Men, kill that kid. I want to step on his face, and ask if he still has the guts to be so arrogant. After George said that, the five men walked over with malevolent looks on their faces. Julian looked at Jasper. He was asking Jasper whether he should cripple these people. Of course, Jasper did not want to get into trouble with the law because of these thugs. He said flatly, go easy on them. Just teach them a lesson. Julian sighed in disappointment. He turned around and cracked his neck. Cracking sounds that sounded like beans getting stir-fried in a hot pan were heard from his body. With a low growl, he charged at the five of them like a wild beast out of its cage. It was evident that he was not afraid of the other party having more numbers than him. Those five fighters were dazed. These people always depended on their numbers when they fought and their opponents would admit defeat even before the fight started. They had never seen the other party charging at them with such vigor even when there was only one of them. Damn it, go. Cripple him. George roared nervously. At that moment, the two parties were tangled in a fight. Jim, who was being protected by Jasper, was extremely anxious. He did not expect Jasper to be so impulsive. He felt that something bad was going to happen tonight. If Jasper was beaten up by George at this place, then how would he be able to face his best friend Dawson? When he thought about this, Jim gritted his teeth and turned around to run to the lobby of the building. He opened the fire cabinet and took out an axe. He decided that he would not let anything happen to Jasper. However, when he was walking over with the axe, 
he saw George's men lying on the ground. They were wailing and begging for mercy. Jim was holding the axe after having made the decision of burning their boats, but now, he was staring blankly ahead. This turn of events, why was it different from how he imagined it would be? Jasper saw the axe in Jim's hand and felt touched. He burst out laughing and said, Uncle Yap, Julian is my bodyguard. He knows how to fight. He's great. At that moment, Jim did not know what to say. Aside from Jim, George felt as if he was watching a movie. How would a normal person in real life defeat five people at the same time? At this moment, Julian walked over to him. George was so scared that his entire body was shaking. Julian's emotionless eyes caused him to feel chills down his back. Get away from me. Don't come any closer. George yelled before turning around to run away. However, the moment he turned around, he felt the back of his neck tightening. Then, he felt as if he was flying when Julian grabbed his neck and reverse slammed him in front of Jasper. With a loud thud, he fell flat on his face. Jim's face twitched. He was feeling pain for George as well. George felt as if his organs had shifted out of place. His stomach was churning, and he felt horrible. He tried hard to get up, but his entire body was limp and powerless. He lifted his head with all his might, but could only see Jasper's leather shoes. Jasper took a step forward and squatted. He bent over to look at George, patting his face. You had a lot of fun calling me little idiot, huh? George gritted his teeth tightly, but at this moment, even if he was resolute, he did not dare to speak anymore. You kept saying that the stakes are high in Swallow Capital. Were you having fun acting like a poser? George was gasping for air while enduring the pain in his chest and stomach. He opened his mouth challengingly and said, just kill me or hack me into pieces if you dare. How stubborn. Jasper smiled, and his eyes went cold instantly. You're just a thug of the lowest level in Swallow Capital Society, so why are you acting like Akili in front of me? Akili was a dialect and slang in Swallow Capital, meaning an old fox or a person unfit for society. Jasper lifted his hand to grab George's cheek and forced his head up to look into his eyes. Jasper said insipidly, Yes. The stakes are high in Swallow Capital, but it has nothing to do with people like you. Don't think that just because you've been in Swallow Capital for a few years that you're a big shot here. George was shaking all over. He did not know whether he was trembling because of anger or pain. He felt that Jasper's statement had crushed his dignity into pieces before slamming them on the floor to get stomped on. George wanted so badly to have a dagger in his hand so that he could kill Jasper for making him feel this way. Mr. Lane, let me remove one of his arms. Julian had been pissed with George's arrogance for a very long time. When he saw that he was still looking at Jasper sinisterly with hatred on his face, he could not help but propose. In Julian's heart, Jasper was his savior, someone he respected the most in his world. He would not allow anyone to insult Jasper. He owed his life to Jasper, and he was not just saying that. If they were in a life and death situation one day, he would be willing to take a bullet for Jasper. When George heard this, the scenes of Julian fighting his five fighters until they were battered and bruised as if he was the god of war flashed across his brain. Then, he saw Julian walking over to him with eyes that were so icy they looked like they could kill. George was petrified. He had been in jail before and knew that some people really had the guts to kill. Plus, now Julian was saying that he would cripple one of George's arms. George did not doubt that if Jasper nodded, Julian would really do it. His intense fear washed away all of his hatred. His eyes were now filled with terror as they shook. No, no. I was wrong. I was so wrong. George completely became a coward. Sir, my good sir, please don't let him cripple me. There are security cameras all around the place. A big shot like you shouldn't have to get into trouble with the law because of a minor character like me, right? When George saw Jasper's calm and unchanged expression on his face, he quickly yelled at Jim, Mr. Yap, please stop him. Don't make this into something big. Jim wanted so badly to spit on George's face right now. He had seen a lot of shameless people before, but he had never seen anyone as shameless as George. However, George was right. If Julian really did something to George, then Jasper would get into trouble because they were not at the feet of the emperor. Jasper. Don't act rashly, Jim said softly. 
Jasper chuckled lightly. He had not planned to do anything to George from the start. The difference between an adult and a child was that one of them knew how to weigh the pros and cons. They would not be blinded by momentary emotions. If he crippled George, he would feel great. However, what was going to happen next? He would not be able to escape the consequences of his crimes. It would be such a tremendous loss if he caused Julian to get convicted because of a minor character like George. However, Jasper did not mind scaring him a little. Tell me, who's that Mr. Coombe who's behind your back? Jasper asked coldly. George did not dare to hide anymore. He spilled everything as if he was spilling a bag of beans. Mr. Coombe is the second son of the Coombe family. He just came back from studying overseas. Since most of the big shots from the Coombe family are involved in public relations and Mr. Coombe has a celebrity girlfriend, he plans to get into the media industry. Mr. Coombe contacted me through someone and asked me to look for a media company for him. Coincidentally, I was watching Jim during that time and knew he was looking for a media company too. As such, I contacted Easy Media following his clues. In the end, Mr. Coombe was satisfied and that's how this happened. Jasper's eyes looked cold. He stood up and said to Jim, Uncle Yap, I think this is more complicated than we thought. Jim looked coldly at George who was on the floor and said, I didn't think that everything started because this B asterisk starred was coming between us. I was wondering why it was such a coincidence that Mr. Coombe got the news the moment I contacted Easy Media. Jasper peered at George who was lying on the ground and did not make a peep. He said flatly, get lost. After George heard that, it was as if he had received the greatest pardon in the world. He scrambled to get up from the floor before limping away. On the other hand, the other five fighters helped each other up from the ground before running away too. Julian looked at the figures of the people who were running away. There was a hint of regret in his eyes. He was still reminiscing this fondly because he did not have enough. At a distance, George went into the car and slammed the door heavily. His racing heart finally calmed down. After the fear went away, the bone-deep hatred started surging from within. He turned his head and glared at Jasper, who was at a distance away with rancor in his eyes. He despised him so much that he almost crushed his own teeth. Be asterisk starred. I've been mingling in Swallow Capital for so many years, and I've never suffered such a huge loss before. I was even beaten up by an animal. At this moment, the bruised and battered fighters all got into the car as well. They were all looking at George with resentment. What are we doing to do now, boss? One of the fighters asked with his fangs bearing. When he opened his mouth, it had tugged the wound on the corner of his mouth. He sucked in a deep breath from the pain. Even though George wanted so badly to slap each and every one of them and call all of them good for, nothing's for embarrassing him. He knew he could not do that. Otherwise, his popularity among them would disappear, and if that happened, who would still want to work with him? George controlled his bad mood and took out a briefcase from the compartment of the armrest. He then took out wads of cash for them. This is for your medical expenses. You guys should recuperate for the time being. The fighter who was talking before took the cash happily. When he was holding the cold, hard cash in his hands, the wounds on his body did not feel so painful anymore. Even though they had gotten the money for their medical expenses, they were still pissed. After all, they were beaten up and lost their dignity as well. Boss, we can't just let this go. George laughed sinisterly. Of course. I'm going to see Mr. Coombe now, and I'll add more details to the story. I want to see if that little idiot can still jump around so arrogantly after this. We're working for Mr. Coombe now, and he'll definitely step in regarding this matter. I want to see how he'll continue being so arrogant then. Jasper and Jim bade farewell downstairs of the building. Uncle Yap, I still have something I need to take care of. I'll go handle it now, Jasper said with a smile. Jim nodded and said, All right, go on then. I'll make an appointment with the King brothers later to see if we can get them to have dinner with us tonight. Jasper said, All right, I'll wait for your update. Looking at Jasper and Julian's figures, Jim felt deeply moved. He took out his phone to call Dawson. Dawson, you've got yourself a piece of treasure. Your son-in-law is really something else. After Jasper bade farewell to Jim, he went back to Senna immediately. Coincidentally, he spotted Hudson and Jack walking out after finishing a meeting. When he saw their glum faces, he knew something was wrong. What's wrong? Jasper asked. 
The people in Sinna all have different minds. Some of them are willing to side with us, while the others are gearing more toward Dane. Now, there are two sides, Jack said with a complicated look on his face. It's simple. Punish one of them as an example to others. If it doesn't work, tell them to get lost. Jasper made a straightforward decision and smiled at Jack. He said, we just got here, and we can't keep pandering to them. I didn't give you this power for no good reason. You should use it whenever. You see fit. Remember, we can't be overly cautious when we're doing things. Especially you. You promised to manage Senna properly for me. I'm waiting to see the results. Roger. Jack nodded. He could not help but feel impressed with Jasper's decisiveness. The biggest taboo of a company was to have big changes. If they did not execute it perfectly, it would affect the company greatly and cause them huge losses. Hudson was standing at one side where he was looking at Jasper with admiration too. He felt that the tactics of this 20-something young man were so scary sometimes. However, he had to admit that Jasper had a huge plan in mind. While the three of them were talking, Jasper's phone rang. It was from Jim. Jasper quickly answered the call. Uncle Yap, are there any updates from Easy Media? Jim answered. I just contacted them, but we can only talk to them face to face depending on the situation. It seems that they don't really want to talk to us. What do you think? Jasper narrowed his eyes and said, Uncle Yap, why do you think they don't want to talk to us? Jim said without hesitating. Perhaps something is going on or perhaps they have another arrangement. Wait, are you saying that they might be in contact with Mr. Coombe? Jasper said unenthusiastically, Yeah, the Combs were already planning to come between us anyway. Plus, George, the man who showed up today, is not a good person. He might have talked bad about us after we left. Or perhaps, the Combs are the local influencers of Swallow Capital. If we and the Combs both want to buy their company at the same time, who do you think they'll decline? Jim was breathing urgently now. He said in a low voice, it's going to be very troublesome if that's the case. At this moment, Jasper was the one who was comforting Jim instead. He laughed and said, Uncle Yap, don't worry. As long as there isn't a deal, we still have a chance. Jim said in a low voice, The King brothers are bad cookies too. I'm afraid they might raise the price in this situation. You get business from a discussion. If one raises their price, the other will make a bargain by slicing it down the middle. It's not something unusual. Jim chortled and said, Jasper, I can't view you as a young man in his twenties sometimes. You act more like someone around Dawson and my age. You're too calm and unflustered. Because I know getting angry and anxious won't help with our case now. After chatting for a while, Jasper hung up the phone. Jasper rubbed the bridge of his nose. It did not matter if the King brothers were talking with Mr. Coombe tonight or what they had already talked about. Jasper could not do anything about it now. Jasper lifted his head to look at the two men in front of him. He was troubled when he thought about the matter with easy media. He said, Hudson Jack, you guys continue talking. I'll go back to the hotel to rest. All right, we'll settle this as soon as we can. After Jasper went back to the hotel, he took a shower and felt much more refreshed. He sat in the hotel alone to think about the purchase. Jasper did not have many ideas about the purchase of Easy Media for now. Jasper had no idea what their biggest competitor, Mr. Coombe, was planning to do as well. As such, he needed to prepare and think about a lot of things. Easy Media was definitely the most reputable entertainment company. If they could buy it, it would be very helpful to the entertainment group section of Jasper's plan. This was why Jasper had never considered buying another company. Although the current Easy Media was far less powerful than in his previous life before he was reborn, it already had a rudimentary form and held a lot of contracts with celebrities who would be popular in the next two years. This alone was a huge hidden wealth. If he considered another company, Jasper would need to spend 10 times or even 100 times more effort and capital in order to achieve what Easy Media had now. Therefore, Jasper had made plans. If Easy Media was really not available, he would directly expand Advent Entertainment Group in Harbor City and use Harbor City as a springboard to directly enter the market in mainland. However, he still needed to think and carefully weigh his decision regarding this. Otherwise, if he made a mistake, he would lose everything. The core business district was near Workers Stadium in Swallow Capital. It had always been a paradise for the hedonistic sons of Swallow Capital's rich families to eat, 
drink, and have fun. There was a small shop where one could drink for 100 summer dollars, and there was also a high-end club with bottles of wine selling for 100,000 summer dollars each. Here, the luxury cars and beautiful women were the most indispensable, as well as sons from rich families. In a high-end clubhouse without a sign, a group of men and women were huddled together. They were chatting in the innermost private room. After the door of the private room was pushed open, a sturdy and impressive-looking young man in a white suit walked in. He looked very handsome. The only flaw was his hooked nose that destroyed his face with a sunny disposition, making him look sinister and vicious. Mr. Coombe. Mr. Coombe. The moment he came in, everyone in the room greeted him respectfully. Hector Coombe nodded and took out a cigarette to dangle it between his lips. A nearby young man quickly took out his lighter to light up the cigarette for him. Mr. Coombe, that middleman named George has been waiting for you for quite some time now. He said he has something important to tell you. Hector lifted his eyebrow and said nonchalantly, I asked him to do something and he's taking his sweet time, yet he's always running to me to take the credit for other people's achievements. Let him come in. After a while, George walked in from outside. He needed to nod, bend down, and smile whenever he saw someone. When George saw Hector, he bent down and walked at a faster pace. He got in front of Hector and called out respectfully, Hello, Mr. Coombe. Hector glanced at George and said, You have a wound on your face. Did you get into a fight? George's sadness came pouring out of him as he said with a bitter expression, Mr. Coombe, you have to stand up for me. Hector said in annoyance, What do I have to do with you getting beaten up? What do you mean by standing up for you? George said, You have no idea. I ran into Jim Yap today, and coincidentally, the person who entrusted Jim to steal easy media from you was there too. He's a young man who looks like he's in his 20s. He even had a bodyguard with him. He was insufferably arrogant like he was above the law and natural morality. George tried to make himself look pitiful and kept adding in details as he said, I ran into them so I planned to scout out some information. However, after a while, that person named Jasper Lane started yelling at me. I said I'm working for Mr. Coombe, but I guess it would have been better if I didn't tell him because after I said your name, Jasper became even more arrogant. He said you should go talk to him yourself if you have the balls. He said you have such an exaggerated opinion of your ability for fighting over easy media with him. George carefully glanced at Hector's face and realized that the man was without an expression. As such, he continued, How would I be able to endure listening to that? So, I fought back, but before I could even say anything, he asked his bodyguard to hit me until I became like this. After telling the story with some additional details, George tried hard to make himself appear as a poor man who got beaten up just because he stood up for Hector. After he said that, Hector laughed. He leaned against the sofa, and his fingers were fiddling with the cigarette. He said to George, Are you done? George nodded and answered vigilantly, I'm done. Hector then violently slapped George across the face and roared, You're AF asterisk king piece of trash. His sudden roar that came without a warning sign shocked everyone in the room. Everyone turned around to look at them bewilderedly. Then, they looked at George who was holding his face with pain and grievance with pity in their eyes. They shook their heads at the same time. Mr. Coombe was hot-tempered and arrogant. This was not the first time he hit someone without any warning signs. You said you're working for me, and those people named Jasper and Jim hit you. It means they're indirectly slapping me across the face. And you just came back after getting F asterisk King beaten up? How do you even have the guts to come back? Hector grabbed George's collar with sinister eyes. Don't you know how to get a few people to kill him? George trembled as he looked into Hector's icy gaze. He said with a shaky voice, Mr. Coombe, I was wrong. You good for nothing. Hector pushed George away, and his eyes were twinkling with an icy glint. Jasper Lane? I've never heard about this rap before and he dares to fight over this with me? How ballsy. After he said that, Hector took out his phone to make a call with a gloomy look on his face. After a while, the call went through. Mr. Coombe, is there anything I can help you with? Jim's neither obsequious nor supercilious voice sounded from the other end. Hector smiled sinisterly and said coldly, I don't care who you or that son of Ebby asterisk T Jasper are, but if you want to fight against me and swallow capital, you need to know your place. 
Today, I'm having dinner with Easy Media. Don't you guys want to buy Easy Media as well? All right, don't say that I'm not giving that son of A B asterisk T a chance. Ask him to show up if he has the guts. In Swallow Capital, nobody dares to fight me for what I want. Tell that son of A B asterisk T C H what I said. If he has the balls to show up tonight, I'll respect him for being an honorable man before I kill him. If he doesn't have the guts to do so, then I'll kill him directly. On the other end of the phone, Jim had a complicated look on his face after he hung up. How would he not know that this was a banquet set up to attack a guest? However, this was the chance for them to meet the King brothers. He had to tell Jasper no matter if he was going or not. As such, he immediately called Jasper and told him about Mr. Coombs' phone call. Jasper, this is a trap? While listening to Jim talking on the phone, Jasper stood in his hotel room while facing the bustling night view of Swallow Capital. His face looked as calm as water. I'll go. Jasper only said these two words. Jim's words were all stuck in his throat after Jasper's two words. He could not speak after a very long time. Jasper, have you thought about this? This is a dinner with a dangerous agenda, not an ordinary dinner. It's obvious that Hector wants to do something bad to you tonight. I'm afraid it's going to be troublesome. Don't be impulsive because you're being blinded by anger. Jim was still trying to talk him out of this. Jasper said flatly, Uncle Yap, I'm not going because of my so-called dignity, but if we don't go tonight because of this, the King brothers might think we've given up. Hector would then be able to get easy media without lifting a finger. Jim heard that and sighed. He said, Jasper, to be honest, I suggest that you look for another company. You won't be able to buy easy media so easily. Hector is not that easily defeated. Jasper chuckled and said, Uncle Yap, give me the address. I'll go alone. Jim said angrily after he heard that, What are you talking about? Do you think I'm afraid of death? Uncle Yap, this is my business. I don't need to involve you in this for no good reason, Jasper said. Jim said in a deep voice, Enough. I've already been involved right from the start. How will I be able to face other people if I run away the moment we're faced with danger? Wait for me at the hotel. I'll drive over and pick you up. After Jim said that, he hung up the phone. Half an hour later, Jasper got into Jim's Audi. After getting into this high-end Audi, Jasper laughed and said, Uncle Yap, I guess you made quite a lot of money these few years. Are you mocking me? Jim glared unhappily at Jasper and said, Compared to you and Dawson, what my consultant agency makes is just pocket money to you too. Jasper smiled and said, We're making money, but Uncle Yap, you're making connections. You may not be able to do a lot of things with money, but it's easy with connections. Jim smiled and said, Do you know about consultant agencies? Jasper said after shrugging, I know a little bit. The two chatted, and after about an hour, they arrived at the place where Hector and the King brothers had arranged to have dinner together. The Prince Mansion? This place was not a star-rated hotel, nor a well-known restaurant, but a private guild with the characteristics of Swallow Capital. Looking at the tall vermilion gate in front of him and the large stone lions sitting on both sides of the door, for the first time ever, Jasper felt the difference between the life of the upper class in Swallow Capital and other cities. If one were to say that the gentries in Harbor City were mostly known for indulging in a life of modern luxury, then at Swallow Capital, there was a solid foundation here. At least, modern metropolises such as Harbor City and Waterhoof City certainly did not have places like Prince Mansion. At the end of the 16th century, this was the old house of a Scandinavian prince. Hagen was his last name. It was originally a tourist attraction, but was later bought by a businessman with an extensive background to build a private guild. Jim was very familiar with this place, and his tone sounded inexplicably complicated. In Swallow Capital, it's not uncommon to be able to go to a hotel to eat a meal worth tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. However, it's true power when one can enter such a place. The chef here worked in the kitchen of a palace before, and he's not open to the public. Only naturalized members can come in. The annual fee for a membership card in this place is one million summer dollars, and yet it's still an ordinary card of the lowest level. Jasper asked, Do you fit the requirements to be a member here? Jim quickly chuckled and said, You think too highly of me. How would I fit the requirements? If you want to join as a member in this place, one million is just a base fee. 
The most important thing is that you need to have an invitation from a member who's in the middle level or above before you can enter. With your father-in-law's assets, he only can barely join as the lowest ranking member if he's not in another city but in Swallow Capital. You have to know that if you're in another city and you have a billion summer dollars worth of assets, it's a different concept from if you're in Swallow Capital. A billionaire in Swallow Capital has resources and connections that people in other cities can't match. Jasper understood. In his previous life, there were a lot of rumors about the various clubs and clubhouses for the rich and powerful among the upper class in the country. For example, there was Club Tarzan in the business circle. Wayne, Hudson, and Warwick's chairman at that time were all members. Club Gelb was another supercilious club. Most of their members were from Swallow Capital residents. It could be said that it was where the bigwigs gathered. Jasper remembered that Henry was a top diamond member in Club Gelb and held a very high rank. After they stepped into the door, the place was decorated like a classic courtyard of a mansion in Swallow Capital. A staff member came up to them to politely ask if they had a reservation or a member card. Jim mentioned Hector's name and said they were invited here. The staff then led the two of them into the inner courtyard. The winding corridor was circuitous, leading them to a secluded and quiet place. Aside from Prince Mansion's historical and cultural value, its floor area in the main district of Swallow Capital was enough to give it an astronomical price. If one could make this place a private guild, then one could only imagine how powerful the boss behind it was. Jasper and Jim pushed the door open and walked in after they were brought to a small, separated courtyard. The courtyard was deep. In this extravagant courtyard, the scenery was refined, and there was also meticulously decorated greenery. Under the sky roof in the middle, there was an interesting and appealing round table. Hector was sitting in the main seat, and on his left, there were two middle-aged men in their forties who looked kind of similar. On his right, it was George whom they had met before. He was carefully sitting on the stool with just half of his buttocks as he laughed along with Hector. Jasper's eyes scanned past the King brothers and George before finally landing on Hector. On the other hand, Hector was also looking at him up and down. When George saw Jasper, his eyes went red. He suppressed his anger and hatred to say to Hector, Mr. Coombe, that's Jasper. Hector glared coldly at George and said, I'm not blind. George nodded and bowed to agree with him. Then, he turned around to look at Jasper with rancor in his eyes. George laughed malevolently and said to Jasper, I thought you wouldn't have the balls to come. Not bad, you're pretty ballsy. Jasper said calmly, I'm doing legal business in the capital and didn't do anything to violate the law. So why would I be afraid to go anywhere? Jasper peered at Hector who was sitting at one side. He knew he was the young master of the combs. He chuckled lightly at George, saying, I said that you're a hired thug and you didn't admit it. From the looks of it now, you have no choice but to admit it. You. George's face was flushed red, but he did not dare to do anything impulsive. He quickly turned around to look at Hector. Mr. Coombe, it's this guy. Not only is he disregarding you, but he even wants to steal easy media from you. After he said that, George looked at Jasper with a pleased look on his face because he knew that after this, Hector might crush Jasper under his foot. What did it matter if Jasper had the strength? Mr. Coombe was the local young master of Swallow Capital. He could crush Jasper under his foot at any minute. After Hector heard this, he scoffed. He looked at Jasper and said, Since you know he's my hired thug, then you should also know you need to see who the dog's owner is before you hit it. I don't care that. You beat George up, but you still dared to beat him up even after he said my name. That means you're disrespecting me. Hector picked up a wet tissue to wipe his hands. His eyes looked sinister as he said gloomily, and anyone who disrespects me in Swallow Capital will pay a terrible price. Hector's arrogance and audacious character caused Jim and the King brothers who were silent the entire time to have subtle changes in their expressions. Jasper was the only one looking nonchalant. Of course, I won't bite back at a mad dog that wants to bite me. Instead, I'll kick a few of its teeth away. As for how the owner feels, you're the one who didn't tie him up properly so I just kicked him. F asterisk King Bullsh asterisk T. George was livid. He stood up suddenly and pointed at Jasper before roaring, Who do you think you are? You keep repeating the word mad dog. Who are you calling a mad dog? The one with the biggest reaction, 
Jasper said insipidly. George felt his breathing become hitched as he stared fixedly at Jasper. He chuckled coldly and said, You're still so arrogant now that you're here. You're really heedless of consequences. Do you know where this is? Do you know that people like you will never be able to eat here if it isn't for Mr. Coombe? Do you know how big of a disparity you have with Mr. Coombe? You're just a person with limited vision. Don't think you're at the top of the world just because you have some coins. There are more people better than you in this world. There are no disadvantages to going. Out to see the world to gain more experience. George had a pleased look on his malevolent face. He displayed a look as if he was towering above everyone while he looked askance at Jasper. Mr. Coombe was right. You're just an idiot. Mr. Coombe is the one who's so generous in giving you a chance to see him. If it were up to me, I'd just crush you to death with a flick of my wrist. Do you even think you're worthy of speaking to Mr. Coombe? Hector had a satisfied look on his face while he listened to what George said. Why did he need a hired thug like George? It was to speak on behalf of him when he was in situations where he was unable to. It was obvious that he felt amazing after George kept sucking up to him. Jasper sighed and said, It's rare to see someone feeling so superior as a dog. George was pleased, but in the next second, his expression froze. The changes in his expression looked very interesting. You little be asterisk starred. What did you say? George's face looked so malevolent it was scary. He wanted so badly to swallow Jasper whole. Did you not hear Jasper calling you a dog? Jim smirked and said, As someone in the same industry as you, this is the first time you're making me feel so f asterisk king embarrassed to be in this industry. Look at your spineless self. You want so badly to lie on the floor and lick Hector's shoes clean, right? What Jim said almost caused George's lungs to explode from anger. He looked at Jim with bitter resentment and roared wildly, What are you so pleased about? Is it your turn to speak? Enough, Hector said insipidly. He looked at Jasper and Jim with an astonished look in his eyes. He said, Don't ask for a mile when we've already given you an inch. This is swallow capital, do you understand? Um, Mr. Coombe, Mr. Lane, since we're here to talk business, why don't we get into the topic? One of the King brothers, Leo King, said awkwardly to help to resolve the dispute. To be honest, he really did not want to get between them. At this moment, he was secretly feeling remorseful for waiting for a better offer. If they knew Hector would be so demanding, then they should have just immediately sold it. For now, it would be very difficult for him to get away from this situation. He could not afford to offend Hector, and he did not want to know who Jasper was anymore because from what he could see right now, Jasper was definitely not Hector's rival. That was why he did not even consider getting in contact with Jasper. He even made the decision that if Hector did not cut the price down too low, he would just sell the company. Leo was thinking this while bracing himself as he saw that the two of them were already in a state of mutual hostility. It was none of his business if these two fought to their deaths, but since he was here, he would be undoubtedly involved in it too. Leo could not afford to provoke these men. Hector laughed at Leo's statement and said, Right, we don't want word about this to go out and have people call me petty for not allowing someone to eat. After he said that, Hector waved his hand. Serve the food. The servers quickly brought out all kinds of food. They all smelled, looked, and tasted great. It would be difficult for them to find such food elsewhere. However, no one at the table had the appetite to eat. Hector said, I'm determined to get easy media so please, Mr. Kings, give me a good price. Leo and his brother, Noah King, looked at each other. They had already thought of a price on their way here. 500 million. To be honest, the maximum market price for easy media right now was approximately 400 million. By asking for 500 million, they were giving themselves a huge leeway. However, Hector frowned and was dissatisfied to hear the price. He expected to take down Easy Media with 200 million. Even though he was one of the members of the residence and his family was pretty powerful, when it came to money, he did not have that much. His family would only be able to handle 200 million. However, Hector did not care. He was clear that the King brothers were not idiots. As long as he said something, they had to sell, and even if they did not want to, they would have to sell it to him all the same. Deal. When Hector was about to say something, Jasper's one word shocked everyone at the table. 
His clear and sonorous voice was filled with unquestionable certainty. Everyone looked over, their eyes all on Jasper. Jasper looked calm and was even in the mood to enjoy some duck breast. Yes, the food cooked by a chef who previously worked in a palace was indeed amazing. At this moment, Leo, who just proposed the price, saw Hector's face getting darker and darker. He looked as if he was going to explode at any second, and at the same time, he looked as if he was going to start crying internally as well. Damn it, my asking price is obviously fake. Jasper, do you have too much money that it's starting to burn a hole in your pocket? Jasper was willing to spend 500 million to buy Easy Media, and of course, Leo did not have any opinions about that. However, Hector was still here, and if he were to reach a deal with Jasper, this would not be a matter of 500 million. Mr. Lane I. Jasper immediately interrupted Leo and said with a raised eyebrow, Didn't you just say 500 million, Mr. King? I think this price is very reasonable, so I can make a deal with you right now. We can sign the contract now, and I can transfer the money to you immediately. To be honest, this was the most straightforward business transaction Leo had done in his 40 years of living. If Hector was not sitting here, he wanted so badly to hug Jasper and kiss him a few times. However, he only wanted to stand up and run away now. He did not dare to offend Hector. With a loud slam, Hector slammed his fork on the table and looked at Jasper with dark eyes. He said frigidly, Lane, are you sure you want to fight me over this? After slowly taking a sip of the lobster bisque, Jasper did not even raise his head before saying insipidly, Since we're doing business, of course, there will be buying and selling. Mr. King proposed a price, and I'm willing to pay it. What's the problem with that? Mr. Coombe, if you're not happy, you can compete with me. Just name your price. After he said that, Jasper smiled and turned around to look at Jim who was feeling excited. Uncle Yap, the lobster bisque tastes pretty good. It's thick and creamy, but not greasy. Do you want some? Jim looked seriously at Jasper. He felt like he could not see through this young man anymore. He was unflustered, and there was an air of arrogance emitting from his ordinary, modest self. Compared to a hedonistic son of rich parents like Hector, Jasper was ranked much higher. In comparison to Jasper, he was scared of Hector's background, and thus was fearful in everything he did when faced with the man. He did not dare to fight the world when he was impoverished anymore. Jim guffawed boldly and picked up the bowl. He laughed and said, All right, let me try the food from this chef who has worked in a palace before. Jim said as he took some bisque for himself. However, at this moment, Hector, who had been ignored and suppressed this whole time, could not stand it anymore. He stood up suddenly and lifted his hand to turn the table over. With a loud whoosh, Everything on the table was scattered to the floor. The bisque and sauces were all over the place, and the scene was a mess. Hector stood at the side of the table that had been pushed over and said sinisterly, If you don't give me an easy time, then none of you will have an easy time too. Do you really think you can take down easy media just because you have money? While he said that, Hector looked gloomily at the King brothers who were petrified. He pointed at Jasper and said, You too. Think properly. Are you sure you want to sell him the company? Leo and Noah looked at each other as beads of cold sweat started to pour down their faces. Mr. Coombe, um, Mr. Lane is too straightforward and we didn't think. Stop bullsh asterisk ting. Hector interrupted the brothers roughly. He turned around to look at Jasper and said frigidly, Jasper, I'll say this now. If you insist on fighting me, then it means you're determined to fight with me until death. Jasper stood up too. He said indifferently, Mr. Coombe, it's no use depending on the status of the elders in your family to buy something. It's either you take out the money or you leave. I'm taking out 500 million. What about you? Jim almost burst out laughing after he heard Jasper saying this. Even though Hector had a powerful background, Jim felt extremely pleased right now when he saw Jasper pressuring Hector with his large amount of capital. Hector was on the brink of exploding from anger but could not say anything. Hector was indeed stronger than Jasper in terms of background and resources. However, if they were going to compete in terms of money, he was not Jasper's rival at all. When Jasper was reborn, the market price for Easy Media was $11.5 billion. As such, this price right now was very low. Since Jasper had $7 billion in cash right now, 
He did not care whether Easy Media was selling for 500 million or 6 billion. Hector glared at the King brothers. Indeed, those two brothers were still mortified. However, they seemed to be siding with Jasper from the look in their eyes. After all, Hector had disclosed the price before, and he said he would only be able to pay 200 million at most. There was a 300 million price difference now. This was such a big difference that was enough for the King brothers to resist their fear against Hector's power. They could take the money and bail. Even if Hector is all that, will he follow us out of the country? Leo and Noah looked at each other at the same time with the same idea in their hearts. Money has been able to move someone since ancient times. This was what it meant. You may have the riches, but I'm worried that you won't have the life to enjoy it. Hector said coldly. Jasper lifted his gaze to look into Hector's eyes. He laughed and said, Could it be that you, Mr. Coombe, are able to conquer the world with just one hand? Hector chuckled coldly and said, I'm giving you another chance. Take back your asking price. Two hundred million. Leo, Noah, think it through. The last sentence was obviously directed at the King brothers. Leo and Noah looked at each other before looking carefully at Jasper. This subconscious move angered Hector so much that he wanted to hit someone. Jasper smiled indifferently and said, Mr. Leo, Mr. Noah, I won't take back my offer price. I'll buy it for 500 million. You should think about who you want to sell it to. This was the first time Hector felt so infuriated after looking at the King brothers falling into a dilemma. This was already something in the bag, but he did not expect Jasper to hurt him with his capital. Now, Jasper was brazenly attacking him with his money, just like how he usually used his power and background to make people bow down to him. The King brothers said 500 million. Then, fine, 500 million. Jasper would buy it. However, what could Hector do? He was not able to take out 500 million. 200 million was already his absolute limit. He always depended on his power and background. Hector was always successful in every endeavor, and this was the first time he realized how poor he was. When he thought about this, Hector felt his blood rushing to his brain. The way he stared at Jasper was as sinister and savage as a venomous snake. Jasper, even if you buy easy media, aren't you worried that I'll ask every industry to shut your company out? When he said this, Hector smirked and said, when that happens, every celebrity in easy media won't be allowed to take on any commercials, nor make any albums. As long as it's a movie or a TV series from your company, they will never be able to premiere in this life. Jasper smiled when he was faced with Hector's threats. He said, What big words, Mr. Coombe. Since you're saying this, then I shall tell you something in advance as well, Mr. Coombe. In the future after I buy easy media, I'll integrate all of the industries as fast as I can. When that happens, any entertainment company under your name will be on Easy Media's blacklist. You're shutting me out? Then I'll do the same to you. Don't you even think about working with Easy Media? I want to see if I'm the one who can bear the loss or if you're the one who can handle this, Mr. Coombe. Hector clenched his fists tightly after listening to what Jasper said. His teeth were making cracking sounds from him gritting them too hard. He never had such intense intention to kill someone. However, he knew if Jasper was able to take out 500 million to buy Easy Media without even blinking, then he really had the money to go head on with him. If that happened, he would be in much bigger trouble. You won't dare. Hector roared. No, I will. Jasper nodded calmly. Hector laughed sinisterly and said, All right, perfect. He turned around and glared frigidly at the King brothers. Hector said emotionlessly, Are you selling to Jasper or me? Leo swallowed his saliva and said challengingly, Mr. Coombe, there's such a huge price difference. Why don't you increase it a little? Hector's face twitched. He looked at Jasper with bitter resentment. He was planning to borrow some from his older brother later. He might be able to get 10 million. 250 million, Hector said through gritted teeth. This was already his limit. After calling out this price, he was already prepared to get berated by his brother, Jacob Coombe when he went home. Leo and Noah looked at each other again. They were born in Swallow Capital. If this was not the last resort, they would not want to move the whole family abroad too. Then, at this critical moment, Jasper spoke. 600 million. Hector sucked in a deep breath. He was enraged, but at the same time, he was shocked as well. Also, 
There was a hint of envy and greed that he did not want to admit. He did not expect Jasper to be so rich and imposing. He had gritted his teeth and could only take out an extra 50 million. This was already his limit. However, Jasper increased his offer price by another 100 million without even batting an eyelid. H. How would he be able to compete with that? Those insipid two words were like the last straw to the King brothers' final line of defense. Now, the scale in the brothers' hearts was completely leaning toward Jasper. Mr. Lane, let's sign the contract. Our requirement is an immediate transfer of the money. Leo gritted his teeth and did not dare to look at Hector's extremely dark face as he said to Jasper. Jasper smiled lightly and looked at Hector. He said, I guess you're embarrassingly short of money now, huh, Mr. Coombe? How unfortunate. The one thing I do not lack is money. Jasper shrugged and took out his checkbook to write a check directly. He then ripped it out and handed it to Leo. He said flatly, a 600 million check from commercial bank. You can cash out at any time. You got balls. Hector's eyes were red as he watched Leo and Noah taking the check happily. He felt as if his face was swollen after getting slapped by Jasper. He growled and roared. Kid, don't forget where this place is. So what if you have some coins? I can F asterisk king squander all of your money. Oh, you can't win so you're threatening me? I want to see how you're going to squander my money. Jasper took the transfer of shares contract from Jim and handed it to the King brothers before saying flatly, Now, easy media belongs to me. After that, Jasper lifted his head to look at Hector. There was a cold glint in his eyes. Mr. Coombe, not only do I have balls, but I also have money. Crack, crack. That was the sound of Hector grinding his teeth. He was standing there feeling like a shabby and poor idiot. Jasper kept on mocking him for having no money. The most infuriating thing was that Hector indeed had no money. At least he was unable to compete with Jasper. Hector was filled with extreme grief and indignation while looking angrily as the King brothers signed the contract happily. He felt extremely horrible right now. Now, this matter was basically irreversible. Everything was set in stone now. Currently, easy media belonged to Jasper based on legal principles. Meanwhile, Hector Coombe was just a buffoon. This was the first time Hector felt so angry and aggrieved in his 30 years of living. If this was before, he would never let this go so easily. However, Hector was not an idiot. The King brothers were unable to reject the price Jasper was offering this time. He was not able to get the effect he wanted by threatening the King brothers while there was such a huge enticement in front of them. He was unable to snatch it over forcefully as well because the King brothers were not to be reckoned with. Even though they did not want to offend the Combs, Jasper's price was enough for them to escape to faraway places. Hector took a deep breath and looked coldly at Jasper. He said, All right, I want to see whether this easy media that you bought for 600 million will be able to flourish. Maybe it'll need to switch its allegiance to a new patron after a few days. Hector already had a plan to teach Jasper a lesson. He was going to let Jasper buy easy media and then give it to him obediently. When he thought about this, a smirk was seen on the corners of Hector's lips. Swallow Capital was never a place to compete over who had the most money. Hector would not turn back now. George was trembling at one side, and he quickly stood up. He wanted to leave with Hector, but someone stopped him. Mr. Powell, Jasper said dully. George's body froze. I plan to invest in Uncle Yap's commercial consultant agency. Your company will be our first target. George felt his heart racing. He stole a glance at Hector, but the latter only stopped in his tracks for a few seconds before walking away without turning back. At this moment, George had given up all hope. He knew Jasper was going to do something to him now. However, his biggest support, Hector, had already walked away. How would he care whether he lived or died? Jasper, don't be such an intolerable bully, George said furiously. He had been operating in Swallow Capital for more than 10 years, and all of his belongings were in this company. How would he be willing to give it up? Hee <laughs> hee, this is just business competition. It's such a normal thing. How am I bullying you? Jasper said calmly. George's expression changed as his lips trembled. He did not dare to say anything anymore. He knew that Jasper was a man of his words. Judging from him buying easy media with 600 million, without even batting an eyelid, 
he would be able to crush him as easily as crushing an ant. If Hector was going to ignore him, then how would he be Jasper's rival? George fell into a deep state of despair. Mr. Lane, please have mercy. I'll never go against you anymore, George begged while sobbing. Jasper looked indifferently at George. Suddenly, he smiled at Jim and said, Uncle Yap, how much do you think George's company is worth? Jim was slightly dazed. Before this, Jasper had never discussed it with him. However, currently, he had to cooperate with Jasper. Jim smiled and thought properly before saying, Back then, it might have been worth seven or eight million. But the current market situation now is not that great and it's difficult to have any business. So, I'm guessing two million max? After George heard that, he was livid. He yelled, Nonsense. My clientele alone is not even worth this price. Jasper said indifferently, If Uncle Yap said two million, then two million it is. You can sell it to me for two million, or you can fight with us. George's face immediately went white while his heart bled. If they bought his company for two million, the loss he suffered would be enough to make him bleed internally. However, George realized he could not say no. If he declined, his company might get destroyed by Jim. He was never Jim's rival even back then. What more after Jasper's injection of funds? After taking a deep breath, George smiled bitterly and said, Okay, two million it is. I'm selling. That was the price just now. Now it's 1.5 million, Jim said suddenly. George was staring at him blankly after hearing that. He subconsciously wanted to scream, but when he saw Jim and Jasper's cold gazes, he came back to his senses. These two were setting a trap for him to walk into. If he said another word, he might only be left with one million. He clenched his fists and said through gritted teeth, Okay. At this moment, George felt extremely remorseful. He should have never provoked Jasper. After tearing a check of 1.5 million, Jasper handed it to Jim and smiled. He said, Uncle Yap, we'll just treat this 1.5 million as an introduction fee. Jim did not expect Jasper to be serious. He quickly said, Jasper, this is too much. While he was saying that, he saw the glint in Jasper's eyes and quickly stopped talking. He smiled in relief and took the check. He said, all right, if you need anything in the future, just let me know. With the check in his hands, Jim knew this introduction fee was not just a simple 1.5 million summer dollars. Instead, he was gifting him George's entire company. Jim's ability would skyrocket immediately. He would be considered as one of the top companies in the commercial consulting industry in Swallow Capital. Was this not what he dreamed of? Compared to a cash prize of 1.5 million, George's company was the true gift. If Jasper had not threatened George, the man would never have sold his company. Now, everything was only to be expected. This young man was so amazing. Jasper looked at the King brothers and said, Mr. Leo, Mr. Noah, what are your plans now? Leo smiled bitterly and said, We'll stay in Swallow Capital for these two days. After completing the procedures with you, we might leave Swallow Capital for the time being. We'll only think about the future when the future comes. Jasper nodded. He understood the fear that the King brothers had for Hector. That's good. Hector won't let this go so easily, Jasper said indifferently. Noah only sat at one side and had not said much this entire time. He hesitated for a while before saying to Jasper, Mr. Lane, I should advise you that even though Hector is very difficult to deal with, his brother Jacob is an even more difficult person to deal with. Hector has suffered such a huge loss this time, so he won't give up so easily. It'll be even more troublesome if Jacob decides to show his face. So, Mr. Lane, if you have any connections now, you should get in contact with them to make preparations. At this moment, Hector had already walked out of Prince Mansion. He got into the car and called a number. Jacob, I want to kill someone named Jasper Lane. After Hector recounted the entire situation, he voiced out his plan. There was silence on the other end of the phone. Then, a calm voice sounded. How many times have I told you not to act so rashly when you encounter something? Come home now, and we'll talk about the details later. I'm going home now. I have to kill him no matter what. Hector said with a sinister look on his face. Don't worry, I won't allow you to be wronged. No matter who that is, we'll break their grubby paws if they disrespect the combs and swallow capital and dare to steal out profits from us. After Hector got his brother's promise, 
The sinister look on his face turned into gloominess. He hung up the phone and drove home immediately. In two days, the King brothers completed the transfer of ownership of the company to Jasper as quickly as they could. After the final procedure, the King brothers did not have time to exchange courtesies before turning around to take their wives and kids overseas. Perhaps they were going to see how things were going to develop. If Jasper was able to handle Hector's revenge, then they might come back. If he could not, then they might never come back. Jasper did not have any opinions about this. Even though the King brothers had also proved themselves to be strong talents in the future entertainment industry, at this critical moment, they would not stay in the company to help him. Jasper would just find someone else to help him. As long as you had money in this world, there would be more than enough talented people willing to work for you. In these two days, Hudson and the gang went back to Cavern City while Jasper was intensively integrating the higher-ups of Easy Media. Easy Media was much easier to handle than Senna. After all, the King brothers already had the intention to sell the company, so the higher-ups were prepared for the news. Therefore, they were willing to continue working for Jasper. Jasper did not hastily rearrange the duties of the leaders in Easy Media. He was not familiar with the abilities and personalities of these people, so he planned to observe them for a while. At this moment, a plane was slowly descending in Swallow Capital International Airport. Henry leaped out of the plane. He stretched and took a deep breath. He looked touched as he said, The air out here is so much better. I was going to suffocate on that flight. Behind Henry was Anna, wearing a bright red dress and looking devastatingly beautiful. Anna put on her sunglasses to block out the glare from the sun and looked at Henry who was jumping about. She said solemnly, We had an agreement. We'll only stay here for three days. Henry said unhappily, I got it, I got it. Aren't you tired from nagging throughout this entire trip? The reason we came to Swallow Capital is that this is the first time the old man asked me to handle a serious matter. Plus, it's a gigantic project for the Olympic Village so I have to settle this for him no matter what. Anna looked at Henry's high-spirited behavior and cracked down on him. She said, This time, Dad asked you here to discuss this tentative. Now that Swallow Capital has successfully applied for the Olympics, the construction for the Olympic Village is still on paper. How much impact do you think you can have? Henry said while feeling pissed. That's why I need to show my ability. I know you can't wait to run over to give Jasper a surprise. Okay. Okay, stop glaring at me with your eyes. Do you think the old man? And I don't know why you insisted on coming along this time. After we're done with this, we'll go look for Jasper immediately and surprise him, okay? Anna huffed. She did not want to waste her breath talking to Henry anymore. She turned around and walked out of the airport. Henry yawned and followed behind Anna lazily. He was walking while dragging his feet looking even more hedonistic than the most hedonistic person in Swallow Capital. After the siblings walked out of the airport, there were already people waiting for them as they had received the news. A tall young man with a unique temperament spotted the siblings after they walked out of the tunnel. His eyes lit up, and he quickly brought his younger brother who was standing next to him over. Hello, Mr. Law. I'm Jacob Coombe, and I'm one of the Combs who contacted you before. Jacob walked in front of Henry respectfully and bowed carefully before saying, Henry was the eldest grandson whose father was also the eldest son of the Law family's third generation. He was the future successor of the Laws. Even though Jacob was also the child of the Coombe family of Swallow City, no matter the entire Coombe family or even Jacob himself, they were not able to compare to Henry. Do you like this video? Let me know by giving it a thumbs up and leaving a comment below. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay updated on my future uploads.